The Book of True Life, Teachings of the Divine Master, Volume 7, Teachings 191 through 207. Teaching 191. 1. The bread and wine on my table contains the seed of eternal life. Come eat and drink from my table. Do not cry any more from hunger and thirst. I no longer want to hear you weeping. Instead, I want to see peace and joy in my children. I am a loving father and teacher, and even when I judge you, there is love in my justice. 2. The essence of my spirit is love, as is your beginning and end. Come, my disciples, and gather around the Divine Master as you did during the Second Era when I was among you as a man. Allow your spirit to remember the gentle voice of Jesus, the Divine Master. Remember the time when your spirit followed me to the valleys, to the banks of the rivers, to the desert, and to the mountains to listen to my words. 3. Your spirit was transported to the heavenly kingdom on hearing the word of Jesus who used the forms and creatures of the earth in order to create his parables and to give to man an idea of the celestial kingdom. There were those who believed and those who doubted, but all hearts were filled with peace and the sick were healed. I want you to feel that you are with me in the solitude of a valley. For a few moments forget the physical surroundings and symbols inside this house of prayer, so that your spirit may elevate itself to me without obstacles. For, disciples, if I have called you the people of God, the people whom I love and have chosen, do not think that I love any less the other people of the earth. When all the people of the earth learn to acknowledge me, I will form one spiritual family loving everyone equally. 5. Do not assume that any nation or race is spiritually inferior, nor assume that you are the only ones who have been privileged. Truly I tell you that I have given you revelations and divine prophecies since the first era, but not because you are the most loved on earth. You received them because you were the firstborn in a spiritual sense among humanity. Rather than becoming vain, you need to become aware of your responsibility. 6. Study the history of Israel and you will know that in past times Israel did not share with other nations the heritage and grace given it by the Father. It became selfish and kept its gifts to itself, and that was contrary to that which my law and my doctrine mandated. 7. Once again, I have come to prepare your spirit during this era. I have enlightened it so that it will fulfill its destiny of taking my doctrine to humanity and of blessing and saving its brethren. Soon you will not hear my word, but do not think that I will leave you orphaned and lost on the path of evolution. My divine spirit will leave you prepared, and I will watch over you always. Like a divine shadow, I will guide your steps. Speaking through your lips, I will guide humanity, heal the sick, and with your voice resurrect the spiritually dead. And when the nation of Israel becomes united, I will establish my true sanctuary within your spirits. Nine. During this third era I find the heart of man more barren than ever before. It is like a soil of petrified rocks, covered with weeds and thorns. Weeds and trees with poisonous fruits grow everywhere. The waters have become contaminated, the springs have become dry, the fountains muddy, and the rivers have stopped flowing. Only withered flowers grow in the orchards. There are no nests or birds in the trees. Insects and plagues have devoured everything. That is what humanity presents to me during this era. But I have come to bring you the seed, water and tools in order for you to find the hearts in need and to spiritually enlighten them. 10. Do not feel that my stay among you is too brief. Remember that I have spoken to you for a longer time during this era than I did in the second era. During the second era, three years were sufficient for mankind to learn of my miracles and to spread the news of Christ to other nations. In those three years my disciples were converted into teachers. I taught them to love. Also I taught them that, although man is ungrateful, he nevertheless possesses nobility. That nobility is the spark of divine love that every being possesses, for he is a child of God. 11. The doctrine of Jesus touched the heart of humanity most profoundly. I erected a temple in the heart of man where I am still dwelling. Man's life and principles have changed because of his ambition for power, wealth, human glory, and pleasure. It was necessary for Christ to return among humanity and to awaken it from its long sleep. Once again, he needed to show mankind the true path. 
I have spoken from 1866 to the present. Although I have manifested myself through many different spokesmen, always I have revealed the same word, the same essence, and the same revelations and prophecies through each spokesman. 12. My manifestation during this era has lasted longer than three years. It was necessary to manifest myself for a longer period so that I could explain my teaching in different ways, thus helping you to comprehend it. Frequently, some of my disciples have rejected me and have departed from the true path, even though they initially believed in me and loved me. Although they received manifestations and evidence of my truth, they chose not to follow the true path. Whenever man finds himself in the abyss, he will then repent and weep, asking for my help. Since I am love and have infinite patience, I help him arise from that abyss so he can return to me. I sit him at my table as the prodigal son. I make a feast to celebrate his return, and he rejoices. Everyone believes that the disciple has truly repented, except the divine master. With time, the disciple again yields to temptation. Frequently, I have seen many disciples fall, arise, and return to me. My manifestation this era has lasted until 1950 so that you can return to the true path after departing from it many times. Then you will have acquired true spiritual strength. 13. What new attractions or experiences could the world and science offer you? What unknown pleasures could the flesh give you or what new things can you learn from vice and sin? If you yearn to experience true joy, wisdom and inner peace, then follow my path and learn to sow my seed. You will discover more things than you could ever desire. 14. Whoever does not appreciate this work as being pure, perfect and infinite, does so because he has not been able to clearly perceive the truth and to gaze into the sanctuary of true wisdom. Since he is still learning, he has not allowed me to show him those things that I need to reveal to him. 15. The last three years of my manifestation are approaching. They will be a representation of the three years when Jesus preached in the second era. 16. Although it is the same law as always, I will make changes to how you practice my doctrine. I have waited a long time for you to make those changes, but you have failed to do it. I have announced that I will depart in 1950, no longer manifesting myself through human spokesmen. Also, I have informed you that the communication from spirit to spirit will begin after my departure. However, what will happen to those who do not prepare themselves? They will continue to call upon my divine ray, but I will no longer manifest myself through spokesmen. However, some will pretend that I still manifest myself through them. They will be supported by others who, claiming to have spiritual vision, will testify that I am still present. Still others will enter into ecstasy, proclaiming that it is the spiritual world who is speaking. These individuals will ridicule those who have respected my will of no longer manifesting myself through spokesmen after 1950. Thus, there will be great confusion. 17. What would happen if those confused individuals were to arise as forerunners and messengers throughout the nations? You would only find the field sowed with confusion and deception. There is still time to meditate and to prepare yourself, for your brethren will arrive to question you. They will not be satisfied with just analyzing my word, because they will discover that it is truly pure. Instead, they will examine the fruit produced by my word and thus will carefully study the lives of those who have witnessed my manifestation. Your brethren will examine your life, your deeds, and your practices, in order to confirm my teachings and manifestation. If a person could be saved through knowing only my word, then humanity could have been saved since the time of Moses, when I first revealed my law. However, Christ had to come to earth as a teacher for mankind. Today. I have come again but in spirit to make you aware that one can only be saved and be close to God by practicing deeds of love, charity, and humility. Remember my apostles from the past. They not only offered testimony with their words, but also with their deeds, blood, and lives. Teen. Today I want you to practice true charity with your brethren. Thus, Mankind will observe my new disciples and will intuitively know that this work is not just a result of a human fantasy or of a disturbed mind. They will know that it is a continuation of the path outlined by God since the beginning of time. It fulfills the announcements and prophecies made by Jesus. 
Christ is the one who manifested himself spiritually in this era and is the same Christ who lived among humanity in the second era. 19. While the world prepares itself to drink front the bitter chalice that war offers, I offer you my teachings to share with others. If the light that vibrates within the human mind helps humanity perform great deeds, then what can be said of my divine light of wisdom, which can change man's way of life to prepare him for the spiritual life? 20. The divine light and wisdom that descends from my spirit to your spirit, according to your evolution, produces an inner enlightenment that eliminates all darkness. Analyze yourself, and you will realize that before studying my teachings, you were uncertain about many things. You could not imagine that many mysteries would be explained. 21. Today, I am separating all confusion from the human mind. I am preparing man so that he will not doubt the truth that he carries within. 22. You cannot have true faith if you experience doubt and are weak. Faith is believing without doubting. It allows you to put an idea into practice without fear of failure. The one who has faith is able to perceive things spiritually and will be able to perceive the truth and the final outcome. 23. Allow faith to develop within you, for not everyone possesses it. Once you start to develop faith, it will struggle against temptation. In order to reject and triumph over evil, strive to discover the weapons of love found in the essence of my word. The one who is unsure of my presence and my manifestation judges what he perceives and hears without truly being able to elevate his spirit toward the Lord. He still needs adornments and symbols to satisfy his material senses, believing that he achieves inspiration and spiritual elevation in that manner. 24. I come to teach you that your spirit no longer needs the sound of musical hymns to become inspired and elevated. In the second era my disciples could elevate themselves in prayer and feel my spiritual peace, even though they had no more than the blue sky over their heads. They could elevate themselves because they were able to hear the voice of the Divine Master within their hearts. 25. It has pleased me to manifest myself through human spokesmen during this era. I utilized the mind of man and his own language to enlighten humanity of my doctrine of love because it was the best method. 26. Through this doctrine you will attain spiritual elevation, for everything evolves. Be aware that everything originated through the righteous power of God. Develop your virtues within your own surroundings. My enlightenment will be your foundation for constructing the world of tomorrow. 27. You have visible evidence of your spiritual evolution. Today you do not think the same as you did yesterday. You are different from your parents, and your children will be different from you. You cannot avoid it because you are guided by a superior force. Truly I tell you that evil will not prevail. Virtue will triumph, because the one who practices charity cannot be selfish, the one who feels love cannot hate, and where there is light there can be no darkness. 28. I want you to follow my path with true conviction so that tomorrow you will teach your children to follow the same path. Always offer sincere advice to others, and my word will touch those who need it at the appropriate time. 29. There are those who fight against themselves, due to their own corruption. They need my enlightenment to recognize their errors and to learn to love their fellow human beings. 30. I am walking ahead of you, my people, removing all obstacles from your path, so that you may continue your journey. 31. Come to my banquet, my beloved people where for a few moments you may enjoy the presence of the Lord. 32. Come and fill your heart with my peace. I possess the peace which you greatly lack on earth. 33. Although only a few have listened to my teachings, it is sufficient because tomorrow they will offer testimony to their brethren. I know that if I were to summon everyone, the majority would not listen, because they are too occupied with their daily tasks. They would deny me and prevent men of good will from listening to me. 34. In these humble places where I manifest myself, I am allowing the seed of my doctrine to germinate. I have united those with simple hearts into groups. After they are free from their everyday responsibilities, I speak to them of love, of the eternal, of the spirit, and of true human and spiritual values. I have made them perceive life through their conscience and not through their physical senses. 35. I refer to these individuals as my disciples. Since they were poor and not acknowledged by their brethren, 
they experienced great satisfaction when I summoned them. They resurrected to a new life and rejoiced at my teaching. Since the Lord has given them His revelations and has shown them the path of love, they strongly believe that they can help their brethren. 36. Some will reject and ridicule them because they call themselves disciples of Jesus. But truly I tell you, that in spite of that rejection and ridicule, they will continue being my disciples. 37. Man believes that the heavens are so distant that it is very difficult for me to manifest myself among those who you feel are insignificant. This occurs because man has only a vague idea of heaven. He ignores that heaven is a state of perfection for the spirit, a state of purity and of enlightenment that all spirits have to reach. It is not a specific place in the universe. 38. The spirit, as it elevates itself, will be able to dwell in more elevated mansions. Thus, when it achieves perfection, it will dominate the infinite and be everywhere. It will be truly enlightened and in harmony with the Father and all beings. That will be its heaven and its glory. What more could the Spirit desire other than eternal peace, wisdom, and the joy of loving and of being loved? 39. It has been close to 2,000 years since I dwelt among mankind. Today, humanity perceives my deeds and my words of the past as imagined and supernatural. Man needs to know that earth and men were the same as they are today. He is mistaken to believe that only those of the past were worthy of the grace of my presence. For I have always dwelt in the heart of man. I also have always manifested myself before him, as I did in the second era, and as I do today in spirit. 40. It is necessary for man to know me so that he can know the truth. Whoever knows the truth will no longer be able to depart from the path of my law, for he will listen to the voice of his conscience. 41. The one who ignores the truth is like a blind individual who cannot find the true path or like a deaf individual who is unwilling to listen to the voice of his conscience, a voice that originates from God. That is why I have come once again to earth. I come to reveal the truth which was hidden from man. I offer him wisdom and new enlightenment to help his spirit arise from its sad and miserable condition. 42. I will awaken in man the divine desire to elevate himself toward the path of righteousness. I will reveal to him the existence of the true heaven and the new promised land. I will prove to him that I am not distant, for if I were, man would not exist. 43. Disciples, remember these words in your heart, so that when you meditate and reflect on my divine law you will experience great joy. 44. Be aware that I am a fountain of love. Come to me, and I will quench your need for love and charity. Behold how the light of my spirit illuminates all human beings. Arise to live a useful and productive life. Although in the past you were not capable of even guiding yourself, Today you can guide multitudes. 45. Many were walking toward the abyss, but when they heard my voice they chose to return and to continue striving toward the true path. I say to you now that you are my disciples, that I have created a nation with this multitude. I will receive you only when you are in harmony and are fulfilling the will of God. 46. Among this multitude there are those who still do not fully understand my doctrine and misinterpret it. That is why there are disagreements and a lack of harmony among this multitude. I say to you that there is still time to study my teachings in order to correct those faults, thus removing all evil from your hearts. Those who first received this task have the greatest responsibility, because they have listened to me the longest. I say to those who were the first to witness my manifestation, fill your hearts with charity and perceive those who have come after you as your younger brethren. Let your life, Deeds and words serve as an example to others of the perfection, greatness, and virtue of my work. 47. Those who are guiding these multitudes need to carefully study my teachings and mandates. They need to be alert and to pray for the multitudes, so that the people will listen to them, follow them, and perceive them as prophets. 48. You shiver every time that you hear the Father speaking in a tone of justice. But, once again you are betrayed by your weaknesses and succumb to the ordeals, which only serve to strengthen your spirit. 49. When will all those who belong to this multitude, and who are now scattered in different nations, unite with you? 
This multitude is experiencing hardships in its journey, but others await it so they can unite in pursuit of the promised land. They do not need to unite physically, because the true path is in the heart and the promised land is spiritual peace. 50. Each member of this multitude, no matter where he is, will be inspired by the Father and will receive thoughts of comfort from his brethren. My new people of Israel will arise in different places throughout the world and will teach this doctrine of spirituality with true purity. 51. My people, how can you believe that you are distant from one another because you have gathered in different houses of prayer to witness my manifestation? Only ignorance will prevent you from discovering the spiritual bond that unites all of God's children. 52. Allow your spiritual gifts to manifest themselves, enabling you to guide yourself through your intuition and revelation. Thus, you will no longer stain nor disrespect the spiritual gifts that I have given you. 53. In this era I have given your spirit a new opportunity to elevate itself toward the Father. 54. The Messiah who in the past came to earth and outlined the path of salvation for mankind with his word and deeds, has now come in spirit and is making his voice of justice heard through the conscience. 55. I have called many to witness this manifestation and to listen to my word, but not all have come. 56. These multitudes who follow me are those who felt a spiritual desire to be with me and to enjoy the shade of the divine tree. They heard the voice of the Lord and yearned to become sours like Him. They will be given seeds to sow along their path. They are slowly becoming disciples and are aware that in the future they will leave the warmth of their homes to take my seed to all those who are hungry or thirsty for love, truth, and justice. 57. I have given you an abundance of teachings. Therefore you should not become intimidated in the presence of scholars. Truly I say, that many scholars have become confused with their own knowledge. 58. The mission of this multitude is to teach their brethren through their deeds, words, and prayer. This multitude will journey to distant lands knowing that the Beloved Mother will always be with them to offer her protection. 59. Many times you will speak to others about Mary and about her great love for mankind. You will notice that some will react with indifference. At times you will be rejected for talking about her and for having faith in her. But do not be afraid. Remember that when Jesus was dying on the cross, a woman in great pain was agonizing at the foot of the cross. That woman was Mary, the Divine Mother, who at that moment was feeling all the suffering of the world. Did the crowd at Calvary control itself in the presence of that woman? No, my people, it did not. But with the passage of time, Mary was acknowledged as the mother of the Savior and as the spiritual mother of humanity. Humanity constructed an altar in its heart to honor Mary, the mother of Jesus. 60. Humanity comes to listen to my teaching similar to how one obtains water from a fountain to water his fields. Everyone has a portion, a family, or a multitude that he must spiritually nourish. He knows that only I can give him water that is pure to make his fields blossom and produce fruit. 61. The heart of the Divine Master is touched as it welcomes those messengers who come from distant lands representing different people. I will send my message of peace and my teaching of wisdom back to those people through their messengers. 62. You do the right thing in seeking me amidst those who have listened to my teachings the longest, for they have learned many things. However, do not forget that it is not necessary to travel long distances to find me. The only distance one needs to travel to feel my presence is the one that exists between his materialism and his spiritual gifts. 63. Return in peace to your home, your community, or amidst your congregation. But before you do, fill yourself with dedication, justice, and enthusiasm so that you will guide the multitudes through the righteous path, allowing no one to dishonor this doctrine with his impure deeds. You will carry healing balsam in your heart to dry the tears of those who ask for your charity. Allow your deeds to reflect what my doctrine truly is, a true fountain of love, forgiveness, and salvation. 64. Meditate on your past. Analyze your present and you will truly be convinced that you have been sent to earth to fulfill this mission. It will not be the words of men that will convince you of this truth, but rather the proof that I will present along your journey. Have true faith in these teachings. 
dedicate yourself truly to fulfilling your mission in a loving manner. 65. Some say, Lord, this work is so perfect. However, the Divine Master informs you not to allow it to become meaningless and a routine. In the future you will attain a much higher state of spiritual elevation, which now you are unable to comprehend. You will progress spiritually, step by step, without ever perceiving an end to my infinite wisdom and knowledge. 66. Do not become stagnant nor attempt to progress too quickly. Take small but firm steps, and strengthen each step through study and meditation. My peace be with you. Teaching 192. 1. I welcome you today on celebrating the first time humanity heard my word through human spokesmen. Years have passed, and I observe that the spokesmen through whom I have manifested myself and those who have witnessed this manifestation have evolved. They are no longer beginners of spirituality nor are they ignorant of this divine manifestation. Because of their elevation, humanity is receiving the Lord's enlightenment which will help it progress spiritually. 2. Man's ignorance of true spirituality has been eliminated by my light. Man now understands that God limited his power in an act of love so that his children would be able to feel him and hear him. 3. Since then, a new era has emerged for man. He will no longer find barriers to prevent his spirit from enjoying the grace found in this work. 4. Furthermore, all of my disciples no longer believe in the eternal condemnation of a sinful person or of everlasting happiness for the righteous. You are now aware that every spirit needs to journey through the path of evolution, and that it will continue to reincarnate until it attains perfection. When the spirit attains spiritual perfection it can then remain in the spiritual valley without having to reincarnate. You also now understand the reason for restitution and the meaning of ordeals. 5. Sinners who have come before me have realized that eternal condemnation truly does not exist. They are now filled with hope and faith and work to help their spirit evolve. 6. They now know more about spiritual life. Although they previously lacked faith, they are becoming more spiritual. That miracle was achieved because of my communication through human spokesmen. 7. When I first manifested myself during this era I allowed you to continue with your customs and religious traditions, because your spirit was saturated with them and your senses were accustomed to them. However, as your spirit gained enlightenment, through my teachings, those rituals and practices began to disappear. You were encouraged by the miracles that you achieved through your faith. You confirmed what Jesus said in the Second Era. Miracles are achieved through faith. In 1866 I reminded you of the law given to you since the time of Moses. Also, it was a reminder of the words spoken by Jesus, the only begotten Son of God, who came to teach you in the Second Era. 9. It was necessary to remind you during this era that my law was given to man since the First Era. 10. You can fulfill my law in various ways. What is important is that you help your brethren. How you help him will differ as you spiritually evolve. My law is not a mandate that is imposed through force. It is an eternal invitation to practice deeds of love. I will not force you to practice those deeds. However, I will inspire you to practice deeds of love with your brethren and will then wait for you to feel that inspiration. Thus, when you choose to practice deeds of love, you will feel that you are fulfilling the law of God. 11. Throughout the eras man has created a mental image of God, through which he has sought and worshipped him. Because of the confusion that exists among different religions, the Lord has utilized spiritually illuminated messengers to come clarify that confusion. Those messengers have been my spokesmen, whom I prepared to manifest my word of light. While some people have listened to the divine messages with interest, others, upon sensing that their deep-rooted beliefs were being challenged, have rejected my messengers. 12. All my messengers have been ridiculed. All of them have experienced human ingratitude and cruelty. In every era, my forerunners have come to preach and to practice what I have entrusted to them, always in accordance with the spiritual progress of humanity. 13. I have always manifested my existence to you as creator of the universe. Since the beginning I made you understand that to live peacefully on earth you need to practice love and charity. You then discovered that something existed within you that did not pertain to the flesh. 
Through intuition you discovered the existence of your spirit, realizing that it has eternal life. 14. When Jesus lived among you, he revealed his new and eternal doctrine, which signaled the path one has to follow to reach him. In the third era you have listened to me once again through the Holy Spirit utilizing human spokesmen. 15. Each time that I have come to humanity, I have separated man from worshipping false gods, showing him the true path. The Holy Spirit has truly come among you and has demonstrated to the world that its word is a seed of love and life. That seed will sprout, grow, and perfect itself. When Christ finished his mission on earth, he said, All has been completed. That meant that he had finished the teaching that he brought to mankind in the second era. However, I promised to return because I had new teachings to give to mankind. 16. Behold that the Divine Master is once again among you. He has come to reveal new teachings and to remind you of past forgotten teachings so that you can always be aware of your spiritual responsibilities. Your spirit should always be a true image of the Creator with both the Father and with your brethren. 17. After I came to earth through Jesus in the second era, I continued to send others to earth who were my apostles and soldiers to confirm my doctrine with their deeds and to prevent humanity from distorting my teachings. However, many who are spiritually deaf and blind have misinterpreted my word, disagreeing with each other and creating different religions and sects. If mankind is spiritually divided, how can man love one another, which is the main precept of my law? That is why I say to you that today's civilization is only an illusion because man is destroying it. As long as humanity does not construct a world using my law of love and justice as a foundation, it will not be able to achieve true spiritual peace and enlightenment. Only through the practice of love and justice will man be able to establish a world that is truly elevated spiritually, scientifically, and morally. Teen. If you would allow your conscience to guide you, there would be no reason for God to materialize himself so he can remind you of your responsibilities. If you would realize that Jesus, the perfect man, came to shed his blood to show you the path of salvation, you would always seek me through that path. However, you have not followed that path. But I love you, and I have come to seek those who have forgotten me. I have come to renew my promise once again, reminding you that the kingdom of heaven still awaits you. Although my doctrine and law are not new, I have brought you new revelations. My new teachings encourage you to fulfill the mandate of loving one another. 19. As you listen to my teachings and learn about me, your spirit is acquiring more and more enlightenment. Thus, it would be useless to attempt to deceive yourself, because your spirit would not allow it for it would be your judge. You would try unsuccessfully to justify your bad deeds, but the conscience would continuously point out your mistakes until you correct them. You will judge yourself. I do not dictate your sentence nor do I designate what place you will occupy in the spiritual valley. I only inspire you to acquire enlightenment and peace in preparation for your departure to the spiritual valley. Thus, I demonstrate to you that there is an intimate relationship between God and man. Love me even if you are unable to imagine what I am like. I have no form. I am love, power, and wisdom, and I am throughout the universe. However, if you are unable to visualize me in that manner, then picture me through Jesus. Remember that Jesus said, Whoever knows the Son, knows the Father. 20. Think of Jesus when you practice charity, when you practice forgiveness, and when you feel love for your brethren. Feel his presence, and let him dwell in your heart. Then truly you will be similar to your Father, in your love and in your spirituality, because you are divine enlightenment. 21. Beloved humanity, I observe that you are tired and overwhelmed from the weight of your faults. You ask me for a healing balsam to heal your spirit and body. I say to you, you will need to initiate an inner struggle. Penetrate inwardly and truly get to know yourself. Judge yourself through your conscience to discover why you now suffer. Thus, by strongly committing yourself to obeying my law, you will be able to remove the seed of evil and thus will be healed. The bad weed will be cut from its roots and will be thrown into the fire. Man is not the bad weed that grows on earth, it is sin and ignorance. These have multiplied and have invaded the human heart. However, my word comes to enlighten the human spirit. 
my inspirations and revelations will detain the progress of evil and will convert the human heart into a fertile field. I will sow my seed in that field until it produces an abundance of fruit. 22. I am the divine doctor who seeks those who are ill. Come to me when you are tired of suffering and are unable to find a merciful hand to heal you. Pray and enter into communion with me, and I will offer you the comfort that you need. I will not judge your past deeds. I will guide you to fulfill your mission and will convert you into a person of goodwill. 23. Promise yourself and not the Father to correct your negative deeds because the flesh is weak and it can betray you. 24. Do not despair nor curse when things become difficult. Instead, you should withstand and accept the ordeals, because in that manner your spirit will become purified and attain perfection. 25. I will stop man's ambition for power and riches, and I will set a limit to his destruction of earth. The prophets of the past had indicated that human pride would one day come to an end. Once that day arrives I will grant peace to each of my children, according to their merits. There will be a new dawn on earth. Who is able to penetrate into my higher judgments? Who will dare to destroy what I have created and placed within you? The spirit cannot be touched. Even if the physical body is destroyed, the immortal spirit will remain. The conscience will continue to guide the spirit until it reaches me. 26. Everyone who listens to his conscience and obeys it will discover the path that leads to perfection. I have set the destiny for each spirit. All spirits were born from me, and they will return to me. Great joy awaits the spirit along its path. It will confront many ordeals and will eventually triumph over each one of them. It will discover my presence along every step of its journey, and my love will offer its strength. The father never separates from his child. Once the child returns to the father there will be a celebration in the heavens and joy on earth. Then, the Divine Master and His disciples will be reunited. 27. Truly I tell you that earth is not the only place where I have disciples. Spirits also receive and listen to these same words in the spiritual valley. Even those spirits who are highly elevated and enlightened come to listen to the teachings of the Divine Master. Just as people differ on earth according to the preparation of each individual, in the spiritual world there are also many steps along the ladder of perfection. 28. Similar to how you come to listen to me to discover how to fulfill your mission, the beings of light also listen to me to discover how to serve the Divine Father better. That is why I am surrounded by multitudes of spiritual beings whenever I have given you my teachings during this era. During those moments of my manifestation, those spiritual beings unite with you with a divine bond of love. 29. In the spiritual valley all spirits are equal and no one is rejected. Spirits feel close to one another, and they all practice charity. The people of God who are spiritual should do this in the different nations, religions, and sects, until true brotherhood is achieved. 30. The new disciples will witness the fulfillment of those prophecies that announced the reign of Christ in the universe. 31. Be aware that those beings who inhabit other mansions serve me and also receive my orders. They will become your helpers and accompany you manifesting their strength and light along your path. They will speak to you through the gift of revelation. In that same manner the future generations, who will be more spiritually advanced than you, will receive spiritual enlightenment from those great spirits. 32. Based on what I have said, you should realize that man is not responsible for everything that happens on earth. Become aware of the influence of the spiritual beings in your life. 33. Through my teachings you have gained sufficient knowledge to tear down the veils of fanaticism and ignorance. Those veils prevented you from perceiving the truth. 34. Allow your spirit to be free so that it will be able to journey through the infinite heavens. Do not restrict it into believing only those things that are created in your imagination. Let your spirit become inspired through my teachings. Allow it to perceive and to discover so that it can acquire wisdom. If you want your spirit to be great, help it to evolve, but do not let it become stagnant through fanaticism. Everything evolves, changes, and perfects itself. Only my law is eternal and does not need to change, because it is perfect. My law guides the world, offers divine advice, and inspires righteousness.
35. Tomorrow you will speak under my inspiration. But until that moment arrives, the spiritual world will continue to penetrate into the human heart to guide humanity along the path that will lead it to the kingdom of peace. 36. It has been my will to choose sinners. I did not come to seek the righteous, for they are already saved. You were selected because of my charity. Allow your brethren to perceive how you live, thus offering them an example of how you have regenerated your life. 37. I am well aware of the struggles that occur within your spirit and of the weaknesses that exist within your heart. Sometimes you lack the strength to triumph over your ordeals. It is then that you pray to the Divine Master asking for his help, confessing to him that you are not worthy of his gifts and grace. 38. That is why I have come to tell you. Drink from the essence of my word, for it is my blood, which will cleanse and save you. 39. My new disciples are being born to the true life. Their spirits experience great joy listening to my teachings, and their hearts beat rapidly as they receive spiritual enlightenment from my word. Also, they are starting to speak their first spiritual phrases. 40. I observed your poverty and your meekness, as well as your great humility and obedience that existed in your spirit. When the appropriate time came, I brought you your heritage. 41. When the multitude started to arrive at those places where I have manifested myself, I observed that many were like orphans. But as they listened to my word, which is a powerful healer, it miraculously resurrected them to life. 42. Only this doctrine teaches you to seek your spirit within you, along with its powers, attributes, and missions. 43. Now that you have begun to truly know yourself, you now experience great confidence in life, true faith in God, and a peace that you had never felt. 44. Do you not believe that it is important for your spirit to become familiar with the path that it needs to follow? It is the path that I have revealed to you in my teaching. Remember that in the second era I said, I am the way, whoever follows it will not stumble. 45. Those who are listening to these teachings are not the only ones who will acquire wisdom. No, I am preparing everything so that my word will spread throughout the world when this manifestation comes to an end. My message is for every nation throughout the world. 46. My people, those of you who arrived ill before me and who have been healed with my word should realize that I did not summon you only to heal you. Be aware that the main reason that I summoned you was to reveal the spiritual mission that you will need to fulfill with your brethren. 47. Do not limit yourself to rejoicing because you have regained inner peace. Also let your spirit experience the joy that one feels by practicing deeds of charity. Do not limit your testimony to only telling others that you have been healed by the Divine Master. Rather, you should also heal your brethren. Then you would truly be offering testimony of your Father's love and also fulfilling your responsibility with me and with your brethren. 48. Whoever does not feel charity toward the needy or is unable to feel the pain of others in his heart, will not have taken the steps needed along my path to be called a true disciple of Christ. 49. I have found that you are insensitive, indifferent, and selfish. Thus, I have begun by offering you my grace, helping you to become sensitive and compassionate. Thus, you will become more aware of the needs of your brethren and will disregard your own needs to help them. 50. Today, the world is unaware that I am reuniting a multitude of people whose voices will be heard throughout the world in the future. I will send my new disciples to preach my word only after they are prepared and know how to confront a struggle. Mankind will be unable to silence their voices because they will offer convincing evidence of my truth. 51. Humanity is unaware of the spiritual gifts that I am revealing to this multitude gifts which are possessed by every spirit and human being. Once my disciples prepare themselves and develop these gifts they will be able to offer extensive and true testimony to their brethren. 52. This multitude will still need to struggle for their preparation and spiritual progress. It will endure many ordeals to purify itself. My prophecies in this era will be fulfilled, similar to how my prophecies from the first and second era were fulfilled. You will perceive my spiritual seed spread throughout the world. It will be similar to a forceful river flowing with pure water, purifying, cleansing, and sweeping away all evil. 
It will fertilize all the fields, offering life and truth everywhere. 53. Can the power of mankind be compared to my power? Will those nations that are highly materialistic be able to oppose the infinite strength of spirituality? The answer is no. I have allowed man to reach the limit of his ambitions and pride, thus verifying the gift of free will that I have given him. But once man reaches the limit of his ambition, he will awaken spiritually and will pursue spiritual enlightenment and love. He will then kneel before God who is the only absolute power and universal truth. 54. Battle and be persistent, my people, and truly I tell you that I will allow you to perceive the fulfillment of my word. 55. Beloved disciples, feel how God's love manifests itself when you repent for your faults. My spirit rejoices when you repent. 56. I have manifested myself through the human spokesman as a father who is understanding and gentle, patiently and wisely correcting your imperfections. 57. During this era I have come to explain spirituality with simple words. I have come to teach you how to fulfill your mission, so that as my disciple you will not stumble along the path outlined by my charity. 58. Spirituality does not come to establish new laws. It teaches man that if he follows the same laws revealed in all three eras, he will ascend and progress spiritually, without becoming stagnant. 59. The spirit was originally pure. If it became stained on earth, it will need to purify itself and to fulfill its mission. 60. The person who is spiritual should choose to separate himself from anything that can hinder his spiritual progress. My word will not be imposed through fear. Instead, People will believe in my word when they feel the love and purity found in my teachings. In the second era Christ did not impose his doctrine of love. 61. Today Christ, the divine master, says to you, The miracle of changing because of my word is accomplished through faith. 62. Who doubts that I am manifesting myself in this era? Who can limit the abilities of the one who is able to do everything? Who can prevent the Divine Master from manifesting himself through a human being, God's greatest creation and made spiritually in God's image? 63. Tomorrow, you can use that explanation to explain my manifestation during this era to the unbeliever. 64. You will be asked numerous questions by those who are stubborn and who will reject my manifestation during this era. But do not be afraid, for I will be with you. I have prepared you beforehand allowing you to become familiar with the right and wrong paths, crossroads, and dangers found along the path of life. Thus, you will always know the true path that you should follow. That path will guide you back to your origin, the Divine Father, who created you. 65. Man dwells on earth due to the will of the Father. He is able to breathe and live on earth because it is the Father's will. In the second era the Father came to dwell on earth, in a human body, allowing good and evil to draw near him. Because of his humility, he allowed himself to be tempted. If because of my love for mankind I came to dwell among you, why would I not manifest myself through humans, whom I greatly love and want to save? 66. Every human being feels his spirit and occasionally wishes that the Father would extend his hand to help him. When sorrow invades his heart, he glances up toward the heavens, shouting from the innermost part of his being asking for patience. Why does he believe that the Creator hears his voice and perceives the sorrow on his face? Why does he assume that the Lord knows him? Because the Spirit possesses spiritual gifts that allow it to know the Divine Father and to feel his presence. Thus, the Spirit asks for the Father's help when it cannot find what it seeks on earth. If you are able to comprehend my teachings in this manner, why would you not believe that God is able to manifest himself through human spokesmen, given that man is a part of God himself? 67. Man, no matter how materialistic he may be, will sense the presence of a power that rules throughout the universe. That feeling and intuition of my existence will convince him that these manifestations are subject to a principle of truth, love, and justice. 68. Truly, those whom I chose to be my spokesman need to have strong faith to be able to fulfill such a delicate responsibility. However, when a spokesman has been unable to overcome his weaknesses and materialistic tendencies prior to my manifestation, 
the manifestation has lacked the external splendor desired by those who witnessed it. But in spite of the imperfections of the human spokesman, the essence and truth of the Divine Spirit has always been present. 69. Do not be confused if you study my word and find that there are some differences in the way different spokesmen have expressed it, for that is unimportant. All of the spokesmen receive my same divine inspiration, and they express it verbally according to their ability with words. 70. Seek the essence of my teachings, for that is what you need. My peace be with you. Teaching 193. 1. I welcome the Spirit who comes to receive my teaching. 2. Disciples, you need to be alert because men will arise to analyze my work and some will judge it based on their scientific interpretation. You will present it as the spiritual doctrine that will change the world. 3. It is not that I am against science, because science represents wisdom, knowledge, and enlightenment. However, my teaching is superior to human knowledge. In my teachings I have come to explain spiritualism, which means knowledge of the spiritual, of the divine, and of a superior life which is beyond anything material. Truly, I bless man's scientific progress if it benefits humanity. For, during this period there will be much discussion concerning scientific and spiritual things. Scientific knowledge is not a privilege reserved only for those who prepare themselves to study the sciences. All knowledge is acquired through spiritual enlightenment from God. 5. My divine teaching is a superior science that teaches man to perfect his spirit. Furthermore, I have given you a mind and a heart to purify your emotions and inspiration. 6. The knowledge that I am giving you has no limits. It is infinite and universal, allowing you to discover true knowledge about the spiritual and material life. 7. I observe that you are now capable of understanding my teaching and penetrating into its mysteries. Through science you are discovering the laws that govern creation, including the human body. Once you carefully study and become familiar with those laws that were once a mystery, you will find yourself penetrating into the hereafter, where the Father awaits you. He continually tries to communicate with you. Once you carefully study my doctrine, will there be anything that you will not know? That is why I say to you that my humble teaching offers you a superior knowledge that will not allow your heart to weaken in the presence of scholars from this world. 9. In order to understand the meaning for any event that is occurring in nature or in your life, you will not need to seek answers in scientific books. All you need to do is to prepare your mind spiritually and to cleanse your heart to receive my inspiration. 10. Although you have studied my teachings, Others will refer to you as ignorant and unintelligent if you disregard the power of prayer. 11. Understand that during this era I chose to manifest myself through individuals who are uneducated. I chose not to manifest myself through those whom you refer to as scholars or philosophers. Nevertheless, an individual who transmits my inspiration reveals the light in his spirit, and that light is wisdom. 12. Again I say to you, fight because your spirit will experience temptation while it journeys through its path of evolution. That is why I am teaching you and giving you strength to triumph over your weaknesses. If your spirit is strong it will strengthen your mind and your heart to triumph over the desires of the flesh. When a man lacks enlightenment, his spirit does not evolve. Thus, he is spiritually weak and unable to triumph over any ordeal. 13. When a man is spiritually strong, it is similar to having an invincible shield protecting him against all temptation. 14. I have revealed these teachings to you so that when you temporarily stumble or fall along your path, you will recognize your errors and correct them. 15. If you practice humility, you will be accumulating great spiritual wealth for the life that awaits you. You will experience a profound peace, giving you the most beautiful feeling that you have ever experienced. Your spirit will yearn to serve the Divine Father and to become a faithful guardian of all the things that He has created. It will seek to comfort those who suffer and to bring peace to those who have no peace. 16. It is not the only My Word that announces My presence at this time. Your spirit also feels the presence of God deeply. 17. I welcome you. I come to nourish your heart with the essence of My Word so that there will be harmony between your spirit and your emotions. Even though you are unfamiliar with the sciences and philosophies of mankind, you are acquiring spiritual wisdom. 
You receive my inspiration because of your spiritual vision and your gifts of intuition and revelation. Teen, before mankind join in my law, there will be rumors of war. Mankind will become purified. Then the reign of the Holy Spirit among humanity will come. 19. It is your responsibility to interpret the word given by the Divine Master during this era. Do not create any doctrines that will separate you from my divine teaching, because this is the universal doctrine that will unite everyone. 20. Be aware that you have the ability to control the flesh, enabling you to practice my teachings. You will be fulfilling the will of God if you practice love and charity, allowing your spirit to progress and to become enlightened. 21. I am leaving you responsible for these teachings. You will need to give them to others with the same purity you received them. 22. During this era I have come to invite you once again to follow the path of my law. The entire essence of my teachings can be summarized in the law which I previously gave you. Love one another. 23. Learn to accept your ordeals. Behold that you are a nation of people who have never been disinherited. For you have always enjoyed my guidance and charity in one form or another. 24. Mary, your gentle mother, also manifests herself through the human spokesman in order to caress you and to strengthen you so that you will not become weary along your journey through earth. 25. Blessed is the spirit because it is able to perceive the face of its father. Blessed are those who have achieved freedom of thought and have rejected religious traditions and beliefs to seek me. I have come to enlighten you with my teaching. Today, you are aware that the best way to worship the Father and to fulfill His law are through your deeds, your emotions, and the pureness of your heart. That is how you can achieve perfect communication with God. In that spiritual communion the child will say to the Father, Father, let your will be mine. The Father will then say to the child, Love one another, as I love you. The one who elevates himself in this manner will be able to listen to the Father's voice through his conscience. That voice will guide the heart and the spirit of anyone who is willing to listen to me. That communion with the Father will serve as a healing process for the spirit. The spirit is being purified and cleansed through its material body so that it can know its divine Father and acquire spiritual wisdom. 26. That is why I have told you that what you learn on earth will help you along the path that guides the spirit to eternal life. When you depart from earth after fulfilling your mission having utilized my teachings, you will return to inspire virtue and goodness in the hearts of your brethren. You will be like the dew that falls in the morning flowers. 27. Feel the presence of the Lord in your spirit. Also, feel the supreme joy of dwelling in Him, because Jehovah, the Creator, dwells throughout the universe. Your joy should increase knowing that I have come once again to bring you new teachings. Unite your joy with the great joy felt by beings in the spiritual valley. Those beings have come to inform you that their world, although infinitely superior than yours, represents only one atom amidst a perfect universe. 28. You have not wasted these moments that you have spent with me, for your spirit has become enlightened with the wisdom of the Divine Master. If a voice within you tells you, Master, I believe in you, for you do not only give wisdom to my spirit, but you also give me strength and hope to endure the suffering of this life, then truly I tell you that it is your spirit that has spoken. 29. Today you are learning to converse with me, saturating yourself with the spiritual meaning of my doctrine. 30. You need to fulfill my mandates during this period, because there will never be a better time. I leave you my legacy of love which will unite men with one another and with the Lord. 31. You ask me, Master, after the year 1950, who will guide us? And I respond, My word will guide you, which I will leave as a testament printed in books. 32. You will remain a while longer on earth to fulfill my orders. Soon I will depart and I say to you, just as I told my apostles in the second era. For now, you cannot go where I am presently going, but the time will come when you will also be able to go there. 33. To help you elevate spiritually, I have come to offer you words of comfort. Each word is a ray of light that comes to illuminate your mind, so that it may develop ideas and emotions that are worthy of your Father and of yourself. 34. 
the spiritualist will be recognized through the profound meaning of his simple and humble words. 35. The spiritualist will not seek to satisfy his own needs. Instead, he will think only of others. That disciple will help others, removing the void that exists in the heart of humanity. He will enlighten his brethren about the true God. Truly, it is easy to serve your brethren and to live in harmony with them. 36. The apostles of this doctrine will make humanity understand that it is not necessary to build luxurious temples and churches to pacify God for the sins that men commit. 37. Once man realizes that his spirit is more important than his material body, his worship to God will consist of the true flowers that originate from the eternal part of his being, his spirit. 38. There are some who will oppose the spread of spirituality because they do not want their rituals, beliefs, and customs of many centuries to disappear. 39. I have not come to force mankind to accept my divine doctrine nor to instill fear. This doctrine will penetrate gently into the spirit and the heart of man through determination, truth, and justice. 40. Throughout the world men are seeking to understand and to explain the unusual events that are occurring in nature. They are occurring because all of nature is evolving. 41. Humanity has greatly evolved. There is a great difference between those who dwell on earth today and those who inhabited the earth in the past. Man will also attain great progress spiritually. He will be amazed when he compares it to the spiritual backwardness in which he once lived. 42. Prepare yourself for the upcoming struggle. Strengthen your faith and prepare your spirit to confront those who will come to battle you. I am still giving you my teaching to offer you some final recommendations and preparation. 43. I want you to be firmly convinced and to follow me until the end. You ask me, Master, do you perhaps doubt us? And then I ask you, have you not promised many times in the past to follow me, but then lose faith when you confront an ordeal? 44. I do not impose any conditions nor demand any sacrifices from you. I only make you aware that when you help your brethren, you are truly helping yourself. 45. Share my teaching with your brethren and practice as much charity as possible without receiving anything in return. Do not deceive anyone. If your deeds lack purity, it is now time to correct yourself. Trust the Divine Master. 46. There are times when you ask for my strength to help your brethren, knowing that you are also materially poor. Misery frightens you, and your heart weakens. You do not trust in me during those moments. 47. When you suffer you want it to quickly stop because it seems unbearable. This occurs because you have not yet attained perfection, for your spirit still needs to evolve. You do not believe that you need to experience purification. Also, you are unaware that many times suffering is only a teaching, preparing you to later on better understand those who suffer. 48. Take full advantage of your stay on earth. Accept your suffering with love, elevation, and patience so that you will be purified of your sins. When your suffering disappears and peace penetrates once again in your heart, cherish it forever. How you accept your suffering can be an example for others to follow. I want the spiritualist to confirm my doctrine with his deeds rather than with eloquent words. The spiritualist should always confirm his faith and his words with deeds of virtue. 49. Do not forget that when you request my help, I will have already prepared your divine path. 50. Do what your conscience tells you to do so that when your judgment comes, you will be able to respond to each of your deeds. Do not expect any punishment from me, for I do not punish. If I were a punishing God, there would be no strength in my love. Each individual dictates his own judgment. I have saved you many times from yourself, for it is you who carries the enemy of evilness, selfishness, and vanity within yourself. 51. You should now realize from my teachings that one lifetime is not sufficient time for a spirit to purify itself. 52. The time will come when you will become a teacher for your brethren. I will be with you to help you in your difficult moments. 53. You say to me, Father, blessed are you for coming to us when we were unable to go to you. 54. You lose awareness of the human spokesman through whom I manifest myself. Only my divine essence remains, 
nourishing your spirit during the moments of my communication. 55. You are well aware that the human spokesmen are not divine individuals. Rather, they are only instruments whom I use to transmit my message. That is why you allow your spirit to free itself from all material things to enjoy my spiritual presence. 56. Frequently, I speak to you about the true mission that is being fulfilled by the human spokesman. You need to know that he is limited in his ability to express and to comprehend my word. You will then be able to correctly analyze each of my teachings, correctly attributing the wisdom and essence contained in those teachings to God, rather that to the human spokesman. Also, you will be able to recognize when a spokesman has truly prepared himself for my manifestation. You will not commit an error by blaming God for the imperfections of the spokesman or attribute God's wisdom and power to those through whom he manifests himself. 57. I tell you this frequently, because you are in danger of worshipping the human spokesman that God has utilized for this manifestation. 58. If you disregard my teaching concerning this, you will become greatly attached to the material practices in my manifestation. Thus, when the moment of trial arrives you will be unable to free yourself from your materialism. What moment of trial am I referring to? It refers to that day when I will no longer manifest myself in this manner. 59. Since that date is not a secret, everyone can prepare for it. 60. A large multitude of people witnessed my manifestation. They divided into numerous smaller groups which attended different houses of prayer for these manifestations. Nevertheless, I informed everyone in each house of prayer that this manifestation would cease in 1950. 61. Everyone knows that this communication will not continue indefinitely. Since the first days of my manifestation I informed everyone that I would only manifest myself through human spokesmen for a specific period of time. 62. Also, I informed you that man is destined to communicate with me from spirit to spirit in the future. He will communicate with me directly and will not need to have a mediator. 63. I have manifested myself in houses of prayer where large multitudes have gathered, as well as in humble homes where a few disciples have gathered. I have manifested myself in large cities, as well as in provinces and small villages. You have the ability to progress along the path of spirituality. I have strengthened you with my teachings, so that when the decisive moment arrives to demonstrate your obedience, humility, and love to the Divine Master, you will know how to imitate Him. If necessary, you will deny yourself and will renounce those things that had previously attracted you. You will be fully aware that renunciation represents a great step toward the path of spirituality for all of my people. 64. If you do not prepare yourself with these teachings and fail to recognize their importance, you will awaken painfully from your spiritual sleep. That painful awakening could occur on the day of my departure, or in the future. 65. I want to help you avoid the ordeals that can result from a disobedience, a wrong interpretation, or foolish behavior. However, if after having listened to my teachings and warnings, someone still believes that he is stronger and wiser and more worthy to rule than the Father, ignoring my teachings, then he will have dictated his own restitution. The magnitude of his fault will determine his restitution. 66. There will be a greater responsibility in those places where my word flourished, because my teachings and doctrine provided greater enlightenment and understanding. Therefore, those places should set the best examples for others to follow, including their younger brethren, so that everyone will fulfill God's will. 67. Some will arrive from distant lands, and others from nearby regions seeking this word that fills the human heart with peace. Do not ask humanity if it is true that I have manifested myself during this period. What would those who ignore my arrival and my new revelations be able to tell you? You carry my word deep within your heart, as well as its meaning and essence. 68. I summoned you and chose you. It was my will, and not an order dictated by men, that brought you to these humble homes of prayer to listen to my word. I have been waiting for you to come listen to my teachings because this manifestation is nearing its end. Some arrived early greatly rejoicing and others arrived late. But those who arrived late will know how to benefit from my teachings. 69. You were not brought to this path by chance. You belong to the spiritual people of Israel, 
the same multitude of people from the past, present, and future whom I have clothed with garments that only I can recognize. I am the Divine Father who carefully watches day and night over His beloved children, and I have come to summon you once again. I have come to let you know that spiritually you are the same ones whom I outlined the path of life and truth in the past. 70. Your present existence on earth is another opportunity that I have given to you to fulfill my laws and mandates. Time has passed, and today I have come to summon you through human spokesmen, whom I prepared for this manifestation. 71. Elijah manifested himself spiritually through the first spokesman, followed by my manifestation. I have explained my revelations from the first two eras through those spokesmen. Also, I utilized those first spokesmen to prepare others who had the same mission. Thus, the number of spokesmen increased, allowing my voice to be heard in many regions. 72. Only three years remain before this manifestation comes to an end. Therefore, I am asking my spokesmen to truly prepare themselves to be able to transmit my inspiration with purity. Also, I ask them to listen to their conscience and to be aware that their task and my manifestation will both reach their highest level in the next three years. Thus, they will have to make sacrifices, if necessary, to keep themselves better prepared to transmit my communication. 73. Temptations will occur, but my spokesmen will not be by themselves, for I will send enlightened spirits to protect them. 74. Up to now humanity has not known how to communicate spiritually and directly with me. That is why I have always sent enlightened beings to earth through whom I have spoken to humanity. Why are you now surprised with this manifestation, if in the past I spoke to humanity through Moses and through the prophets? Many beings in the spiritual valley ask me to let them incarnate on earth in order to help their brethren who are stumbling. However, I have told them, my messengers are already on earth. They have already been designated and are disseminated throughout the world. They all form a part of my multitude, and they will need to offer evidence of their strength and spiritual elevation to their brethren. 75. You will not arrive before me with empty hands nor without a harvest, because you would feel unworthy of me. 76. Behold how men in different parts of the world and in different religions are awaiting my return. Listen to their prayers and pleas asking me to return, and saying to me, Father, we have been waiting for you a long time and you have not arrived. We have endured great suffering, and you, our Savior, have not come to help us. 77. Disciples, awaken from you sleep so that you may tell humanity about my new teachings. I will then say to those who love me, wait a few moments longer, because soon you will be able to feel my presence close to your heart. 78. Disciples, strengthen yourselves with my word. If at times you weaken after having greatly struggled with stubborn individuals, I will allow you to rest. Afterwards, you will arise with great inspiration. Live with serenity but also be alert. 79. Make humanity believe in my new manifestation through your deeds of love. Practice charity, love, and virtue not only with your family but with all individuals. Open the doors of your home and allow those who are sick, needy, and sad to enter. Welcome them in your home with the same charity with which I have welcomed you in these houses of prayer. 80. Study and carefully analyze my teachings. It is not necessary to seek books written by man to learn about spiritual things. I am the book that you will need to study, and my spiritual world represents one of its pages. Learn from this book. My peace be with you. Teaching 194. 1. My love is with you. Those of you who are on life's journey, come to this fountain. Come and drink, O oh anguished hearts, for you are thirsty and requesting my charity. Come rest in this shade provided by the tree of life and accept my charity. 2. Not all who come are weeping. Among the multitudes are those who come with gratitude for the blessings they have received. In their hearts they tell me, Thank you. Father, for your infinite charity. 3. It is the spirit of eternal love that is among you, the one who in the second era became man and dwelt among humanity, saving it from vice, sin, and darkness. 4. I am the same. Time does not affect me. It is subject to my will. I have come to remind you of your past and to announce to you what will be the future. 
5. I come to remind you of those words that I wrote in the heart of humanity in the Second Era, and of my bloody footprints on the road to Calvary that marked my path through the world. 6. In my word exists the honey that is able to sweeten your existence, and remove the bitterness that has saddened your life in all times. 7. If previously you did not understand your purpose on earth, today you will become aware of your destiny and mission. Thus, you will no longer stain yourself. Do not remain spiritually unprepared. The mission of every spirit is to evolve, to transform, and to continually grow in strength until it achieves perfection. 9. I have come to announce a new era in which man will progress spiritually. He will ascend a step higher on the path that leads to the top of the mountain. Not only is my word announcing to you the new era and telling you of the evolution and perfection of man, but the natural forces that surround you are explaining it through its language. But man does not want to hear nor understand. Planet Earth is evolving. In the future, it will become the home for beings who are more spiritually evolved and more perfect. Therefore, this dwelling will have to be in harmony with those beings who come to inhabit it. 10. Have you not noticed the signs in the elements in the seasons in the skies on the land or the seas? Are you blind and do not see these signs of which I speak, or deaf because you do not hear their voices? Be aware of my prophecy, and announce it to humanity, as did the prophets in the past. Inform humanity that the earth will soon tremble as a tree blown by the wind in a hurricane. Thus the earth will tremble and leave only the leaves that have life on the branches of the tree. The dead leaves will have fallen and will be swept along by the whirlwind. 11. Those will be days of hardship for all mankind, and they will only find peace and refuge through prayer and the practice of virtuous deeds. 12. How beautiful it would be if a multitude of people were to arise on earth representing a haven of safety and peace and light for humanity amidst so much confusion and darkness. Would it not please you to become that multitude of people? The word that you are receiving will prepare you completely to guide and to offer strength to humanity during its ordeal. 13. My presence among you and the communication of my word have not come to you by chance. It is significant to say that you have been summoned to hear the voice that comes to open the new era in order that you will arise full of love and faith to record and spread the message received. 14. Once this doctrine with all of its purity and truth begins to bear fruit on earth, humanity will seek it as does a thirsty and weary traveler looking for water in the middle of the desert. 15. Just because you have united to receive my divine messages does not mean that all of mankind is aware of this doctrine. 16. This multitude of people will make mistakes, be disrespectful, and experience much confusion and contradictions before it arises to spread my spiritual seed with all of its original enlightenment and essence. 17. My disciples from the Third Era will fulfill their mission and offer me true worship when they are able to correctly interpret my word and offer testimony of my teachings through their deeds. 18. Spirituality has not yet been truly practiced by this multitude of people, because they have not eliminated their old customs and traditions. As long as they continue to mix material and external forms of worship with spiritual worship, they will not be able to fully perceive the truth of this work. 19. I have reserved marvelous things in my sanctuary which I will give to the world through my new disciples, once they have prepared themselves. 20. I am waiting for these multitudes to become spiritualized. I have prepared, taught, and inspired them for a sufficient period of time. But up to now I have not seen the fruit that I await. Where is the harmony and brotherhood? Where is your obedience, humility, charity, and unselfishness? 21. This multitude of people is truly not yet prepared to teach spirituality to the world and is not worthy to offer testimony of my work. 22. I have told you that there is a spiritual hunger and thirst in humanity which can only be eliminated by a pure and simple doctrine, such as this one. Only this doctrine can save humanity and eliminate its anguish. Will my new disciples be able to save anyone if these teachings are not presented with purity? For that reason, I will grant this multitude of people a period of time to prepare, to meditate, to pray, and to become spiritualized once my communication comes to an end. Thus, when they arise to become messengers of my word, they will have become true disciples who are aware of their mission, 
offering true testimony. 23. The message that my new disciples will take to the world will offer comfort to mankind. Mankind will discover that every spirit is endowed with an abundance of gifts not known to humanity. Also, this message will reveal to mankind the communication from spirit to spirit. 24. The true sours of spiritualism will never be known because of their external or physical characteristics. They will not dress nor speak in any specific manner, nor will they have any specific features. Their deeds will be simple and humble. They will be known by their charity and spirituality. 25. The true teachers of spiritualism will be known by the wisdom and simplicity of their words, and especially by their deeds of truth and virtue, rather than their eloquent language. 26. Remember that while I was on earth, I did not need eloquent language to capture the hearts of the multitudes. I knew how to reach them with love, truth, healing balsam, and wisdom. That is the example that I want you to remember and to imitate. 27. I do not want you to worship in material temples. This type of worship imprisons your spirit, preventing it from evolving and knowing the heavens. 28. Worship me through your life and not through material altars. Life does not have any limitations. It is beyond all religions, churches, and sects because it exists in the spiritual, eternal, and divine. 29. Disciples, many of you have reached old age and have experienced many things in life. But now that you are receiving and listening to my new revelations, you confess that in the presence of my wisdom you are only beginning students. 30. You've had the opportunity to be on earth during this period and to witness my manifestation. This allows you to become faithful witnesses for the spirit of truth so you can teach my doctrine to the world. 31. This era of spiritual enlightenment will initially be one of great confusion. Men will ask many questions and experience profound doubts, uncertainties, and experience spiritual struggles. These events will signal mankind's awakening to spirituality. 32. I want all of my disciples to be ready and prepared for that period so they will be able to eliminate the darkness, bringing peace to mankind. You will observe that this spiritual doctrine will spread quickly because it will touch the heart of everyone and ease human suffering. 33. During that period, life will change. Religions, morality, science, philosophy, and all human beliefs will undergo great changes. Man, finally knowing the true meaning of life, will attempt to fulfill my laws of love, justice, and charity. 34. Man will eventually understand that his kingdom is not of this world. He will become aware that his physical body is only an instrument utilized by the spirit for this world of restitution and ordeals. Man will also understand that life is one great lesson with marvelous forms and images, helping him to understand the lessons of life. If man takes advantage of those lessons, his spirit will evolve. He will understand the purpose for his struggles on earth. He will also understand that suffering purifies, that knowledge enlightens, that love elevates, and that work dignifies. 35. Truly I tell you that if this life on earth was your only existence, I would not allow you to suffer. This would be unjust. However, those who excessively gratified themselves in the past are now suffering and weeping. The suffering will purify them and will make them worthy of dwelling in mansions that are more elevated. 36. In the second era, I came to teach mankind to live with love and purity on earth. Today, I have come to teach you to live with spirituality, thus preparing you for the future when you will dwell among enlightened beings in the spiritual valley. 37. Humanity, only the physical body disintegrates after having fulfilled its mission on earth. The body is used as an instrument by the spirit. However, the spirit that lives inside the material body, as well as its intelligence, Reason, free will, and emotions will never die, for it is immortal. 38. My beloved children, who are teaching others from different religions, I say to you that you need to teach men how to think and help them to meditate and to analyze. Rituals, forms, traditions, and external worship no longer satisfy the spirit. It is necessary to offer the spirit enlightenment, essence, and truth to make it feel secure along its path and not alone during its ordeals. 39. 
I observe different individuals who believe in me but are confused and are weak in their faith. They resemble ships that sail without a compass, travelers who journey without a star to guide them, and sheep that are without a shepherd. 40. I am giving you these teachings through some of your brethren, whom I have chosen from among the multitudes to transmit my message. 41. Today, there is a multitude of people who have gathered to listen to my word. In the outskirts of cities, the poor and humble houses of prayer have opened their doors so that people may hear the doctrine of the Father, Judge, and Divine Master. 42. Tomorrow, the indifference many have shown for this message will disappear, as well as the disinterest many expressed when they were initially informed of my new presence among humanity. Those who had rejected this manifestation will become interested in it. They will arise seeking testimonies, information, and evidence to affirm their faith. 43. I will let those individuals discover my footprints during this era. When they arrive before my presence, I will say to them, Welcome, my beloved people, and listen carefully to my word. 44. Love is what I have manifested during all eras, and today that I manifest myself through human spokesmen, I again manifest love. 45. This teaching today will allow you to comprehend the doctrine that I gave through Jesus in the second era so that you will keep its essence in your heart and manifest it whenever necessary. 46. This word will be felt throughout the universe because everything is prepared for my spiritual communication with humanity. Mankind will offer testimony of my communication. 47. Your spirit has always sought me, and I have never left it alone. I have always been with you wherever you have gone. My love has accompanied you in every step you take in life. 48. I have sought you during each era, and I have observed that your spirit has always recognized me. It is now time for your spirit to rule over the weaknesses of its material body, thus making the body aware of its mission and the path it will need to follow in this period of grace. 49. I have summoned you, and I have been your teacher. In turn you will teach others about my doctrine. Soon this manifestation will come to an end. The time is nearing when God will no longer transmit His divine word through human spokesmen, but you will remain prepared to analyze my word and receive my inspiration. 50. I am speaking to your spirit that was born from me. Since I created it, it belongs to me. I said to you in the past that my kingdom was not of this world, and today I say to you, your kingdom is also not on earth. Your kingdom is beyond anything that dies, anything that changes, and beyond human comprehension. 51. This is the time that every spirit needs to be alert so it can awaken to the true life. I am not implying that you need to ignore those things that I have given you on earth, because while you live on earth you need to obey its laws. I only ask that you dedicate a single moment to me daily, doing at least one good deed for your brethren. 52. I bless you, and through you I bless all of my children. 53. Allow your spirit to rest on this day when all the congregations have gotten together. During the second era I selected my twelve disciples, but my word was for everyone who wanted to listen. During this era I will also select those who will follow me, but I will allow my word to be heard by the large multitudes. This path and my teachings are for everyone, but not everyone will acknowledge it at the same time. Some will become aware of it first and others later but you should never glance back. 54. Those who have formed a sanctuary in their heart are the ones who are following the Divine Master step by step. 55. The seed that I have presently come to give and teach you to cultivate is from your Father's mansion. You will be able to sow this seed in the human heart. However, my Divine Justice will first have to manifest itself, similar to a sickle, removing all the bad weeds from the fields. This will allow my seed to grow. The human heart will once again become a favorable field to sow my seed. You will then be able to discover my footprints, because neither humanity, sin, nor human passions have been able to erase them. My path will endure throughout the centuries and will remain pure for eternity. 56. Man will awaken from his deep sleep. Searching inwardly he will discover his spiritual self. He will listen to the voice of his conscience and discover my divine footprints which will guide him to my presence. You will need to spread my seed throughout the world. 
when you come before me to account for what you have sowed, I only ask for at least one seed that has produced good fruit. If you come empty-handed, I will still welcome you because I am love and charity. Nevertheless, you still need to fulfill your mission. Do you know if the fields that you started to sow have again been invaded by weeds and plagues? 57. Thus, I want you to realize that when you hear my voice calling you, you should start immediately fulfilling your mission. Analyze what I have said, and you will agree that you alone determine the kind of harvest you will reap. Either you will experience peace and well-being or you will dictate your own restitution. 58. Although my word appear harsh at times, it comes from a loving Father. Behold how I extend my cloak of love to include everyone, without observing his faults. 59. Study my word and it will illuminate your spirit so that it can listen to the voice of the conscience. This is a time of grace and enlightenment that is reaching every individual. 60. I am the Christ who comes to lovingly surrender himself to each individual. Since you believe in this manifestation, you are aware of your brother's suffering and thus pray for them. Remember, I want to dwell in each heart. 61. Much human blood has been shed on earth during this period. Behold how my children, in their immense suffering, seek and summon me in a variety of ways. They intuitively know that the time has come for my messengers to establish peace throughout the world. 62. Every religion is waiting to witness the miracle of my return within its own congregation and church, according to its beliefs. 63. I say to those of you who believe in my manifestation, who know how to communicate with me, and who are saved, you are the ones chosen to take this message of love to your brothers. 64. Behold that men have not found a solution to their conflicts in their human laws and in their churches. They feel that they are surrounded by an atmosphere of darkness. 65. Pain has the strength to detain man along his reckless path. It will make him think of me and to begin listening to my voice, just as you also began to perceive me spiritually, rather than materially. Today I have chosen you to take these teachings to your brethren. These teachings should be given to those who lack spiritual evolution, as well as those who are prominent and distinguished on earth. 66. The one listening to the teachings will only be initially surprised. He will remember that before the Messiah arrived during the Second Era, his arrival had been previously announced by the prophets, similar to how my arrival during this era was announced. Jesus spoke of my arrival during this era and the signs that would signal it. 67. Since all those signs have been fulfilled, men will become convinced. This is the light of the Holy Spirit which has illuminated man throughout the eras, because the divine light has always existed, does exist, and will always exist. 68. Once again my truth will have to battle human ignorance. Idolatry, fanaticism, and mysticism all originate from that ignorance. The mystic is a hypocrite, the fanatic is blind, and the idolater is materialistic. 69. I will illuminate those who are in a state of great confusion and darkness, helping all spirits to attain great enlightenment and purity. 70. The development and evolution of a spirit will never be detained because all beings are subject to the law of perfection. 71. When a spirit is not evolving along its path in life, it is due to the influence of the flesh. It will have to make up for that lost time during future incarnations. Behold that if I judge you, it is a judgment of love, and you should never defy my justice. Always practice deeds of love with your brethren, and you will feel peace when you penetrate into the spiritual kingdom. If death arrives, your spirit should not become disturbed because death exists only for the flesh, as it enters into a tranquil sleep in the tomb. 72. Go in peace to the spiritual mansion knowing that the era of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, has come to reign among mankind. My peace be with you. Teaching 195. 1. My beloved disciples, listen to my teaching. 2. You are receiving my teachings through the human spokesman whom I inspire. As you listen to my word, you recognize that it is filled with virtue, healing balsam, and regeneration. You can also visualize the life of a spirit in the essence of my word. 3. The Divine Master is pleased that you are listening to his teachings, 
but to truly please him you need to fulfill your mission and thus settle your debt. It is the same debt that you have had throughout the eras on earth. That is why, although my words are gentle, I am reminding you that you need to settle your debt. Thus, within the love and essence of my teachings, you will find a mandate and a law that you need to obey. For, your mind sometimes becomes confused, and it rebels against fulfilling that debt. This occurs because only the spirit is aware of your debt. But if the spirit chooses to satisfy itself with material things, it will go astray. 5. I want my disciples to have strong convictions and faith. They should not be like those who say they follow me and believe in me, yet regret leaving their material riches behind, fearing my divine path when it becomes difficult to follow. Some pretend to be my disciples, but have not yet become true disciples. 6. Do not expect to find this path filled with roses, for it is filled with thorns. It is the same path that Jesus followed, a path that leads to Calvary. 7. My word will guide you so that you will not stumble. This is the era in which all individuals and all spirits will receive my enlightenment. The different religions and doctrines on earth will become fully enlightened. Although your brethren have not listened to this word, you will be amazed at their spiritual progress. 9. Pray for world peace, and be aware that my charity has spared this nation from war. 10. Truly I tell you that despite your love and admiration for my word, you have not recognized its true value. Future generations will become astonished with my word and will greatly respect and admire my teaching that will be written in books. 11. Those of you who are now before me are from different religions and were spiritually asleep. Although all religions represent paths that lead to the Divine Father, I have come once again to reveal the shortest path. 12. My beloved children, be content and live in peace. 13. The moment is approaching when I will no longer give you my teaching, a beautiful teaching that you have received through human spokesmen for many years. If you are spiritually prepared nothing will surprise you, and the enemies of my work will discover that my disciples have an invincible faith. I want you to be absolutely certain that you are not alone. I am always near each of my children. 14. Today, a strength emerges from deep within your being that makes you arise to my divine work. It is your conscience that speaks to you. 15. In the material world, the law dictates how man should behave. 16. In the spiritual world, universal love is my law. This law manifests itself in the air that you breathe, in the planets that revolve around Earth and throughout creation. 17. Everything lives in harmony with that law. The animals on Earth live within that law, although they are unaware of it. They are born on earth and they will die there. Teen. Why does man, whom I endowed with intelligence, free will, spiritual enlightenment, and a conscience, frequently separate himself from the path outlined by my law? It is because some individuals forget about the Divine Father, whereas others have developed an erroneous concept of God. They have limited God under the false images created by man, forgetting that I am essence and power, and that everything in the universe is under my will. The power of God is manifested throughout creation. When man, in good faith, attempts to analyze creation, he will gaze at a seed and become truly amazed at the mystery of that seed. He sees it emerge from the soil as a plant, studies its different species, and observes that even though each species is different, all plants are nourished by the same soil. 19. The seed is a symbol of life, multiplication, transformation, and evolution. If one can see the image of the Creator in just a small creature, what will happen when one studies man, the cosmos, or the spirit? 20. Behold that there is no specific form when you visualize God. I am everywhere. I exist in the spiritual, in the eternal, and throughout nature. I am the life, the universe, and the light. I am the solution for all the ills that man encounters. 21. In the spiritual kingdom there is a remedy for the ills that trouble a spirit, similar to how on earth man has remedies for his physical illnesses. If man were to carefully analyze the spiritual and material kingdom, he would discover the Father's infinite perfection manifesting itself in both kingdoms. Your curiosity and imagination sometimes goes beyond that which pertains to earth. 
You want to know if there are beings in other planets and if they live and evolve similar to people on Earth. Study and practice my teaching, and when the time is appropriate, you will find the answer. It is man's right to remove that veil of mystery through his own merits. It is his responsibility to continue along his path of evolution and to become aware of my will so he can enlighten his brethren. Truly I tell you that it is impossible for man to ascend to that level without stumbling along the way. For the human mind to grasp and to spiritually comprehend my teachings, it is necessary to ascend gradually. 22. That is why I have allowed man to evolve spiritually one step at a time. 23. Man attains enlightenment from his great ordeals and thus makes new discoveries that help humanity to progress. However, man forgets that all of his progress is attributed to someone that is much more powerful than him, and that he receives enlightenment from the Creator. It pleases me to see man progress scientifically. But truly I tell you that you should work more for your spirit than for your material body. That is why I am giving you a revelation that will help you truly understand the physical being and the spiritual being. This simple revelation contains the wisdom to help man live a better life. 24. You will not perceive that life with your physical eyes. However, you can inform future generations of these teachings. 25. Today, you only perceive wars, proclaiming that they are punishment from God. I have previously taught you that God, who is your father, does not punish. Mankind is responsible for the events that occur. 26. What has caused the fury of nature's elements? Nature's catastrophes have been caused by man's lack of harmony with nature. 27. Man will realize that his spirit is subject to evolution. He will also become aware of his spiritual progress or backwardness, and will seek the means to achieve true progress. He will realize that he should not live only to satisfy his own needs nor should he only acknowledge the material life. 28. He will begin to seek my law, the one that I gave to humanity since the time of Moses. Thus, through his own analysis, man will become familiar with the doctrine that I have brought to humanity during this period realizing that it is universal. 29. My beloved children unite with one another. Share this knowledge that you are acquiring with your brethren. Do not only unite in these houses of prayer, but go to the countryside and to the mountains. I will manifest myself in all places. 30. Man has named this age the Age of Enlightenment. However, I say to you, do not refer to it in that manner only because of mankind's inventions and discoveries. It is an Age of Enlightenment because the light of the Holy Spirit has been shed upon every being thus opening a path for humanity that will lead it to a more spiritual and superior life. 31. My present teachings will help future generations to evolve spiritually and mentally. Their ability to comprehend and analyze will be highly developed. 32. I have come with these words of enlightenment so you can spiritually prepare the new generations. 33. Study this teaching and practice it. Thus, you will have peace in your heart, eloquence in your words, and conviction in what you say. 34. Beloved disciples of the Divine Master, come to me. 35. I have come once again because you have summoned me and because you are eager to become spiritually prepared. 36. Humanity has made a tradition to remember those who have departed from earth during specific days. Man has tried to imagine where those beings dwell and how they live. Man wants eternal peace for them. He believes that they are seated at the right hand of God, enjoying His grace. That is far from the truth. I have revealed the truth about spiritual life to those who have listened to my teachings. Although you will observe that humanity has many different beliefs concerning spiritual life, remain spiritually united with everyone. Be content knowing that everyone feels a spiritual unity. 37. The time will come when you will be able to open this book that I have given you and reveal it to your brethren, thus spreading these revelations among humanity. 38. The final destination of every spirit is to unite with God, after it becomes purified and attains perfection. That is why I fill your path with enlightenment and give strength to your spirit, so that you may ascend step by step. The mansion that you will inhabit in the spiritual valley will be determined by your level of spiritual elevation when you depart from earth, 
because the universe was created as a school of perfection for the spirit. 39. Once you have finished your mission on earth and have no reason to return, your spirit will go to inhabit another mansion. There you will pray and work for the peace and progress of mankind. 40. You will penetrate step by step into my secret sanctuary. As your spirit enters it, it will feel a greater yearning for righteousness and virtue. This will bring the spirit even closer to the Divine Father. 41. Those beings who find themselves wandering and lost in the spiritual valley, struggling to attain enlightenment in a superior world, are those who cling to their memories of life on earth. They still feel attracted to the material things of earth. Thus, they have to battle between two forces which attract them, the spiritual and material forces. 42. Pray for those beings, for they have not yet acquired sufficient enlightenment and strength to separate themselves from the material things of earth. Continue to pray for those beings. But do not be concerned with other beings who have triumphed over the material world and death. They belong to worlds that are totally different. The experience they acquire along their journey is converted into spiritual enlightenment which they will use to help their brethren on earth. They are your guardian angels. They assist you and they work to help mankind. Love them and remember them. 43. In the spiritual world there is also a large number of spiritual beings that do not know where to go, what to do, nor what to think. They are the ones who have recently departed from earth and have not yet experienced an awakening of their spiritual gifts and powers. Pray for them, because your spiritual voice will echo in their spirits and will help them to awaken. It will enable them to discover the path that Jesus outlined on earth with his teachings and with the blood that he shed on the cross. 44. Although the world weeps for their loved ones who have departed from earth, there can be no mourning for those who are familiar with the spiritual life. Instead they rejoice, for they are aware that those who have departed from earth have achieved freedom by having separated from their physical bodies and are in the path of spiritual peace and perfection. 45. I say to you, do not be in a hurry to enter the spiritual valley to journey along the path that will guide you towards spiritual perfection. One should aspire for that perfection while he is on earth. Despite experiencing bitter and difficult moments on earth, you have the opportunity to progress spiritually. If you practice deeds of love on earth, your spirit will begin to progress. 46. The material body is only a temporary garment for the spirit. The spirit will be given as many material bodies as are necessary for its evolution, experiences, and restitution. The one who still does not understand this law of divine justice is a beginning student. 47. You would not be spiritualists if you doubted the law of reincarnation, for it is a basic knowledge that is being revealed to many. This knowledge confirms the belief of those who have had a premonition or intuition about reincarnation. In this law there clearly exists reason and justice. 48. Whoever has faith in this teaching and arises to explain it will teach others that the flesh is only a garment for the spirit. The body helps the spirit to evolve, for it provides the necessary means through which the spirit can manifest and purify itself. The inner battle between the spirit and the flesh, and good and evil, provides an opportunity for the spirit to achieve merits. The suffering of the flesh, and its unfulfilled harmful desires, serve to purify the spirit. This experience, although apparently bitter, will help the spirit to attain enlightenment. I am not implying that suffering is necessary for purification. Numerous beings are now with me who have been purified by love without having experienced pain. 49. However, it is man's destiny to suffer and to ascend the mountain carrying his cross until he attains his salvation. Although one may endure many hardships with his physical body, he should not despise his body for that reason. Instead, he should love his material body, for it reflects the power of God. Man is responsible for his physical body. He needs to take care of it and to guide it until I ask you to give me an account of what you have done with it. I have told you to love your physical body. That does not mean to become vain or selfish. I want you to also love your spirit which represents the most elevated and noble part of your being. Your spirit is a part of the Divine Father. Although your spirit may be blemished or in a state of darkness, cherish it because it will never cease to carry a spark of my divinity. 
that spark is the conscience which will always remain pure because my presence will always be there. However, if you ignore the voice of your conscience, your spirit will not progress and its arrival to the Divine Father will be delayed. 50. Although my words and my deeds may appear to contradict one another, there is no contradiction. I have told you that God is pure and perfect and that your spirit is similar to the Divine Father. However, when the spirit stumbles, yielding to the desires of the flesh and thus detaining itself along its path of evolution, it begins to doubt its similarity to the Creator. It considers itself unworthy and impure. Although the Father's presence and grace are always with it, the Spirit is unable to feel them. 51. Work to help your spirit evolve. Why fear death? However, do not leave anything pending so that you will not have to return to earth to settle debts and previous mistakes. 52. Do not let a day pass without having done one good deed. Thus, you will be helping your spirit to progress. 53. Do not assume that your life is predetermined by God, and that if you suffer or are happy, it was meant to be. I have said to you that one will harvest what he sows. But listen carefully, for there will be times when one will gather his harvest immediately, and on other occasions one will have to wait to gather his harvest during a future lifetime. Analyze what I have said and you will eliminate much of the confusion and misinterpretations about my justice. 54. Understand what I have said and let there be no doubt in your heart. Behold that I will have to teach humanity through you. However, if you feel that you are unable to explain such profound mysteries to your brethren, I will still speak through your lips. Although you may lack eloquence with words, the greatness of my divine teachings will not be concealed. 55. A spirit that becomes aware of the path that it has to follow will no longer be able to separate from it. It will be able to depart from this world and enter into others without separating from the path signaled by its conscience. A spirit that is weak and unprepared will experience ordeals in this world as it will in other mansions. It will lack knowledge and enlightenment and be unable to ascend. While that spirit is in a disturbed state, mankind will be able to feel its negative influence. In contrast, those spirits that were able to ascend and to achieve a higher level of spirituality will leave a positive influence for their brethren. Those spirits have become teachers in the heavens because of their elevation. 56. Imitate the latter. Aspire for a world that strives to practice love and to get closer to the Divine Father. You were born from the Divine Father and can never be separated from Him. 57. I offer my grace to all spirits, but not all accept it. The one who is thirsty for love should drink from the Divine Water that I offer. For I possess an eternal fountain of water that will quench your thirst. 58. The lost individual should elevate his gaze to perceive my ray of enlightenment and use it as his guide. The one who feels naked can cover himself with the cloak of my forgiveness and charity. Whoever has doubts should prepare himself, and I will reveal my wisdom to him. If one is sad, he should come to me and I will give him everything that he needs. Once he drinks from my chalice of love, his faith will become strengthened. 59. Pray for those who are suffering on earth, and those who appear to be abandoned will receive my blessings. 60. I am the Divine Word. Listen to me. 61. Deep in your heart you have many questions. You ask me, Lord, have we not fulfilled your mandates? Have we not helped humanity? Instead of understanding you, are we confused and also confusing others? 62. No, my children. I am still here among you so that through my teachings I can correct you and prevent you from committing errors. Once you have become spiritually strong, you will no longer have any doubts nor be confused. 63. Spiritually you are no longer children because this is not the first era nor the first time that you have dwelt on earth. The light from the sixth seal which illuminates you in this era is not the only one that has illuminated you throughout your existence. You are spirits who have evolved traveling through the long path of evolution that will guide you toward perfection. Therefore, do not become confused. You should rejoice that the Lord is among you, because this indicates that you are now able to obey Him and to comprehend His teachings. 64. During the first era the people of Israel were held captive in Egypt, a nation where idolatry and paganism reigned. 
I allowed my people to live and to multiply among the Gentiles to offer evidence of my existence and my power through a nation of people who believed in the invisible God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. 65. When their suffering, sorrow, and slavery reached the highest level, I made a man who was anointed with my grace and whom I inspired arise from among the Israelites. I said to him, Go to your people and save them, for they have become weary from their labor, chains, and humiliation. Rescue them from the Pharaoh's bondage and set them free. Take the road that leads to Canaan and guide them through the desert. When this nation of people reaches the land that I have promised you, I want them to worship me in a manner that is worthy of my divinity. That man was Moses. 66. How was Moses able to rescue a nation of people from the Pharaoh? Did he, perhaps, give weapons to his people? No, his weapon was the faith that he had in the Lord. 67. When the Pharaoh denied the requests made by Moses, which I had ordered, I demonstrated to him that my justice and power were greater than his stubbornness and disbelief. Ten times he ignored what I ordered, and ten times Egypt suffered great ordeals, eventually softening his hardened heart and yielding to my orders. 68. Moses gathered his people and traveled across the desert to the slopes of Mount Sinai, knowing that on that mountain he would meet with the Lord. While the people awaited the return of Moses, he elevated himself in prayer to receive the tablets of the law from Jehovah that would govern humanity. The obedient servant received that divine revelation through his conscience. The Lord also prepared Moses to dictate laws on his own, based on the Ten Commandments that would serve to guide humanity. After struggling and suffering greatly in the desert, the people finally reached their destiny, the Promised Land. There they built their homes, worked in the fields and gardens, formed their families and worshipped the Lord. To fulfill both the spiritual laws and their material obligations on earth, they developed only one form of worship to the God who had offered them so much evidence of His love and His mercy. But their spiritual worship was far from perfect. Their offerings and tributes were material, and their sacrifices consisted of blood from innocent animals. They lacked morality and justice when judging one another. The law of retaliation ruled, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. When a woman was caught committing adultery, the law condemned her to die and she was stoned to death in the outskirts of the city. 69. Why did the Father permit this to happen? Because humanity was taking its first spiritual steps during that period. 70. Time passed. I accepted those first fruits from your fields and your harvest, as well as the blood from the innocent victims that were offered to me in the altar. 71. The traditions for those people were deeply rooted. Who was going to tell them that their traditions, their laws, and their form of worship were going to change? It was not Moses nor the prophets who changed their traditions and customs. Moses only guided them to initiate the path that they needed to follow, and the prophets only prophesied. It was the promised Messiah, the Divine Master, who came to awaken the people from their sleep. The Divine Master did not reject any of the commandments given to Moses. He came to eliminate the traditions and the impure forms of worship that were practiced by those people during that period, and to open a new era of wisdom and enlightenment that would change the life of humanity. 72. I did not change the law, only the manner in which it was practiced. 73. Those people had passed, spiritually, from infancy into adolescence. I then allowed them to taste some unknown fruits and also removed their veil of ignorance. My words were a single law condensed into one phrase, Love one another. 74. I announced and promised that I would return as the Holy Spirit, because I did not reveal everything in the second era. Furthermore, you were unable to comprehend and correctly interpret those things which I had revealed during that era. Therefore, it was necessary for the Spirit of Truth to return to give you these new revelations. 75. In 1866, my voice was heard for the first time through human spokesmen and a new era opened for humanity. The Third Era. 76. The human spirit passed from its spiritual adolescence into its youth. More time will need to pass before it reaches complete maturity and its fruits become perfect. 77. The doctrine of Christ was spiritual, but man surrounded it with rituals and symbols allowing those who lacked spiritual evolution to comprehend his doctrine. 78. 
You have entered into the era of the Spirit, an era of great revelations. All materialism, imperfection, and deceit will disappear from man's worship of God. During this era every being will acknowledge God, who is completely spirit, and through that path man will learn to communicate with God from spirit to spirit. 79. Since I first communicated in this manner, you have tried to understand the greatness of this work, but you have not yet truly understood its greatness nor its final outcome. 80. Who can say that he truly understands this doctrine and practices it in a perfect manner? No one can say that. You are still far from attaining spiritual perfection. 81. My law and my work are symbolized through Jacob's ladder, which man gradually climbs step by step. The higher he climbs, the better he will be able to perceive the Divine Father. 82. As the year 1948 begins, the first of the final three years in which I will manifest myself in this manner, I want you to arise and to be strong. Practice those things that the Divine Master has taught you. Thus, on the day of my departure, you will be able to offer the Lord tribute through your spiritual elevation and love. It will be a worthy tribute to God who has come for a long period during this era to give you His teachings. 83. If you achieve that preparation, I will summon the world. Through your words and deeds you will be able to offer testimony to others that I was among you and spoke to you through human spokesmen. 84. Are you aware of the obstacles? Have you not seen the darkness that surrounds you, sometimes preventing you from perceiving the light from the shining candlestick, which represents the sixth seal? 85. Do not disobey the human laws. Heal those who are ill with prayer, with my word, and with my healing balsam. A new era of spirituality and virtuous deeds opens before you. Scientists will not ridicule you. Human justice will not penalize you and religions will acknowledge your spiritual power. 86. You introduce symbols into your worship, but you need to separate yourself from them because that form of worship belongs to the past. The way to worship now and in the future is to communicate with God from your spirit to His spirit. 87. The moment of my departure is approaching. Although it has been quiet during my manifestation in this era, after I depart the news of my arrival will spread throughout the world. People from everywhere will come with curiosity to examine those places where the Lord manifested Himself. They will ask questions about the human spokesman and about the books that were written. When these people arrive, how will you welcome them? Do not present yourselves disunited or in a state of disharmony. Do not present a home that is filled with quarrels, a matrimony without love, or children who are disobedient and disrespectful. Do not cause disappointment by having failed to fulfill your spiritual and material responsibilities. What would those individuals think if they discovered that you lacked spiritual elevation? How would they react if they found you practicing fanaticism and idolatry? 88. Be aware, my people, that the time is approaching when false prophets, false Christs, new churches, and new workers will appear. Therefore, you need to be alert and to pray. 89. Fulfill everything that the Father has asked you to do, for His justice is near at hand. This is not a threat nor a sentence, only a warning. Remember that my justice is loving and perfect. My peace be with you. Teaching 196. 1. Here is the Father who has come to manifest Himself to this multitude of people who have summoned me many times throughout the eras, proclaiming to love me. I observe that you are crying. Your faces are filled with tears. However, they are not tears of love for God but tears of sorrow because your lives are filled with bitterness. It is not a cross that you carry, but rather a heavy burden which you can no longer support. This has occurred because you forgot my teachings, closed my book, and ignored its mandates. 2. O oh my people who listen to this word, there is not only disagreement among the nations of earth, but also there is disagreement among this multitude. Have you forgotten that in 1931 you swore unification and obedience before the Ark of the New Covenant? You are doing what you want instead of fulfilling the will of the Father. But I will eliminate your traditions and imperfect laws so that mankind will know my work and fulfill my law. I will touch all vanity, pride, and corruption with my justice. 
All those who consider themselves noble and great will disappear from among this multitude, and only those who are my true disciples and servants will remain. If any individual wants to arise from this multitude to stop my divine work, it is best that he be removed from earth. 3. The year 1947 is coming to an end, and on its last day it is necessary for you to become truly committed to fulfilling your mission. Otherwise, it will be my justice that will make you recognize the path that you need to follow. 4. Do you not want this teaching to become known by humanity? Truly I tell you that some individuals, instead of helping it to progress, have prevented the spreading of my doctrine. I am preparing humanity to become familiar with this revelation and to receive it in the same pure manner that you have received it. 5. If someone is dissatisfied with possessing a branch of enlightenment from the divine tree, return it to me. It is best for me to take that branch rather than to allow it to fall into error. The Father tells you this because I observe that some houses of prayer have shut their doors to charity, and I find those who are needy and spiritually asleep weeping. 6. Servants of my work, listen to my mandates and fulfill them, for man cannot detain your work. I have entrusted you with a portion of my divine plan. No one can prevent my plan from being fulfilled if you present my work free of mysteries and confusion. You need to become spiritually prepared during these last three years of my communication. Stubborn individuals refusing to acknowledge my work will arrive by the year 1950, but they will yield and acknowledge the Lord after having witnessed the greatness of my manifestation and the purity of your deeds. Although only a short period remains for this manifestation, it is enough time to eliminate all the materialism and fanaticism in your worship. My doctrine is spiritual and that is why you are called spiritualists. But have you carefully analyzed what it means to be a spiritualist? Do you think it is right for one to preach about spiritualism and contradict his words with his negative deeds? 7. If you take advantage of this enlightenment that I offer you, you will truly observe the greatness and purity of my work. The leaders of each congregation will determine whether its people will arise to fulfill my mandates. Even when my golden pens stop writing, I will leave my words permanently printed in the conscience of my people. Once you achieve a higher level of spiritual evolution, you will become amazed at the miracles I will perform among you. You will not suffer once my manifestation comes to an end, because you will feel my presence near you. Your spiritual gifts will develop more when I cease to manifest myself through human spokesmen. You will develop great faith and experience much joy, because I will manifest myself to you through inspiration, intuition, prophetic dreams, and spiritual vision. You will rejoice when you help the ill become healed with your words. 9. The Spiritual World attaining greater enlightenment and spiritual power daily. This will be the protector and faithful guardian of this nation of people so that all can fulfill their mission on earth. Whether you have a material body or not, I only perceive everyone as a spirit. 10. You are being illuminated by the light from the sixth seal, offered through my charity during this period. In the past I sent Jesus, my divine Son. He is the only one who has fulfilled my mandates on earth and who has obeyed the will of the Father. I sent him to convert men into his disciples so that by imitating the divine master they would glorify the Father. I sent Jesus to earth and he gave you life but remember how you treated him. I have come once again not in human form, but as the Holy Spirit. 11. Take advantage of my charity and become spiritually enlightened, thus enabling your heart to become sensitive. Allow your spirit to practice humility, obedience, and allow it to become my disciple. Believe in these teachings that I give you through human spokesmen and prepare yourself to perceive their truth and to feel their essence. 12. The spokesmen through whom I manifest myself are truly not perfect. But I have chosen them to carry out my plans and to fulfill my promise to return among you. However, this manifestation will end in 1950 so that a more elevated, pure, and spiritual manifestation can flourish. That communication will be from spirit to spirit, allowing you to communicate directly with the Divine Father. Thus, there will be no need for intermediaries, and you will be able to receive infinite inspiration directly from the Father. 13. But for now be content listening to me in this manner and prepare yourself so that you can enter into the new era of my communication.
Analyze my word and nourish yourself with its essence. Allow your spirit to elevate itself in order to communicate with me and thus quench its spiritual thirst. 14. Do not detain yourself by judging the spokesman through whom I manifest myself, nor attempt to argue why he was chosen for this mission. Only I know his past, and only I am aware of his destiny in this delicate mission. For some, this mission is very special and elevated, whereas for others it represents a great ordeal and restitution. 15. Everyone can serve me and effectively utilize the time that I have given them. Your mission is to detain evil, to cleanse the path for future generations, and to set the foundation for a humanity that will love me and fulfill my will. 16. During all eras I have come to give you an opportunity to work in order to help you progress and evolve spiritually. I have given you my teachings, and all that you need to help you ascend closer to the Divine Father. But many individuals, after departing from earth and returning to the spiritual valley, have analyzed their lives and discovered that they were unproductive. Then they ask me for another opportunity to fulfill their spiritual mission so that they can restore their dignity and grace. I have granted their request and thus they are allowed to return to earth to lead a more spiritually productive life. 17. I have endowed every spirit with free will and intelligence so that it will follow the right path and avoid those obstacles and temptations that constantly threaten it. I have allowed good and evil to exist so that man, out of love for me and respect for himself, will voluntarily choose to separate himself from all evil and triumph over it. If there was only one path to follow, and man was unconsciously guided by the laws of nature to follow it, he would fulfill his mission as do all things throughout nature that lack free will. But man would achieve no merits if he followed the path of righteousness without using his free will. Thus, there would be no struggle, no aspirations, and no experiences for his spirit. However, I outlined a path of evolution for man and placed him there at the beginning, so that through his own effort he would evolve and become familiar with that path. That path is the only way he can ascend to the Divine Father. 18. Take my teaching to your brethren. Do not deceive your brethren with erroneous interpretations nor imitate the bad deeds of my disciples. If you have the spiritual gifts and graces to guide your brethren and to heal their afflictions, do not conceal your gifts. Allow your spirit to speak utilizing its past experiences, and thus you will be fulfilling your mission on earth. 19. You will rescue the lost sheep and help me, the divine shepherd, to congregate all of them in the sheepfold. Thus, you will have achieved the merits that I requested for your spiritual evolution. 20. As this new day begins, many elevate themselves in prayer to pray for those whom they believe are dead. I say to you that it is good to remember them, to remember them with gratitude, love, and admiration. However, it is wrong for you to cry believing that they are dead and lost forever. If you could observe them during those moments in which you cry, you would become amazed at the enlightenment and surroundings in which they live. You would then say, truly it is they who are alive and we who are dead. 21. Is it not true that you are confused if you cry in the presence of a dead physical body, forgetting that the spirit is still alive? 22. Also I should inform you, instead of traditionally dedicating one day of the year to those who have departed to the spiritual valley, you should instead remain always united with them through the bond of prayer. Then you will always feel the presence of this person because although deceased he is very spiritually alive and continues to help you throughout your life. In your struggles, in your ordeals, and in your happy moments, those beings have the opportunity to work with you in your deeds and noble tasks, thereby acquiring more enlightenment. 23. I said in the past to let the dead bury their dead. If you analyze my words carefully and with love, you will realize that my words spoke the truth. 24. Everyone carries in his heart and visually remembers the last physical image of his loved ones. The one who departed in childhood you remember as a child. The one who departed the world in old age you remember as old and weakened by physical suffering. It is important to meditate on the difference that exists between that which is physical and that which is spirit so that you can understand that when someone dies, the spirit is indeed born to another life. The spirit will no longer be able to perceive the light of the world, but will contemplate the divine light illuminating its eternal life. 25. 
I once told you that man was idolatrous because of his inclination for the material. He offers proof of his idolatry in his worship of the dead. But my doctrine, similar to a sunrise that illuminates the earth with infinite beauty, has enlightened your life. My doctrine will eliminate the darkness, ignorance, and confusion in your life. My doctrine, which is enlightenment, ascends toward the heavens like a divine star. That beautiful light of enlightenment will illuminate your spirit. It will prepare you and safely guide you to a more spiritually elevated life. 26. You will no longer cry in anguish for those who have departed to a better world. Neither will you be one who, being in spirit, cries for those remaining on earth. You will also no longer yearn for your physical body that you utilized on earth. 27. There are those beings who suffer and experience grief upon contemplating the disintegration of their beloved bodies. However, you should elevate a hymn of praise to the Creator because your mission on earth has come to an end. 28. Today I have come to forgive all of your mistakes. Also, I have come to reveal one page from the Divine Book of Life in order to illuminate your spirit and mind. Thus, you will be able to fulfill deeds that are worthy of the one who has been your teacher. 29. You are incurring a great responsibility with humanity, because your responsibility will increase with each additional teaching that I give you. You are destined to speak to the world about spirituality. I will use you to teach humanity the perfect way to communicate with me, my spirit with your spirit, without practicing rituals nor idolatry. 30. This holy seed, which I have sowed in your heart, will be the bread that you will share with your brethren and the spiritual heritage that you will leave to your children. 31. When I told you to love one another, not only was I referring to your brethren on earth, but also to those in other mansions. Today I tell you that when you remember those who have departed to the spiritual valley, do not assume that they are distant from you and unconcerned with those remaining on earth. You need to continue to love and to remember them. Do not think of them as being dead but as being alive. Although they dwell in the spiritual valley, they remain close to you. 32. Truly I tell you that you are the people of Israel who have journeyed throughout the three eras. Nevertheless you have not yet fulfilled the mandate given to you since the beginning of time. You have not become spiritualized because you still weep when a loved one departs from earth, believing that he is dead. 33. That is why I have come to enlighten those who dwell on earth because they need it more than those who have departed to the spiritual valley. You are the ones who are truly dead, whereas they live in the valley of eternal life. 34. I allow those beings to be in your presence when you elevate yourself spiritually during prayer. However, I say to you, do not remember them in their physical form because they are now spirits of light. 35. Do not cling to the traditions that mankind follows, rejecting the grace that I am offering you in this era. Behold that while you can fail to effectively utilize your time on earth, spirits continue to progress in the spiritual valley. 36. Triumph over the passions of your physical body and utilize this opportunity on earth to achieve spiritual freedom and elevation. Remember that I will summon you to return to the spiritual valley and that you have to fulfill the law of evolution. Upon departing from earth, your spirit will observe how its material body disintegrates and returns to the soil. 37. If you do not want to be spiritually confused when it is time to penetrate into the spiritual valley, continue to progress spiritually. Achieve merits while you are on earth, help mankind to live in harmony, pray and work for peace among nations, and offer charity and love to your brethren. 38. There are those who say to me, Lord, if you are an omnipotent God, offer me proof of your power. I then respond in the following manner. When you speak in that manner it indicates your lack of spiritual evolution because I can disintegrate the earth any time I desire. 39. I have come so that your spirit can become aware of me. It will be your spirit that will recognize my essence and ascend to the Father. I also forgive the weaknesses of your material flesh. 40. Purify yourself so that your spirit will be in harmony with its material body, and thus through your merits you will ascend to the Divine Father. Allow humanity to seek me through its different religions and sects. 
Do not judge your brethren for you are not yet able to perform perfect deeds. 41. Let those who practice idolatry and create their gods, similar to the practices of Aaron, continue to worship their sacred idols and images. The time will come when they will awaken from their deep sleep. 42. It is your responsibility to sow the seed of spirituality and to teach your brethren spiritual worship, which pleases God. That is how man will be able to feel the presence of spiritual and divine things. He will no longer need to see things physically in order to believe. Those witnessing this manifestation have been able to feel the presence of those spiritual beings whom they remember with love and gratitude. Those beings have approached you, similar to the sweet fragrance of a perfume, inviting you to follow the path that they are making for you. Those spiritual beings, no longer interested in the material things of earth, come to help and spiritually awaken mankind. 43. Those who cry for their departed ones are the ones who are really dead. They are materialistic due to their ignorance, and they do not understand the meaning of life. Although they say that they believe in the immortality of spirit, they demonstrate their lack of faith through their weeping and mourning. They cry for the dead because they are no longer able to perceive them physically, not realizing that those for whom they cry are truly alive. 44. Feel my peace by practicing the mandate of Christ which tells you to love one another. 45. Come to me and I will spiritually strengthen you. Resurrect to a life of grace. Convert yourself into my disciple, a messenger of the good news. Humanity is summoning the Lord, and through you I will give humanity my divine teaching. Among humanity are those who have awaited for me for a long time. They sense that today is the hour of my presence on earth so I can help man progress spiritually. But before sending you to give the good news to your brethren, you will need to purify and prepare yourself. If you are overwhelmed with sorrow and feel weary, remember that I am your helper and that I will assist you as you carry your cross. If you pray and dedicate yourself to fulfilling your mission, you will not weaken when you confront ordeals and obstacles. You will feel joy and hope in your heart and you will not fear the future. Bad intentions and bad judgments made against you will disappear. Do not deny me even when your faith is strongly tested. During the most difficult moments of your ordeal, it may be my will to grant you a miracle, thus offering testimony that you are my disciple. 46. Listen to my parable and analyze it. 47. A multitude of hungry, ill, and unclothed individuals came to a house seeking charity. The owners of the house were always prepared to nourish the hungry travelers. The owner of the land always came to preside over their banquet. Time passed and the needy continued to always find nourishment and shelter in that home. 48. One day the landlord noticed that the water on the table was dirty, that the food was neither nutritious nor appetizing, and that the tablecloths were stained. He summoned the individuals who were responsible for setting the table and asked them, Have you seen the tablecloths, tasted the food, and drank from the water? Yes, sir, they responded. He then told them that before feeding the hungry, they would have to first feed their own children. If the children were pleased with the food, then they could continue to feed the hungry travelers. The children ate the bread, fruits, and other foods on the table but were not pleased with what they had eaten. They were discontent and reacted harshly. The landlord then told the hungry travelers who were waiting to be nourished, Come under this tree, for I will give you appetizing fruits from my orchard. He then told his servants the following, Clean and set the table as I ordered, and make amends with those whom you have deceived. Correct your mistakes. I ordered you to welcome all those who were hungry and thirsty, and to offer them nutritious fruits and clean water. I am not pleased with your work, because you have not fulfilled your responsibility. 49. The landowner prepared the banquet. He made sure that the bread was nutritious, that the fruits were ripe, and that the water was pure and refreshing. He then invited those who had been waiting, including beggars, lepers, and sick individuals. They were all nourished and became content. Soon they were healthy and free from their ills, and decided to remain at that ranch. They began to work on the fields. However, they were weak and did not follow the advice of the landowner. They mixed the different types of seeds and the harvest began to get worse. 
The wheat was smothered by bad weeds, and when harvest time came, the landowner approached them and said, Why are you sowing in my fields? If your only responsibility was to welcome the visitors who come to this house, what you have sown is of poor quality. There are other individuals who are responsible for sowing the fields. Go and clean the fields, remove the bad weeds, and then return to look after the house. The water fountain has become dry, the bread lacks nourishment, and the fruits are bitter. Help the hungry travelers who come to the house, just as I have helped you. After you have nourished and healed those who come and have eased their suffering, I will allow you to rest in my mansion. 50. I come to give you this word in order to guide you along your path and to warn you of future dangers. 51. You are living in the third era, a time of spirituality. 52. I come to bring peace, faith, and hope to your heart, and it is my divine will that you keep this divine teaching in your heart. 53. Tell the Lord about your concerns. He created you, and you will return to Him. 54. It is now time to study the teachings of the Divine Master and for everyone to be in harmony with their thoughts so that everyone will unite with the Divine Love of God. 55. Each of you has been given a mandate that you have not yet fulfilled. 56. Do not abandon this teaching. Accept it with love so that tomorrow you will not stray from the truth. If you disregard my divine teachings, it will detain your spiritual progress and cause you to fall into a state of confusion. 57. I will reveal my truth more clearly when I observe that you are prepared. However, you are still ignorant and unable to understand me. But I say to you, you are the ones who are closest to the Father because you are journeying through the path of spirituality, a path which is infinite. My peace be with you. Teaching 197. 1. The Divine Master offers His love to His disciples and children. As your God, you are my children, and as the Divine Master, you are my disciples. 2. My beloved people, God, your Father and Creator, endowed you with a strong and courageous spirit. The spirit carries a sword of righteousness, and it will struggle until it is able to reject all evil things. Also, you have been endowed with wisdom to free yourself from all ignorance and darkness. 3. After my departure in the second era, John, my disciple, was able to perceive the present era during a spiritual vision. He perceived the dangers, the catastrophes, the struggles, and the wars that humanity would experience during this period, as well as the peace that would follow. Also revealed to him was the form that prophecy would be written so that it would be revealed throughout the world. Four. I want my new disciples to understand the meaning of those revelations and the essence of my present teachings. Then, they will truly understand the purpose of spirituality and become strong in their struggle. 5. I am the divine doctrine so pure and holy that it cannot be contaminated. Thus, when the Lord descends to communicate through the human spokesman, they become purified, and he cannot be stained with their human sin. Although the spokesmen through whom I manifest myself attempt to be righteous, they still need to spiritually elevate themselves to communicate with the Divine Father. When they do, they receive His inspiration, revelations, and divine knowledge. But they still lack spiritual evolution and preparation. 6. However, I am the Spirit of Love, and I do not seek to communicate only with those who are righteous. I come to earth seeking mankind. Although men are unjust, I truly love them because they are my children. I come to save them from their sins and their state of ignorance. They need me more than those who are already spiritually enlightened. They need my justice and my love to purify their sins, and they need my power and grace to help them evolve spiritually. I speak to them through their conscience. It is then that the child communicates with his Divine Father and perceives himself one with his Father. 7. Why is man surprised that the Lord chose to manifest himself through sinners during this era? Perhaps were those who listened to my word during the second era righteous? Had my disciples, perhaps, attained perfection? No, my people, for among the multitudes who listened to my word were the sinners, the unbelievers, and those with harmful vices. Human misery also existed among my disciples, and when they listened to the Divine Father through their conscience, they dedicated themselves to His doctrine, thus they taught humanity through their examples, 
leaving their names eternally written in the hearts of men. The spiritualists should recognize and always follow their examples, because those disciples were true sours of my seed. There are statues and images of them in many places, but it is not necessary to seek them through those images. As you can observe humanity will remember them eternally. Love my disciples and imitate their deeds of virtue. Remember that I have taught you to love me by loving your brethren. 9. You want to know where true wisdom is found. And I say to you that it is found in God. Others want to know which is the true religion. And the Divine Master informs you that whoever loves him and loves his brethren has discovered the truth and has fulfilled the law. 10. I have permitted religions to exist on earth to represent paths that lead a spirit to God. Every religion that teaches love, charity, and virtue is a good religion because it embraces the divine truth. But man will stray from the divine path and follow a path of materialism and sin if within his religion he becomes corrupt and converts goodness into evil. 11. I have come during this era to reveal the truth and to teach you my law and the true path to God. Man needs to seek this law, which is like a star that will guide him to the Divine Father without needing rituals, statues, and things that are material. The one who seeks me in this manner will be a spiritualist. 12. Man will observe that these teachings will strengthen humanity in the future. The spiritualist of tomorrow will be recognized and perceived as an individual who knows how to fight temptation and continues to follow the true Divine Path amidst confusion and hardship. He will not be seen as a mystic or someone who separates from the world to pray. The spiritualist will know how to confront the world as he becomes spiritually prepared. He will be able to predict the future utilizing his spiritual vision and with his prophetic words announce forthcoming events. He will be able to save his brethren who have fallen into the abyss of confusion and suffering. 13. The message of spirituality is not the work of man. It is the work of God. It is an eternal law that governs all spirits. 14. Learn to appreciate and to value my work, and it will inspire you despite your lack of spiritual evolution. Do not fear if your vocabulary is limited because the eloquence is not in the words but in their divine truth. Thus, they will be eternal. 15. I leave you spiritually united with all your brethren without distinguishing their different religious beliefs. 16. Although it appears that your arrival preceded mine on this day, truly I tell you that I have been awaiting you at my table. 17. I have left my throne to be with you, to give you my teaching, and to comfort you in your sorrow. You have also departed from your home and family to listen to the Divine Master. 18. You have discovered that by practicing my Divine Mandates one can attain peace and harmony in life. Just as you have learned the spiritual lessons of life and have experienced great joy with these teachings, many others will also begin to practice my divine mandates. 19. I have come to awaken man with my teachings in this period, because he has been spiritually asleep for a long time. Although humanity is aware of the teachings of Jesus during the Second Era, no one practices them. Therefore, it was necessary for my spirit to return and enlighten you of my doctrine of love and the infinite path that your spirit will have to follow along its journey to spiritual evolution. 20. Those who dream of the eternal, who love truth, and who yearn to elevate themselves beyond the misery of human life will accept these teachings. They are charitable with their spirits and prefer spiritual garments to material garments. These individuals have begun to comprehend my teachings. They realize that my mission is not limited to relieving only human suffering and illness, but that it also promises eternal life. 21. My doctrine comes to inspire you to destroy the materialistic world that you have created and to erect a world of spirituality. Thus, you will be able to enjoy true spiritual peace and to develop the spiritual gifts that you possess which have remained dormant. 22. Those who had been mentally confused will become enlightened. Those who were full of hate will weep tears of reconciliation, repentance, and love. 23. I invite you to work spiritually because I need numerous workers. No one should be afraid to spend a few moments daily doing my work. Truly I tell you that the hour will come when your spirit will be truly grateful. 24. Do not tell me. Lord, I have seen poverty among those who follow you, whereas, 
I observe abundance, joy, and satisfaction among those who do not remember you nor acknowledge you. Those who follow me do not need to live in a state of poverty. I say to you that the peace experienced by those who listen to me and who practice charity is not experienced by those whom you greatly envy. Spiritual peace cannot be bought with all their material wealth. 25. There are some who know how to possess both material and spiritual benefits. Some individuals lack material benefits because they would forget about the spiritual benefits. Some individuals are only interested in material things, convinced that the divine laws oppose material wealth. 26. Benefits are always just benefits, but not everyone knows how to utilize them. You should also realize that I have not given all the things that people possess. There are those who possess things that I have given them, and others who possess things that they have stolen. 27. The spiritual peace that one feels, rather than the amount of accumulated material wealth one has best indicates if one is fulfilling his mission on earth. 28. I will enlighten those who follow me during this period by communicating with them in many ways. Thus, they will be able to answer their brother's questions in the same clear manner that I answer their own questions. 29. I want my word to give enlightenment to those who listen. Thus, they will remember a teaching full of love. 30. Those who witnessed my manifestation will need to welcome the multitudes who will arrive tomorrow in the same manner that I have welcomed them. 31. Do you remember how you arrived before me? You were weary and you felt you were a failure. You sought the rich, but they offered you nothing. You also sought the scholars, but they were unable to teach you anything. You were exhausted and suffering, but no one was able to heal your physical ailments or restore your health. You had lost all hope and faith and were convinced that charity did not exist among mankind, because others perceived you as a stranger rather than a brother. Some of you spoke disrespectfully of God, others uttered curses, and others wanted to die. 32. Many of you arrived before me in that condition and then discovered that my fountain of mercy is the only one that never runs dry. Man only needs to seek my fountain so that his weary spirit may discover God's mercy. 33. You will soon observe that all of humanity will become disillusioned. It will realize that human power, wealth, and science cannot answer their questions, bringing peace to one's spirit, or heal human suffering. You will observe humanity searching for the fountain of truth beyond the material world beyond and mankind and its false power. 34. There will be many who will seek me and intuitively question me from spirit to spirit. I will answer their questions. But there will also be many others who will cross your path asking you questions, seeking enlightenment. You will welcome those individuals in my name and enlighten them with the teaching that I have given you. 35. If you truly give to others with love, light, and spirituality, truly I tell you that you will help them develop faith in the Divine Father. You will also restore their trust in mankind, a trust that needs to exist among all humans because everyone is a child of God. 36. I recognize your merits. I observe those who have left their material occupations, or their pleasures and their rest, to come listen to my word. Some continue to listen to me despite their family's criticism of my teachings. 37. I offer my blessings and my peace to everyone. I bless those who yearn to perfect themselves, and those who hunger and thirst for knowledge. They would like to change their lives and habits in order to feel closer to the Lord. If they remain in the divine path, they will reach the end of their journey and attain what they so much desire. 38. The Divine Master wants all of His children to listen to Him with joy and enthusiasm. He wants them to spiritually improve their lives and to avoid sin and evil. Truly everyone is struggling to attain that goal, some with great eagerness, others less eagerly, but everyone is struggling to improve. Do you think I am not aware of the struggles that you are experiencing? 39. You are still tempted by vices, passions, and idolatry. During those moments your prayers and your faith has helped you to attain salvation. Your spirit is prepared to receive me and to witness my new manifestation. However, it did not achieve that preparation on earth, but through its long spiritual evolution. To comprehend my manifestation it was necessary to eliminate many of the negative traits your spirit acquired along its journey on earth. 
Those who are not prepared will reject this manifestation. Families disagree about my manifestation causing parents to reject their children, children to judge their parents, siblings becoming strangers to one another, and marriages to dissolve. 40. This is not the first time that this has happened. During the second era men also disagreed about Jesus and his teachings were accepted by some and rejected by others. Some gave up their lives to follow his teachings, while others claimed that they were deceitful and false. 41. If humanity had truly been spiritually waiting for the Lord, it would not have become confused. Those who truly awaited him, who summoned him, and who yearned for his arrival did not become confused. 42. I have told you to invite all of your brethren to sit at my table. Although not everyone believes in me, I need to speak to everyone. 43. During the second era I went to seek the multitudes everywhere because where I spoke did not matter to me. I would speak to them in temples, along the roads, in the valleys, on the banks of the rivers, or on mountains. 44. I have united all of you in these humble houses of prayer to give you my teachings. During this era, it is necessary for the spokesman to be prepared in order to manifest myself. Although the spokesmen are divinely inspired during this manifestation, they are unable to go to various places and teach it because they are still spiritually unprepared. Therefore the multitudes have come to listen to me in these houses of prayer. That is why I say to those who listen to my teachings daily to summon their brethren to listen to my teachings. 45. I come to prepare you for the new era that will arrive after I give you my teachings. It will be an era of spirituality and elevation. 46. I will give you my teaching through human spokesmen for three more years, which will be like three days because time is always consistent and continuous. 47. O oh my people! I have been very patient and have given you all that you need in spiritually preparing you to become my disciples. But I should warn you that everything has its limit and that the peace granted to you by the Father will also come to an end. Soon you will know how to truly respect all things that are spiritual and then you will truly prepare yourself as my disciple. 48. The doctrine that I bring to mankind during this era is unlike other doctrines and sects that exist throughout the world. This revelation which I now bring is the eternal law. However, due to your lack of spirituality and comprehension, you have changed my doctrine by combining it with many rituals and impurities. You have introduced many rituals into my doctrine, proclaiming and believing that they were inspired and ordered by me. 49. The time is approaching when you will open your eyes and comprehend the true essence of spiritualism. Truly I tell you that my work is more sacred than all those other things in the world that you believe to be sacred. Nevertheless, I am ready to forgive the faults that you have committed in your mission. Through your repentance you will penetrate into a new life that is more spiritual. You will practice my teachings in a simple manner enabling you to teach true spiritualism to others. 50. If my new disciples would have taken advantage of my teachings from the time they first received them in 1866, do you not believe that they should have understood them by now? 51. Although my teachings were fully explained during the first era, you were unable to comprehend them. Therefore, it was natural that some of my teachings were misinterpreted. Now that you have abundantly received my teachings, those misinterpretations are no longer justified. 52. You believed that my new manifestation came to help remedy the material poverty existing throughout the world and to help you become great and powerful on earth. You are surprised to find that, instead, I have come to offer you my charity, comfort and healing balsam. You need to share what I am giving you with your brethren without expecting anything in return. 53. Truly, whoever expects a monetary reward for the services that he offers to his brethren has betrayed himself and God. 54. The manifestation of my teachings will soon end. No one can say that I have punished him harshly or that his restitution is great. My teachings reveal a pure and loving doctrine and so are the means through which I correct your mistakes. 55. You will not acquire spiritual peace and satisfaction by what you receive materially and monetarily on earth. You will acquire them when you practice true charity among your brethren. 56. If you love peace and practice good will toward others, you will experience true spiritual peace. 
Truly I tell you that there is no treasure on earth that compares with spiritual peace. 57. Only a short period remains in which you will be able to listen to my teachings. The time approaches when you will arise to spread the good news of my new arrival. A time of great enlightenment is coming in which the Spirit of the Lord will descend upon each of you, similar to how he spiritually descended upon his apostles in the second era. This enabled them to speak in tongues, symbolizing their gift and ability with words, which was granted to them by the Lord. It is necessary for you to become a true apostle of my doctrine in order to carry out my will. If you suffer humiliation because of my work, endure it with patience and practice forgiveness. Remember the great humiliation that Jesus suffered while he was on earth, but he never complained. He always forgave and loved those who offended him. 58. I told you to offer your right cheek after someone had slapped you on the left cheek as a sign of forgiveness. I did not limit my doctrine to only words. During my last days on earth, I was physically abused many times. However, rather than react with anger I continuously offered forgiveness to those who mistreated me. My humility and gentleness toward those individuals resulted in many miracles and many conversions with them, which only I was able to perceive. Jesus the Savior came to teach man that to achieve spiritual elevation one needed to be humble, loving, and gentle. 59. Since his birth, the divine humility of Jesus fully manifested itself to the world. The teaching of love and humility which he brought to mankind began on a cold night when a woman, both physically and spiritually pure, joyfully prayed to the Lord from a stable. That stable was the only shelter that opened its doors to welcome the Savior into the world, having only a manger for a bed. 60. You now live during a different period. I have returned among mankind. Although I have not returned in human form, I have come once again to teach mankind about humility. The darkness that presently covers humanity is much greater than the night that Jesus was born. The hardened hearts that have welcomed me during this period are similar to the rocks found in the cavern where the infant Jesus first stayed and opened his eyes. Today, man's disregard for things that are spiritual and divine and his lack of love for one another are similar to the cold weather during that holy night. The spokesmen, through whom I now communicate, have hearts that are as hard as the hard straw that was in the manger. Thus, once again I come under the same conditions to bring you my teachings. I ask you, will man once again crucify me like he did in the second era? 61. Behold my footsteps and follow my path. If you experience suffering, sacrifice, and renunciation along this path, pray to Jesus and I will send you my strength and help you carry your cross. My peace be with you. Teaching 198. 1. Blessed is the one who comes before me with true humility. 2. This is the period when I will prepare men, both spiritually and mentally, to testify truthfully about my new arrival. 3. As my disciples journey throughout the world, speaking and teaching in my name, they will have the faith and assurance that I will help them during their ordeals. For I have always offered evidence of my love and presence throughout the world. For when grief overwhelms you and you summon the Father, truly convinced that He is listening and feeling your sorrow, you will feel hope and comfort. It is the Father's way of letting you know that He is listening to your prayer. 5. If life is filled with bitterness and obstacles for an individual, and He solicits help and comfort from His Father, why should I not strengthen Him, considering He is my beloved child? Only I can truly help Him to arise. 6. The Divine Father continually offers His love to humanity. Those who have been able to feel my presence will offer testimony to others. Although I am omnipotent, I limit myself so you may feel my presence. 7. Do not judge anyone. Behold how your brethren from different religions pray in a variety of ways that are different from how I am teaching you to pray. I have informed you that I listen to all prayers, because I do not want to conceal myself from anyone who seeks me. However, people will not only judge your spiritual form of prayer, but also my new manifestation. Many of you have already become victims of slander and ridicule for having believed in this communication. Those of you who have witnessed this manifestation are only able to withstand your ordeals because of your strong faith. You are confident that this doctrine, once men have carefully studied and greatly debated over it, 
will be acknowledged universally. Those of you who are listening to my teaching and who will become future teachers of this doctrine will not be able to witness the fruits of your labor while you are on earth. It will take time before this seed produces fruit. Humanity is gradually accepting spirituality. Once man attains a certain degree of spiritual elevation, he will discover that there was no deception in my communication and manifestations. Humanity will discover that the Divine Master truly manifested his love, wisdom, and grace through the human spokesman, who, although imperfect, were cleansed and illuminated through my divinity. Although God is pure, I chose to manifest myself through human spokesmen who continue to struggle to overcome the weaknesses of their flesh. Men are mistaken if they believe that I should communicate only through human beings who are virtuous and perfect so that humanity may believe in this new manifestation. I ask those individuals the following question. Are those who claim to be representatives of God in the various religious organizations truly virtuous and perfect? Truly I tell you, that among all of those representatives there is not a single one who is truly virtuous yet they continue to interpret my word from the first and second era. 9. These spokesmen through whom I manifest myself are not my representatives nor my ministers. I utilize them only as instruments to transmit my inspiration. 10. I have brought you many lessons with my teachings. I have informed you that it is not necessary to construct elegant temples to please God. Nor is it necessary to confess your sins to another human being who is also a sinner. Your heart is the true temple to worship God. When you sincerely repent for your sins and make a true effort to amend your mistakes, then truly I will forgive you. If you are at peace with your conscience and there is joy in your heart, it is proof that you have cleansed your stains. 11. What are the supernatural things that men refer to if everything in me and throughout creation is natural? Instead, are not the evil deeds of man supernatural, given that it would be more natural for man to behave in a virtuous manner since he originated from God and thus possesses all of his attributes? All things created by God have a simple or a profound explanation. There are no mysteries. Those things which you perceive as mysterious or unknown are supernatural to you. However, once your spirit achieves high spiritual evolution and is able to observe and to discover what it could not previously perceive, it will discover that there are no mysteries nor supernatural things throughout creation. 12. If today's scientific advances and discoveries would have been foretold to men in past centuries, they would have considered them supernatural. Now that man has evolved and is aware of the progress made by science, he is amazed with how much it has progressed and perceives those scientific discoveries as very natural. 13. Truly I tell you, tomorrow, when the spiritual communication between man and God spreads throughout the world, humanity will become familiar with these manifestations and will believe that I communicated through human spokesmen. It will believe in what I said and will no longer judge such manifestations as something supernatural or impossible. 14. The men of tomorrow will recognize the greatness and essence of my word through writings of my word. They will admire the simplicity with which I presented the truth and explained things that were profound and mysterious. 15. Through my teachings I am preparing you to respond to those who will come in search of this knowledge. Some will not be satisfied with simple explanations. Scientists who have studied books and nature throughout their lives will come to ask you, Given that God is all-powerful, why did he not materialize himself to explain the discoveries that science would one day achieve? 16. You will then respond. If man carefully analyzes the divine word, which contains great wisdom in its simplicity, he will discover an explanation and a prophecy of what man will achieve in the future. 17. Disciples, do not think that the wisdom that I teach you with my revelations is to be used to confront the wisdom of men. If you follow that path, I now inform you that you will be unable to harvest any fruit. 18. It is not necessary for one to be a scholar to reach me. All you need is to be spiritually elevated and to manifest my word with love and simplicity, as did Jesus in the second era and as I do today. Have I, perhaps, revealed scientific knowledge in my teachings? Have I tried to resolve today's scientific problems? 19. I come to speak only to your spirit. I have come to teach you the path that will lead you to spiritual perfection. You also have that same mission. Speak to the spirit of your brother and help it to perceive the silhouette of the promised land, 
that lies in the horizon. 20. Present my doctrine in a pure and sincere manner to your brethren. Allow them to carefully analyze, to question, and to investigate as they search for the truth. I will not reject man nor prevent him from doing that because each man seeks the truth in his own way. 21. So my seed today because tomorrow it will produce fruit. It does not matter if future generations harvest the fruit. 22. Study my word and penetrate into its essence. 23. I come to give you my doctrine rather than to perceive your stains or your weaknesses. 24. The people of Israel need to set an example of strength for their brethren because Israel is the strength of humanity. 25. You will receive new mandates. With these mandates the multitudes will acknowledge me. 26. Humanity is suffering from disasters that are occurring on earth. While the people of Israel are spiritually asleep, man begs for charity and he receives it from me. However, it is my will that the people of Israel prepare itself to help humanity. 27. The Divine Father left you an example of how to be submissive and obedient. 28. When the time comes, you will receive a mandate to go to distant lands. You will not distinguish among the different races, and I say to you that they are awaiting me. I say to those who are still spiritually asleep that the moment will come when the Father will make himself felt in every human heart. 29. I have not come to perceive your human vanities. I observe that your heart and spirit seek me. I will send you to different lands as messengers of the Divine Master, to teach with examples, as did Jesus in the Second Era. 30. Yes, my people of Israel, take my word to your brethren because it will nourish their spirits for eternal life. 31. It is your responsibility to share my teachings with your brethren because you possess the light and the grace from the Third Era. 32. I am the Divine Father who has come once again, filled with love, to help you arise to a life of grace, guiding you on the righteous path. I paid a large price for humanity in the Second Era. Today, I have come spiritually to give you my word, my divine word, which is known by its love, so that you may practice my perfect teaching. I want you to share it with your brethren. 33. I am refining and purifying your heart with my word, for I perceive that you are still spiritually asleep. 34. The divine master descends to be among all of his disciples on this morning of grace. 35. Those with spiritual vision offer testimony of my presence and perceive the light of my spirit. 36. They have prepared themselves, closing their eyes to the pleasures of the world. They have spoken prophetic words. 37. Continue to prepare yourselves because if you do not, truly I tell you that the rocks will speak. 38. But also I say to you that I do not force anyone to prepare themselves spiritually. If you want to become spiritually prepared, I want you to do it willingly, full of love and joy. 39. Prepare yourselves, my people, because multitudes will arise from different villages and regions to visit these houses of prayer. 40. Study my word and elevate yourselves in prayer. Help your brethren. I do not want to observe the people of Israel feeling ashamed because it was unable to help those in need. No, my people, that is not my will. All I ask is that you help at least one of your brethren in need, with true love and purity. It is your responsibility to analyze my word. 41. I am a loving father, and I have come to you as a father, because as a judge I am unyielding. Regenerate and prepare yourselves so that you will not have me as your judge. 42. The time of the great battle approaches. You will receive my word for three more years. The Father wants to leave these multitudes prepared, knowing His teachings well. It is necessary that those whom I chose to guide their brethren become prepared. They will guide those who remain in the houses of prayer. 43. Learn to comprehend my word, and do not let the world take away this nourishment that I have given you nor should you return its essence back to the Divine Father. 44. Separate yourself from material things and remember what I previously said. Today, do not be as you were yesterday, and tomorrow, do not be as you are today. Regenerate yourself, and renounce all that is evil and useless. I do not want you to be a fanatic nor to practice religious rituals. 45. 
In the first era I sent Moses to earth, and in the second era Jesus of Nazareth came to dwell among mankind. Today I have come as the Holy Spirit. I observe that you are ascending Jacob's ladder, receiving light and grace from my spirit. 46. All of you form only one nation and represent only one child to whom I offer a kiss of peace. 47. Study my word and take it to the multitudes, because the path is now prepared. Men will come to this nation. Be loving with them and set good examples, so that they will acknowledge that you are disciples of the Holy Spirit. 48. Each one of you has a spiritual being that protects you. The time will come when both of you will need to respond to me about one another. Truly I say that you both have a great responsibility. 49. Be eager to fulfill your mission. All beings should become united through only one ideal and one will. Be grateful with my justice, because I am aware of every sincere sentiment in your heart. 50. This is a precious time. You need to quickly arise to fulfill my mandate with love. Some will arise as disciples, others as beginning students. 51. Give those things that belong to the earth to the earth. Your only ideal should be your spiritual salvation because you will have to give an account of each deed on earth. 52. You are no longer ignorant nor inexperienced. You are now aware of everything that you do. 53. I am preparing you for future events. When you no longer hear my word, you will communicate with me from spirit to spirit. 54. Today I observe that all of you are reunited, similar to my apostles in the second era. I am preparing you to perform great miracles. 55. You possess great power. Therefore, share my teachings with your brethren. 56. I have come to give you my wisdom. However, I observe that the hungry wolf, disguised as a sheep, wants to devour you. It fills you with sinful thoughts wanting you to go astray, but as you are about to fall, I quickly help you so you will not become lost. 57. Only a few truly love the Divine Father and are willing to serve Him. But I say to you, persevere along your path so that you will evolve spiritually. 58. I want my people to remain united because if you are with me, I will be with you. I will never leave you by yourself, and thus temptation will not come near the people of Israel. 59. Analyze my word, and be aware that the time remaining for my communication is short. Become aware of the enormous love that I feel for you and the great enlightenment I give to your spirit. Behold that you will need to come to me with a purified spirit. 60. My kingdom is not from this world. Therefore, understand me when I tell you, all loving deeds that you perform on earth will remain with you in the spiritually valley. 61. I am awaiting everyone at my table. Your race and social class will disappear in the presence of God. Everyone is equal and all belong to me. Everyone has a spirit that is like a precious jewel that I have come to seek. 62. This was the place that I chose for my new manifestation where man would see me arriving upon a cloud in front of all the nations on earth. 63. You need to understand these teachings well. I descend spiritually to be with everyone, but not everyone will be able to understand this word. The same thing happened in the second era. Only one nation witnessed my teachings and my deeds, whereas the other nations on earth believed in me through the testimony offered by others. 64. Today, I am congregating all the spirits from the nation of Israel, so that through the teachings of the Divine Master it will truly fulfill its mission on earth. 65. I have come to promise you a spiritual kingdom of eternal light, not a material kingdom. 66. Today, the nation of spiritual Israel has become selfish, ignoring the needs of its brethren. But tomorrow it will become generous and share its gifts with others. 67. In the second era, those who awaited the Messiah and expected him to be similar to a king from earth were discouraged and confused when they saw him arrive with humility. Should those who are witnessing my new manifestation also become confused as did those in the second era? Had I not previously said that the kingdom of God is not from this world? 68. I have come to teach this nation of people so that tomorrow it will teach others who did not have the opportunity to witness this manifestation. 
Those now listening to me are listening to a father who lovingly announces that he will soon depart. Thus, he offers an abundance of tenderness to those present. The father wants his children to remember him, and he does not want them to cry when he departs. He wants everyone to enjoy their heritage of love. 69. The nation of spiritual Israel will have everything that it needs for the great spiritual struggle that is approaching. It will need to sow my seed of love in the human heart to make it sprout once again. 70. Yes, my people, humanity will once again acknowledge me. My essence will be found in every human heart, and my law will manifest itself in the conscience of every being. Those who took part in this divine work will experience great joy, because their spiritual happiness will compensate them for all of their ordeals and bitter moments. They will remember that while they were on earth, they were disciples of Christ, and lovingly protected the seed that the Divine Master gave them to cultivate. 71. O my people, conquer that peace for your spirit so that you will feel that peace in the Kingdom of Heaven. 72. The Divine Master is leading the way and guiding your spirit. My disciples need to give examples of pure love for others to follow. The world is hungry and you have the bread that will nourish it. I am preparing you in the same manner that I prepared my apostles in the past. If you follow me as did my past apostles, you will acquire strength to conquer evil. The elements of nature will help you in your mission if you know how to use them. 73. Humanity is in a state of spiritual and material poverty. There are many who worry about being able to nourish themselves. However, you have not had to endure such suffering, because I want you to live in peace and to dedicate part of your time to practicing my doctrine. Many people from other nations will come to this nation seeking shelter. They will arrive weary from their past struggles, and they will discover a land that is blessed and prosperous, that has much to offer. You will share your bread with them. They will find warmth and shelter in this nation and make it their home. 74. Awaken from your spiritual sleep, my people, because this manifestation will only continue for three more years. Seek now to communicate with me from spirit to spirit because the time is coming when you will feel like an orphan if you do not prepare yourself. I want you to be strong when it is time for me to depart. After 1950, the spiritual world will no longer manifest itself to offer you words of inspiration and advice, nor will you be able to listen to this divine concert descending from the heavens. You will need to elevate yourself spiritually to continue to nourish your spirit. 75. Seek to attain spiritual perfection. Let the will of the Father become your will. Seek those things that will help your spirit to evolve and be less concerned with material things. Humanity has reached a level where I will now detain it. The state of darkness in which man lives will disappear. The bad weeds on earth will be cut, fastened into bundles, and thrown into the fire. Those events shall occur, as was written. I prepare you, my people, so that you will be aware of the time in which you now live and alert your brethren. Blessed is the one who prepares himself spiritually, who repents and prays, for he will be saved. If others reject and mistreat him for helping his brethren, he should remember how Jesus suffered and imitate him. 76. Be understanding with your brethren and forgive those who hurt you. Do not have enemies. If someone wants to hurt you, Utilize your weapons of love and wisdom. If you behave in that manner, you will attain spiritual perfection and experience the gift of peace on earth. I give you the seed, and it is your responsibility to cultivate it. 77. My arrival in this period was prophesied, and that prophecy has now been fulfilled. The prophet said, Men will ascend the mountain of sin and materialism. Wars will spread from nation to nation like a fire that destroys everything. Hatred and ill feelings will grow and spread, similar to bad weeds, among the fields of earth. 78. I knew that with time you would forget me and that you would remove my word from your heart. That is why I announced that I would return. The teachings brought by Jesus have been forgotten, and the human heart has become cold and insensitive much like the night when Jesus was born. Unable to find refuge in a home, his mother found shelter in a manger belonging to some shepherds. 79. Today I did not prepare a refuge for my arrival, because I have come in spirit to manifest myself. 
Amidst so much human skepticism and so many hardened hearts, I have found you, my people, and have chosen you. You have prepared your hearts to welcome me, you have listened to me, and your faith has strengthened. 80. If you want to follow me, practice my teachings of love. I will help you with your cross. However, I do not want those who believe in me today to judge and to condemn me tomorrow, as did those who crucified me in the second era. Today you do not know which individuals will be truly faithful. But I say to you that it will only be a few, and that at times they will find themselves alone. However, their path will be cleared and the angels will protect and free them from danger, guiding them to the celestial sheepfold. My peace be with you. Teaching 199. 1. May the peace of the Holy Spirit be with you. 2. I speak to you untiringly because my disciples will have to face future trials. At that time I want you to inform others about my teachings. I have taught you the principles of my doctrine, so that you may always reveal their truth and purity to others. 3. My doctrine will unite the world to pursue only one ideal. Once men achieve that unity, they will have more spiritual knowledge and earth will experience peace. 4. Today there is disagreement among the different doctrines and they have different beliefs. Every individual wants to be correct. But who can be correct in a battle of selfishness and personal interests? Who possesses the truth? 5. Some have become vain, believing they possess the truth and are following the path of perfection. Truly I tell you that they do not know the true path, for they do not practice humility. One does not practice humility if he fails to acknowledge that there is some truth in all doctrines. I said in the second era, Blessed are the meek and humble of heart. 6. The man who judges the faith and the beliefs of his brethren separates himself from salvation, for in his pride and foolishness, he tries to imitate God. 7. Be sincere with others. Do not be a hypocrite. Be aware that you have a long path to travel before you achieve spiritual perfection. Whoever considers himself unworthy of all that he receives will never be able to praise and glorify himself because of his humility. There will be a confrontation between those who are humble and those who are not. That battle will differ because some will rely on their material power, whereas others who are materially poor will only be able to battle with their spiritual heritage of love. 9. My people, you now know that I have united this multitude by having gathered individuals from different places throughout the world. The spiritualists and the disciples from this group belong to various sects and religions throughout earth. I will not unite them inside a house of prayer, but I will unite them in my divine law and spiritual love. Truly I tell you, that you will not belong to this family only because you have entered these houses of prayer where I speak to you about spirituality. One must truly love his brethren to belong to this family. 10. Do not become frightened thinking that you will have to battle against beliefs, customs, and mistakes that have existed among mankind for many centuries, nor should you be concerned that you are few in number. Be aware that the enlightenment that I have brought you with my teachings comes to destroy the chains of spiritual ignorance and slavery. 11. What can the spiritualist be accused of? if he fulfills his material responsibilities on earth and also the spiritual and moral laws by practicing deeds of love and virtue along his path. But be careful not to practice anything that is against my teachings so that human justice will not declare you non-virtuous. Presently I say to you, as I did in the second era, give to God that which belongs to God, and give to Caesar that which belongs to Caesar. If you do that, your life of purity and love will thus be judged. 12. Obey the laws that govern your nation, and also respect the laws that govern other nations. 13. I leave you my teachings to study and to analyze. 14. Arise as messengers. Imitate the divine shepherd and take the good news to your brethren. 15. Truly I tell you that mankind shall be saved through you. 16. I am guiding you step by step through the path of love, a narrow path, but one that will bring you comfort and peace. 17. I want to perceive you following the path of the Divine Master, a path that leads to true joy and peace. Do not travel through the path of evil for it will separate you from me. 18. Those who have fulfilled their mission are now with me. I come as a loving and charitable Father to remind you to dedicate a few moments to me daily. 19. 
I say to my workers, struggle and work so that when 1950 comes to an end you will have an abundant harvest. 20. You have a delicate mission to fulfill. Some will need to journey to distant lands to fulfill their mission, whereas others will fulfill it among their own family. 21. The spiritual heritage that I have given you in this era is the same one that I gave you in the past. However, you broke the pact of love and goodwill that you made with me long ago, and it was necessary to remind you about that pact. 22. Behold that humanity lives in a state of vice and sin. But you, my people, must keep your hearts pure so that you will remain strong and be saved amidst the confusion. Those who are witnessing my manifestation need to be spiritually united and strong, similar to a chain that will not break. Each of you will represent a strong link in that chain. 23. Help those who have weakened to become strong. I offer my charity to all, but some have yielded to temptation and have not yet listened to the voice of their conscience. It is your responsibility to help them along their path, until they are able to follow my path of love. 24. My children, attend to the Father's teachings, because that which belongs to you is being taken care of. 25. I have given you a physical body to help you fulfill a delicate mission on earth. O spirits, guide that body with love, because you will experience great sorrow if you do not fulfill my mandate. 26. You need to guide your physical body and not allow it to detain you from fulfilling your mission. 27. Sow my seed and make it grow, so that when you return to the Father you will bring numerous seeds. 28. It is my will for you to live in a humble manner, but due to your ignorance many of you plead for material things. 29. You have not taken care of the spiritual gifts I have given you. I gave them to you to protect yourself during harsh times, and not for you to leave them behind along your path. 30. You have had my new manifestation of love since 1866. Have you, perhaps, lacked anything? 31. Blessed is the one who has patiently endured his bitter ordeal, for his suffering will convert into grace. 32. Prepare the temple of love in your heart, because the Father has wanted to dwell in it for a long time. 33. Fulfill your mission with love, thus everyone will observe that Christ is in you. 34. It is my will that you obey my word and that you set good examples for others to follow. Use the strength that I have given you to accomplish this. I have given you a path to follow that is filled with wisdom. Follow my footsteps and ascend to the top of the mountain. 35. Some of you ask me for money, but I say to you, in the first era you had vast riches on earth but disobeyed my law. Today there is bread on your table and you will need to fulfill your mission during this brief period. Help your brethren as much as possible so that at the end of your journey you will present me numerous deeds of love. 36. Do not fear those who dwell on earth, instead fear my divine justice. 37. All human beings are my children, and each one will come to me at the appropriate time. 38. I offer my blessings and spiritual gifts to all beings through those who follow the Divine Master. 39. Cultivate the fields prepared by the Divine Shepherd which are the hearts of all human beings. 40. When the shepherd perceives one of his sheep lost or in need of help, he will go help it and bring it back to the sheepfold. 41. My people of Israel, you are experiencing difficult ordeals, but the Father gives you the strength to triumph over them. 42. If you fulfill your mission on earth, you will experience great joy in the hereafter. 43. The doors of heaven are open awaiting all those who want to enter. You will discover those doors in your conscience. 44. Today, I have come to sit you in my table of love to offer nourishment to your spirit. 45. Children of my divinity and disciples of the Divine Master. Allow the wisdom from my message of love to penetrate into the most intimate part of your spirit. 46. I welcome you, my people. You have arrived before me spiritually weary, sick, and sad. 47. I want you to receive spiritual enlightenment from my divine teachings, because they will offer you strength, joy, and healing balsam. 48. Why do some of you consider my manifestation through human spokesman strange? 49. 
I have not told you that I am present in the body of the human spokesman. I have only told you that his human mind is able to receive my inspiration. I am bringing a new message to humanity, similar to an immense fountain that is pouring its water upon the thirsty fields and orchards. Thus, I am pouring my knowledge and enlightenment into the human mind. 50. The human spokesman transmits my inspiration through words that are filled with love and tenderness. In those words, you will discover a healing balsam to heal your body and spirit. Also, I have come to teach you to worship the Lord in the true altar, not in altars of darkness, idolatry, and fanaticism. 51. Prepare yourself to receive the great spiritual wealth that I have brought you. Let me now remove the veil that you have so that you will comprehend the complete meaning of my new message. 52. I have come to help you comprehend my doctrine spiritually without the use of books. I have come to help you interpret the true meaning of all my revelations. Thus you will not fall into idolatry, because you will no longer allow symbols or rituals to prevent you from spiritually evolving. You will now penetrate into the true meaning and essence of my doctrine. 53. You have been told that the angels in heaven are eternally listening to celestial music. Accept this figuratively, because the music in heaven is unlike that of earth. If you believe otherwise, due to your materialism, you are mistaken. Celestial music refers to the harmony that exists between God and all beings. 54. But, why are some unable to understand this? given that everyone carries in their spirit a musical note from that celestial concert. Why are some who are listening to this teaching unable to comprehend it and interpret it correctly? Why are some unable to listen to that divine music? 55. O oh my beloved children, seek enlightenment through prayer, because your ability to comprehend is weak. Ask me questions through prayer, because no matter how profound your questions are I will respond to you. I will also ask you questions during prayer. During those moments of communication between the Divine Master and His disciples truth and enlightenment will emerge. 56. Celestial music refers to the presence of God within your being. Your spirit will become a part of that Divine Concert once you have achieved true spiritual elevation. That is the true meaning of celestial music and the singing of the angels. Once you are able to comprehend this and hear that music within your being, you will have discovered the truth and will feel the presence of God. Life offers you an eternal and divine concert, and in each musical note you will discover a new revelation. You have not yet listened to those beautiful notes playing in perfect harmony because not all beings have achieved true spiritual elevation. If you were now able to listen to those musical notes, they would lack harmony, and you would not discover their true beauty. It is necessary to go beyond the physical senses, beyond human passions, and beyond the darkness of materialism to listen to the celestial concert of God within your spirit. 57. Why do you believe that my communication through human spokesmen is impossible, if the entire universe is communicating with you? Why do you think it is impossible for my spirit to manifest itself through the human mind, if everyone is filled with thoughts from God? How could it be impossible for God to communicate with you? if the angels, the planets, the heavens, and all creation are filled with His presence. Why would I not be concerned with your spirit or why would I want to abandon it? Have you not realized all of that is impossible? 58. Listen carefully. I am the Divine Master, and this planet is a school for your spirit. Life on Earth, along with my teachings, form the perfect lesson. How could you believe that I would abandon my responsibilities and forget my disciples? 59. My people, again I say to you that the music from the celestial concert is now playing, and that it is necessary for you to elevate your spirit in order to listen to that music playing in perfect harmony. But even if you do not elevate your spirit, the celestial music will continue playing, awaiting those who prepare themselves to listen. 60. I want you to develop sensitivity for things that are spiritual, thus making life on earth easier to cope with, where you experience so much suffering and weeping. 61. Do not listen to those who deny that I am in you and with you. Awaken, and listen to that part of my concert that I am now letting you hear. Up to now you have only been willing to listen to the echo of human weeping and the loud noise of wars. This offers the best evidence of man's state of disorder and lack of harmony. 
which is present throughout the world and in all phases of human life. 62. Wars among brothers and those with different beliefs are occurring everywhere. Great and small, strong and weak, believers and non-believers are all involved in that state of confusion and turmoil. But the time to prune is approaching, and truly I tell you that all trees producing bad fruit will need to be cut. 63. Suffering, the passage of time, and truth will be the relentless sickle that will cut the roots of the bad weeds. They will later be thrown into the fire of wisdom, where everything that is false will be consumed. 64. Amidst this chaos there are those who doubt my love, and I say to you, how could I abandon this world, if I am the only one who can restore order to the chaos and confusion? 65. Do not forget that whenever you find yourself in darkness, I will come to help you, for I am the light of the world. 66. Men are the ones who provoke the storms, but it is my responsibility to teach mankind to live in peace. I am doing that through my doctrine, which I have given to man during all eras. This doctrine, similar to a concert of beautiful music, is a message from the spiritual kingdom of love and justice. 67. I will continue to speak to your heart. The kingdom of heaven wants to manifest itself on earth. Allow it to manifest itself through you. 68. It is impossible to separate God from His children and for Christ and mankind to be distant from one another, just as it would be impossible for a body to exist without a head or a sun to exist without planets. 69. When you rejoice in the divine truth, you will experience and enjoy many beautiful things in your existence. When you achieve the spiritual freedom that I have come to offer your spirit, you will be able to spiritually journey through the heavens and to different planets. 70. I have come to comfort you during this period of suffering which was foretold my prophets. Roque Rojas, my messenger in this period, spoke about the ordeals that were to come. I also informed you, through the first spokesman, that the prophecies were now being fulfilled. Those who listened to me when this manifestation first started will remember that the Divine Master said, Behold that life will change and that humanity will endure a very bitter chalice. Nations will be at war with one another and parents and children will reject each other. The husband will abandon his wife, and she in turn will be unfaithful to her husband. Many children will become orphans, although they still have their parents. Many will perish due to the great hunger, sin, and vices that will exist among humanity. 71. Behold that after a few years all that suffering, like a strong current of water, will sweep away human lives, homes, cities, beliefs, and institutions. I say to those who are listening to me to remain alert and to pray so that they will not be swept away by that current. 72. Guard and protect the virtue of your family and the peace of your home. Behold how even the poorest can have this beautiful treasure. Be aware that the human family is a representation of the spiritual family. In the family, the man the father truly bearing a similarity with his celestial father. The woman, with her maternal heart full of tenderness, is the image of the love of the Divine Mother. And the family that is formed through this unity is a representation of the spiritual family of the Creator. The home is the temple where one can learn to fulfill my laws if the parents know how to prepare themselves spiritually. 73. The destiny of parents and children is to return to the Divine Father, but first they need to mutually help one another in order to fulfill their mission and restitution. 74. Life on earth would be much easier, and the weight of the cross that each being has to carry much lighter if parents and children loved one another. The most difficult ordeals would be easier to cope with if humans practiced love and understanding with one another. By accepting and fulfilling the will of God, man would experience spiritual peace. 75. The first institution on earth was marriage because that union was blessed by the Creator beginning with the first male and female on earth. Throughout the eras my revelations and divine laws have informed you of the importance of that mission. While I was on earth, I enjoyed visiting married couples and families. My presence in those homes sanctified those unions and blessed their fruits. I spoke to the children, to the youth, to spouses, to parents, and to the elderly because it was necessary to restore everything and to offer new enlightenment on how one should live on earth. Your life on earth represents a phase of the spiritual life. My word was for all beings.
That is why, whenever I spoke, mothers would hastily arrive holding their children by the hand and on their arms. When Jesus told the multitudes, Whoever knows the Son, knows the Father, those simple beings truly felt that they were listening to God from the depths of their hearts. They would tell the Divine Master, Alleluia, you are the Messiah whom we had awaited. Blessed is the one in whose name you have come. 76. Today, a new era for mankind has opened with my arrival, although the essence of all my teachings remains the same. I have come to remind you about things that you have forgotten, to offer you new teachings, and to help you to live a more elevated life on earth. 77. If you were fulfilling my law on earth, do you believe that I would have come during this era to manifest myself through human spokesmen? 78. With my teachings, I have come to cultivate the seed that I previously sowed in your spirit. However, I will speak in this manner only until 1950. Afterward, I will continue to enlighten your spirit, communicating with you from spirit to spirit. Today, I have come to remind you of God's principles which you ignore. I offer you my divine advice, and I once again say to you that I bless the institution of marriage and the family. But in order to expand your spiritual horizons and to prevent you from becoming vain, I have come to teach you to form a true spiritual family among this multitude who listens to me. The father of this family is God, and all the beings throughout the world are your brethren. 79. When one fulfills his responsibilities with his family, he will feel stronger and more worthy, even when he has to depart from his home, his city, or even his nation to spread my teaching to other places. Do not be afraid because I have said that you will have to depart from your home and community. I will take care of what you leave behind, and it will not be necessary to take much. To help you fulfill your mission, I will, beforehand, prepare the roads through which you will travel. Also, I will open doors along your path and will spiritually prepare those individuals to whom you will take my message. A sacrifice of blood does not await you, although you will need to sacrifice some of your earthly pleasures. If one departs from his home to take my teaching to other lands, his home will be blessed. I tell you these things because I will continue to manifest myself in this manner only three more years, and I want to leave you prepared so that no one will surprise you. Your gift of intuition will guide you during that period so that you will know where to go and what path to follow. My disciples will not be traveling by themselves, because they will be accompanied by numerous spirits assigned to help them. Elijah the spiritual shepherd, will illuminate the paths and protect his sheep. Through your loving deeds you will fulfill the will of God. 80. You are not the only ones who are responsible for this work. There are beings in the spiritual valley who are ready to incarnate on earth after you depart to continue with your work. The world will change, but the change will take place gradually. 81. Meditate on my word, so that you will attain enlightenment. Once humanity becomes aware of the place that it occupies in God's creation and its mission, it will realize that its destiny is always to love and to bless everyone and everything. My peace be with you. Teaching 200. 1. The doors to the kingdom of heaven are open for all those who want to receive its benefits. That kingdom is found in the spirit of man. 2. There is great joy in your spirit and in mine when you prepare yourself to receive my messages of spiritual enlightenment. 3. I welcome those who are ill, sad, and in need of spiritual love, for I will give them the healing balsam, enlightenment, and strength that they need. 4. I send you my enlightenment because I love you. It will help you to eliminate your sorrows, fears, and doubts. I want you to feel embraced by my love and protected and safe from all the danger that threatens you. My fountain of mercy overflows to heal you physically and spiritually. Just as I help you, I also help all others throughout the earth and in other planets, because my divine spirit descends to every mansion where my children dwell. 5. If you welcome me and allow me to nourish you with my spiritual enlightenment, you will no longer be able to reject me or doubt these teachings that have given you life. Thus, you will offer constant testimony of love and gratitude with your deeds. 6. Can you imagine the great joy that one experiences in the kingdom of heaven? You have attempted to envision life in heaven. You imagine it full of divine music, beauty, purity, and love. 
I now tell you that perfect harmony reigns over that kingdom. 7. Be aware that all of you will eventually form a part of that divine concert, experiencing the joy found in heaven, when you attain spiritual perfection. You will then be with me and offer me the respect that I deserve. You will hear the divine music within your spirit when you learn that my presence is within your spirit, joyfully perceiving all the things that I have created. I will show you these things because they will also belong to you. Once you are with me you will observe and feel the beautiful harmony that reigns throughout the universe. Then your spirit will sing a beautiful and loving song to the Divine Father. When you feel my presence within your being, you will discover a divine concert in every scale and a revelation in every note. You will feel so close to me that I will become the most important thing in your life. I will welcome you as one welcomes a traveler who has reached the end of his journey, aware of his accomplishments and what he expects to find. 9. My people, you have not yet heard that beautiful divine music within your being because your spirit is still materialistic. You need to reach a higher state of spiritual elevation to be able to listen to that celestial concert. I am preparing the path so that you can become spiritually enlightened. 10. Why do you believe that it is difficult for me to communicate through human spokesmen? Do you doubt spiritual communication from my spirit to your spirit? If all creation receives nourishment from me, and if all spirits are like branches on a tree, receiving life and nourishment from its sap, how could you believe that I am distant from you? Since I am your father, doctor, and teacher, why is it also so difficult to believe that I am not concerned with your suffering? 11. Listen. Soon, there will be disharmony among people because of their different beliefs. Incarnated and disincarnated spiritual beings are perturbed and confused. They sow evil and destruction along their paths, seeking to hurt and kill one another. However, suffering has also arrived. The harvester has come during this period to cut down all the trees that are not producing good fruit. Only justice and truth will prevail during this great battle. Many churches will disappear, although a few will remain. Some churches will truly be following the laws of God, whereas others will only be deceiving people. However, the sickle of justice will continue to cut all the bad weeds until only the good seed remains on earth. 12. During that period those who become spiritualized will achieve the elevation and the knowledge that will give them true wisdom. Thus, you will no longer need human science to guide you because your spirit will reveal whatever you need to know once you become spiritually prepared with my teachings. 13. Philosophers, lawyers, and priests will come before me to ask me questions. I will answer their questions and convert them with my divine teachings. Some will be unable to comprehend me and become confused. Others will humbly ask for my forgiveness. They will not demand any proof from me, but I will offer it to them, because I love them and want them to acknowledge me. 14. When scientists can no longer resolve humanity's problems or answer their questions, humanity will seek me. It will then discover that I have been waiting to offer my teachings and my comfort to everyone. Humanity will then realize that this word comes from Christ, the one who knows how to tenderly embrace all those who are sad and who knows how to speak gently to all beings. The Divine Master is using the same gentle language today, as he did in the past when he told mankind to love one another. 15. You are living during a period of purification and your brethren weep in anguish. Suffering will help man to become purified giving him spiritual strength. New apostles will soon arrive after you. 16. I will be with you to comfort you and to make you strong so that you will continue along your path of restitution. I want you to convert your enemies into your friends and to become worthy to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Once there, you will gather the fruit from each of your deeds. 17. I speak to you in this manner so that you will begin to practice deeds of love and charity. For your destiny is to love and to bless everyone. Live as Jesus did, always in communion with the Father and in perfect harmony with all the beings in creation. 18. Whenever you practice a virtuous deed, such as being kind with a child in need, helping a needy individual, or protecting a defenseless person, have you not heard an inner voice that blesses you and encourages you to continue to practice those deeds? Whose voice is that? It is the voice of the conscience. It is the voice of the father rewarding his child.
because the child is imitating the father. 19. If you want to become children who are worthy of my divinity and principal heirs to the kingdom of heaven, first you need to become purified. The best way to become purified is by practicing good deeds. I speak to you in this manner so that you may realize that I am awaiting you in my kingdom. You are now following the path that will guide you there, although you still have a long way to travel. I want each of you to become an apostle and each apostle a teacher. 20. I observe that humanity practices many different forms of worship, but I say to you that I do not acknowledge any one religion as being greater than another. I have taught you about love, and there only exists one truth. Humanity will not be redeemed by any church or priests. It is I who will save humanity. I am the wise and loving shepherd who takes care of you, comforts you, and loves you so much that I sacrifice my life in order to teach you the path of life and truth. 21. During the Second Era men believed that by taking my life they would destroy me causing my doctrine to disappear. However, they were not aware that by crucifying me they gave me greater life and glory. From my cross, I blessed my apostles from all eras, all those who have humbly followed me through the same path. 22. I also bless those of you who have presently welcomed me and who are preparing yourselves to continue with my work. 23. My people of Israel, you are weary travelers who come seeking my word in order to fulfill your destiny in the third era. You have arrived with bitterness in your lips and with sorrow in your heart. You and your children have journeyed through a dangerous path, and now that you hear my spirit summon you, you have come, confident that you will be strengthened. 24. I find some who are humbly awaiting to receive my mandates, whereas others, after having greatly sinned, have repented now that they are before my presence. There are also those who are curious and scrutinize my teaching, hoping to discover some error in it to condemn it. Although I know what is in each of your hearts, I love you, and I welcome everyone. 25. I will use those who are humble to take the good news to others who are awaiting me. My teachings, like pure and clear water, purify the ones who have sinned. When an individual realizes that I have forgiven him and have converted him into my disciple, he will repent and never sin again. I will illuminate and offer evidence to the one who has doubts and scrutinizes my teachings, so that he will become familiar with the truth and offer testimony of me to his brethren. 26. Once you have become spiritually enlightened, I will send you in the presence of those who are educated and who speak eloquently. You will not envy them nor feel inferior in their presence, for I have given you great spiritual gifts. 27. Science will come to a standstill. Many scientific scholars will become confused discovering that their knowledge is worthless, since it has failed to bring humanity comfort and true spiritual peace. Once they come to that conclusion, they will seek me, yearning to know the essence and purpose of spiritual life. They will humbly request to enter into my sanctuary, and I will permit them to comprehend and to acquire spiritual enlightenment according to my will. 28. Those who will truly follow me will be the poor and the rejected. After they nourish their spirits with the divine essence of my word, they will arise filled with love to offer testimony of my new arrival. Some will become prophets, while others will captivate the hearts of men through their gift of speech, but all will perform deeds of love among humanity. 29. Those nations that have been despised and rejected, and those places where people live in poverty will awaken spiritually. They will love me and serve humanity. Among them are the great spirits that have been purified through suffering. Hidden among those individuals are my apostles and my messengers. I will summon all nations, and those who are inspired will soon become my messengers. 30. My people of Israel. Some of your brethren, who form a part of this multitude, are currently dwelling in those troubled nations, awaiting my mandates. They pray for world peace, but there are other beings who prefer destruction and war. Those who pray for peace yearn to live in a place where there are no wars, so they can live peacefully and evolve spiritually, in fulfillment of the divine laws. 31. Man will become tired of worshipping false gods and begin to seek my word and my presence. Once he attains a higher level of spirituality, the imperfect manner in which he offers worship to God will disappear. He will no longer summon me at the river shore, 
nor in the mountains, valleys, or in the desert. He will begin to seek me within his spirit, where he will establish the true spiritual temple to love and worship me. 32. You will observe that many, who were once great materially, will descend from that level suffering great ordeals. The ordeals will serve to purify their spirits and to seek my doctrine. They will evolve spiritually through their own virtues, for they will realize the true value of the spiritual gifts that I have given man. In the year 1950 you will perceive many of my prophecies fulfilled. 33. Many individuals, whose hearts have been like a dry field, will begin to produce fruit. I say to those of you whom I have been teaching day after day, prepare yourselves and be ready to sow my seed. 34. After 1950 there will be wars among the people of Israel. Only those who have remained alert, continue to pray and follow my laws, will be able to protect their brethren. 35. I have given you spiritual enlightenment so that you will journey along my path with confidence and teach your brethren. 36. I bless all my children, including those who have witnessed my manifestation as well as those who have not. 37. You are living during difficult times because of spiritual struggles and struggles due to differing beliefs. 38. I have put great importance on this teaching because you will meet many who persist to penetrate into the mystery of my teachings. Also, you will come across multitudes of men and women from various religions. You will discover that in every church and religion there are individuals who have faith and are sincere workers, as reflected by their loving, virtuous deeds. 39. I offer grace to all of my children, because I have seen that throughout the world, each child, even if for just a single moment, has felt love in his heart for God. 40. Throughout the world there are those who perform kind and virtuous deeds seeking ways to help their brethren. Truly I tell you that anyone who behaves in that manner has truly united with me. 41. I have told you that the time will come when all nations will become spiritually enlightened. The enlightenment that man achieves will be determined by his level of spiritual preparation. Through that spiritual enlightenment, man will gain a new and a clearer understanding of creation and of spirituality. Thus, a new period of spiritual evolution will begin on earth. 42. When mankind becomes unified, man will achieve a better understanding of divine, spiritual, and eternal things. Man will endure many ordeals, but after he experiences them, he will understand the divine truth, which is always clear and pure. Spiritual unification will then be achieved. 43. The doctrine that I have revealed and the laws that I have brought you will prevail. Remember, that it is the essence of my word that you will need to share with your brethren. 44. Also, do not be surprised that this multitude will change the way it worships God. Truly I tell you, that soon you will realize that the best way to worship the Father is by practicing deeds of love, charity, and forgiveness with your brethren. 45. Many of your brethren will arrive among you, and after they study spiritualism carefully, they will obligate you to eliminate any fanaticism in your practices. 46. When I manifest myself to this multitude, I observe that, although some are listening to this teaching, they are unable to truly comprehend it and are unaware of its true greatness. There are others drawn to these teachings because of curiosity, whereas others show a lack of respect to them. Some have attempted to test the spiritual world in order to verify its presence. How can those individuals believe in this manifestation if they have these doubts? Will they be able to truly comprehend what they have witnessed if they do not know how to attribute this miracle to the divine power of God? What explanation would they be able to give others who inquire about this manifestation? 47. Those who have faith are able to perform miracles with water that they truly believe is holy. And the Divine Master asks, Does a supernatural power really exist in that water? Truly I tell you that the power is not in the water, it is within you. It is in your faith and in the purity of your deeds, because the Divine Father dwells within you and He is present throughout creation. Remember what I said in the past. Your faith will save you. 48. I am the eternal miracle, the one who illuminates your mind and who touches your heart's emotions to guide you through the path of virtue. Still man demands more things of the Divine Father. 
he has requested to see, hear, and feel those things which he should only perceive through his spiritual senses. But in order to please him, and because I love and understand him, I have granted his request. 49. That is why I have allowed spiritual beings of light to manifest themselves through human spokesmen in the presence of this multitude. Thus, you are able to witness this miracle and thus believe in my presence. Those who have scrutinized this manifestation and still question and doubt it will misinterpret it. Thus, they will use it as a weapon to hurt you, to ridicule you, and to judge you as sorcerers. But this manifestation will cease once it has sowed its seed. However, you will discover that you will not lose the spiritual gifts that you possess and miracles will continue to occur. They will occur because you will continue to offer charity to your brethren, allowing your conscience to guide your steps. 50. Analyze my word so that you will realize that I am not imposing specific customs. 51. It is the essence of my teachings that you will need to protect and you need to share it with others along your path, because the time will come when you will no longer need these houses of prayers. I will manifest myself along your path, in your home, in the mountain, and in all places. There are infinite fields where you will need to sow charity and to demonstrate that you are my disciple. Each individual's mission will be different, but each will always be given the opportunity to practice good deeds. You can practice good deeds, not only with your deeds but also with your thoughts, words, and even with a single loving gaze. 52. Allow your conscience to judge your deeds, because it will tell you what you need to do to manifest all the spiritual gifts that you possess. 53. When you observe that your brethren are unable to explain the reason for my new manifestation, arise to explain it because you possess that knowledge. 54. The time will come when only a few of my faithful apostles will remain with me. Do not be surprised when the moment arrives. I previously told you that many are summoned and few are chosen. However, it is not that I choose some and reject others. I summon everyone, but the majority choose not to stay. 55. Many have come and others will still arrive, but only those who carry a seed of charity in their spirit will remain. 56. This word is not only for man. Spiritual beings also listen to it because they have a mission to fulfill. 57. I have given you free will. You are free to choose the path that you believe is the best path to follow. A path where you feel love. If my word through the human spokesman does not convince you, then seek me where you are able to truly feel me, because everyone who follows me needs to feel me in his heart. 58. I have come to restore peace and unity among all people, never disharmony. I have come to bring you spiritual enlightenment so that you will be able to distinguish truth from deceit. 59. I perceive you as small children who come near me seeking my tenderness, my warm embrace, and my wisdom to guide you along the path of life. 60. You are still spiritually weak because you have chosen not to learn from the divine teachings that I have given you along your path. 61. Whoever is familiar with my name and my teachings cannot call himself ignorant or spiritually weak. Did I not previously tell you, I am the way, the truth, and the life? What could you lack if you walk through that path of love and nourish yourself with the light of my wisdom? It is with good reason that a baby cries at birth. The spirit knows that it is going to dwell in a valley of tears. 62. Why do you not transform this valley of tears into a mansion of peace? Be aware that the purpose of my teachings is to guide man to achieve the beautiful goal. Peace on earth to men of good will. Peace is a grace and a blessing from heaven. And it will be achieved on earth when mankind learns to love one another. 63. That is the secret to achieving peace. I revealed it to the world and gave man the key which opens the doors to that kingdom. Man is aware of this, although he has not been interested in achieving peace, spiritual elevation, and wisdom by following the path of love. Instead, he has preferred to construct his own world according to his selfish desires. 64. What man has constructed is fragile, because it lacks a true and strong foundation for brotherly love. The world of vanity, created by man, is presently crumbling. Man would like to sing a hymn of triumph because of his scientific discoveries and progress. Instead, he moans with pain, horror, 
and repentance as he observes the result of his work that lacks love. 65. Do you think that I speak to you harshly? I am only telling you the truth. 66. My word offers you nourishment and enlightenment. 67. If you fulfill the will of God, you will no longer weep. Practice my doctrine and you will find true happiness. Love one another, and you will live in perfect peace. My peace be with you. Teaching 201. 1. My people, the spirit of truth offers enlightenment to all spirits during this era. I want those who are witnessing my manifestation to meditate and to concentrate, because only then will they be able to comprehend my new divine message. I am inscribing this message in your spirit. It is the divine interpretation of the law that I gave to humanity since the first era. Also, it is the essence contained in the Book of Seven Seals, whose mystery I have now come to clarify by enlightening your spirit with my teachings. 2. Tomorrow, after you have understood my teaching, the struggle will begin. Although I will no longer manifest myself in this manner, you will feel my presence in your heart. 3. During the first era, God utilized Moses to inscribe the law on stone tablets. In the second era, the words of Jesus were inscribed with his blood in the human heart. Now, in the present era I will inscribe my revelations in your spirit through divine inspiration. 4. If you become confused, due to the imperfections of the human spokesman through whom I communicate, do not detain yourself for that reason. Remain calm, analyze my teachings, and continue your journey along my path, because I want you to discover the greatness and truth in my revelation. 5. This multitude, who has witnessed my manifestation, needs to be spiritually strong before it can arise to spread the good news throughout communities, villages, cities, and nations. Today, you are still like an innocent child, eagerly awaiting to begin to fulfill your mission, but who still does not know how to face the obstacles and the ordeals that you will find along your path. When you develop a strong faith and feel true love for your brethren, you will be able to triumph over obstacles and no longer focus on your own suffering but on the suffering and pain of your brethren. 6. My teachings during this era have been extensive, because I want many individuals to have the opportunity to listen to my word. Thus, I will fulfill the promise I made in the second era that all sinners and non-sinners would be able to perceive me spiritually. I said those words to give you hope and confidence in the Lord. 7. It is my will that these teachings remain written, because they contain prophecies, announcements, and messages that humanity will need in the future. They need to remain written because human memory is not dependable. I have come to illuminate the nation of spiritual Israel with my teachings. This nation, composed of men and women from all parts of the world, will be strong because of its spiritual enlightenment. This nation has the mission of restoring peace, justice, faith, and morality on earth. 9. It appears that humanity is now spiritually asleep, but you will be surprised when you observe how some nations will readily welcome and accept my new messengers. My messengers will be welcomed much like a flower opens its petals to welcome the sunlight. Those who are now listening to my word will form a part of God's nation. This nation will continue to grow until it spreads throughout the world. Your mission is to encourage humanity to eliminate its materialism, to teach humanity of spiritual communication with God, and to help your brethren to remain faithful during great ordeals. 10. The multitudes of today, who have listened to my teachings, represent only a small portion of the nation of God that will arise tomorrow. That nation must remain united and in harmony even when it confronts great and difficult ordeals. If it does not remain united, it will lose the battle and will no longer be guided by the star that has always guided it. It would become lost in an immense and lonely desert. If that were to occur, what testimony would it be able to offer to others about God? What type of example would it be able to set for others to follow? 11. My beloved disciples, be aware that if I chose to manifest myself through human spokesmen during this era, it was to help mankind. Therefore, those of you whom I am teaching and whom I love should not blemish my divine doctrine in any way. 12. Disciples, if you yearn to possess spiritual gifts, let love and the desire to help others be your motive. Do not seek to possess those gifts for your vanity or to feel more spiritually elevated than your brethren. 
Do not seek to make monetary profit through the use of spiritual gifts. Truly I tell you that a loving deed expects nothing in return. If it does, it is no longer a deed of love. Likewise, true charity expects nothing in return. This is why I tell you that if you yearn to possess spiritual gifts, let love always be your motive. 13. Whoever wants to follow me through this path needs to eliminate all selfishness and vanity from his heart. You will only be able to feel my love if your heart is pure. 14. When I observe that you are practicing a good deed or praying for a needy brethren, truly feeling his sorrow, my divine love will heal your brother, thus granting the miracle that you requested. 15. You will feel great joy witnessing the healing of your brother. However, if it is your mission to sow charity along your path but instead utilize your spiritual gifts for selfish reasons and personal gain, you will lose the spiritual gifts given to you by the Father. Thus, you will be unable to offer anything to your brethren. Rather than sowing love and charity along your path, you would only be sowing vanity and selfishness. You would be deceiving your brethren as well as yourself. If you sow evil deeds, you will experience bitterness, lack spiritual peace, and feel discontent. You would no longer feel that the Divine Father is blessing and approving your deeds nor would you be able to utilize your spiritual gifts to help your brethren. 16. If a person becomes healed, finds peace in his tormented life or experiences a miracle, that person, who innocently trusted you to help him, will be healed by the compassion of the Divine Father. However, when that healing takes place you attribute it to your prayers and to your spiritual gifts. You utilize that situation so that others will also place their trust in you. But my justice will touch you to detain you along that wrong path, allowing you to meditate on your evil deeds and to return to the right path. 17. Blessed are those who repent for their mistakes when they first experience my justice. They no longer choose to follow the wrong path and truly begin to correct their mistakes. They now realize that the material pleasures of earth can never be compared with the spiritual pleasures. Previously, they had disregarded the spiritual peace that one feels when practicing a good deed. They had preferred the praise and the monetary rewards that were offered to them by others. However, they now realize that practicing good deeds will help them to elevate spiritually, whereas praise and monetary rewards will hinder their spiritual elevation. Teen. Everyone who is a worker in my fields should know that I have sent him to offer testimony of me. In order for his testimony to be truthful, it needs to be verified through his deeds of charity and through his loving words and thoughts. He must keep his heart pure so that I may manifest myself through him. 19. In the second era, I said, Whoever knows the Son, knows the Father. This meant that through the deeds of Jesus you would learn about the love that the Divine Father has for his children. I now say to you that I want all of humanity to know me through the deeds of my disciples. 20. When this multitude truly comprehends me, begins to practice my teachings of love, and embraces its cross lovingly, humanity will then begin to awaken from its spiritual sleep. Mankind will become aware of your deeds, convinced that this multitude is following the true path. Regardless of whether humanity refers to these teachings as a doctrine, a religion, or an ideology, Nevertheless it will acknowledge that these teachings are truly a revelation from God. 21. Disciples, be aware of the mission that I have given you. Recognize the importance of your responsibility, and examine each of your deeds so that they will follow my doctrine of love. 22. In many societies, classes, and congregations, man uses the word brother to refer to one another. Although they call each other brother many times, they do not truly feel for each other as brothers should. 23. Truly I tell you that if you carefully study the meaning of that word you will discover the fountain of life from where all beings were born. Also, you will comprehend my divine love. Once you comprehend the true meaning of that word, you will feel regret, realizing how distant you have become from one another. Although all beings are your brethren, you continue to hurt one another and are indifferent to people whom you refer to as strangers. 24. When I came to earth to live among humanity, I taught you that every being was your brother. Mary was my mother on earth, and I referred to all men as my brethren teaching you to love one another. My entire doctrine was dedicated to teaching you that divine law. 
Only by fulfilling that law can you truly glorify and love the Divine Father. How can you love me without loving one another? Truly I tell you that it would be better to give to your brethren those things that you offer me, since the Father possesses everything, and your brethren lack many things. 25. Let the examples set by Jesus become an inspiration in your life and in your deeds. Truly I tell you that by doing as Jesus did, you will be glorifying me and offering true evidence of your love. If humanity unites its spiritual gifts in order to elevate its existence on earth, it will feel my presence. Some will offer their wisdom to mankind, others their love, others charity, science, inspiration, and strength. Thus, a strong and united humanity will emerge on earth, as if it were only one being who was enlightened, great, virtuous, and therefore powerful. It is that being whom I have come to teach my doctrine of love. 26. The human heart has become hardened like stone, but man will be unable to resist the divine teachings. 27. I am announcing that a time of harmony will arrive among humanity. My prophets also announced this in the past. When that time arrives, all nations will practice brotherhood and will share their bread, strength, and knowledge with one another. Man will sow peace in those places where, today, there is only war and hatred. Man will become true doctors among humanity, because they will offer comfort to those who are ill. 28. Are you now aware that man has truly not lived as brethren on earth? Do you now understand why I told you in the second era that the most important mandate was to love one another? 29. I have not come during this era to eliminate that mandate nor to substitute it with another one. That mandate is eternal and will never change. I have only come to explain the law of love, its true significance and what it means, which represents the wisdom of God. 30. When will humanity realize that only by fulfilling the law of love will mankind achieve the peace that it so much needs, the happiness that it lacks, and the well-being that it seeks? 31. I know that man is spiritually evolving and that the time will come when everyone will finally open their eyes and perceive the truth. 32. Since I have taught you about love and brotherhood, I now want you to understand what it means to call another human being your brother. I also want you to truly feel that all beings are your brethren. 33. I am your loving Father who welcomes you. Although at times, few truly listen to me, I will not cease to manifest myself with love. 34. You are now receiving my spiritual enlightenment, and your doubts will disappear. 35. Those who follow me are few, and I observe that they are still weak. But behold that through my teachings they will become strong soldiers. They will be courageous, and although they might be weary and wounded when they reach the end of their journey, they will arrive with peace and brotherhood in their hearts. Their triumph will inspire many others to follow them. 36. Blessed is the one who becomes aware of his mission and fulfills it. For him to evolve, his spirit needs to have strong determination and will power. If the spirit lacks these qualities, it will evolve slowly and will need to incarnate several times before it attains spiritual perfection. Man needs to become familiar with my teachings which will guide him to attain that perfection. You should not rely only on intuition to guide you along my path. You also need the knowledge found in my teachings to continue along the path of evolution. You need to appreciate and to utilize the time and the opportunities that I have given you to evolve spiritually, so that you will no longer be spiritually dead. 37. A person can be physically alive but spiritually dead. Life should manifest itself first in the spirit, then in the flesh. Many beings have dwelt on earth, but only a few of them were spiritually alive. Those few have manifested their spiritual grace to humanity, a grace given to each being by the Divine Creator. 38. If man would follow his conscience and lead a pure life, he would be able to perceive his past, present and future. 39. The Spirit is similar to my secret ark. It is a treasure with so much knowledge. It continually reveals manifestations that are at times so profound that man is unable to comprehend them. 40. That spark of the divine light that exists in every human is the bond that unites man with the spiritual, the hereafter, and with the divine father. 41. If you carefully analyze life, 
you will realize that all things are related to the eternal life, a life that awaits you and that draws closer with each passing moment. 42. I need workers to sow and to cultivate this seed of love. They must have pure minds and be pure in heart, because many whom I endowed with spiritual gifts have abandoned me. They have become prodigal children. They were close to the Divine Father for only a brief period, but left to pursue material pleasures. However, my prophecy shall be fulfilled and they will return to their Father. Along their path they will find my relentless justice, but when they return to me they will discover, as always, a kind and loving Father. 43. Multitudes. Arise as messengers of this teaching to take the good news to your brethren. Have faith in my word and you will perform marvelous things. This enlightenment will awaken humanity from its sleep. 44. Follow the path step by step so that you will become familiar with it. My law follows a narrow path. You will continually struggle and battle along this path, and at times, you will drink from a very bitter chalice. However, you will also experience infinite joy when you feel the peace of God within your spirit. 45. I am walking ahead of you, tracing the path that you need to follow. Practice humility, and you will not stumble. If you ask where I am taking you, I will respond that I am guiding you to true spiritual joy. Who can become lost along his path if he carries the cross of love upon his shoulders? Do not think that I am asking you to dedicate every minute of your life to me. You have responsibilities on earth that you need to fulfill. You need to realize that those responsibilities are also sacred and that they are part of your spiritual destiny. 46. I only ask that you dedicate a brief spiritual prayer to me daily. In those moments that you devote to me you need to momentarily forget about your daily concerns, so that you will truly come before my presence and feel my embrace and my peace. 47. Everyone has a different spiritual mission to fulfill. Some will not have to depart from where they now live, whereas others will need to travel to distant lands. Some will need to separate from their families to fulfill their mission, whereas others will fulfill it among their family. 48. Some believe that the Divine Master has presently come to assign some individuals a spiritual mission. However, they are greatly mistaken, because each spirit was given its mission from the time of its creation. Now, as in the past, I have come to remind you of the pact that your spirit made with the Father before it came to earth. 49. Embrace your mission with love, O disciples, thus enabling your brethren to follow my divine path. Be aware that you have everything that you need to sow my seed. You have all the gifts that you need, both spiritually and physically, to triumph in your battles and ordeals. 50. Allow your spirit to guide your body, and also allow your conscience to illuminate your path, so that you will triumph over the low passions and sensuous desires of the flesh. Thus, your mission will be easy to fulfill. 51. Be aware that the spiritual seed that I have given each being will need to be returned in multiple form. Thus, you need to effectively utilize the time that you now have to fulfill your mission. 52. Blessed is the individual who patiently accepts the suffering along his path, because at the end, that suffering will turn to joy. Have great faith and courage, thus you will not be afraid when others judge you. Instead you should fear yourself, because if you spiritually weaken and follow the wrong path, it can lead to serious consequences. When one of your brethren, who is momentarily blinded by the negativity that covers the world, deceitfully hurts you, forgive him, and come to me for I will heal your wound with my love. 53. Patiently carry the weight of your cross. Be aware that you have been sent to earth to fulfill your spiritual mission. This will help your spirit to elevate and to enter the kingdom of heaven. 54. If you fulfill your mission on earth, you will fulfill it in the hereafter. My peace be with you. Teaching 202. 1. Behold with your spiritual vision the star guiding you to the presence of your Father. 2. The Savior brings you divine warmth with His Word, which your anguished spirits need because of life's painful journey. 3. If you seek me because of your suffering, my love welcomes you. Trust and accept this holy manifestation. 4. I wish to be near you so that your heart will truly feel my presence. During this night of tenderness and harmony, I wish to be one with you. 
I want you to remember that I am your first light, the divine promise, and the tireless master who works to make your spirits perfect and worthy of God. 5. I want to be so near to you that it would be impossible for us to be separated even momentarily. Behold that I come to fill you with tenderness, hope, and healing balsam. I want you to remember that it was on a night like this that I came to earth to reveal with my life and examples the path that leads to the kingdom of heaven. 6. Come to me and receive the essence of this word in your heart so that your prayer, which silently escapes from your heart, can harmonize with the hymns of heaven and earth during this sacred moment. 7. Pray everyone. Pray for the poor, the unfortunate, the sick, the orphans, and for prisoners. Pray so that your thoughts may comfort those who suffer, encourage the afflicted, and wipe away the tears of those who cry. There is not one among you, including those with a hardened heart, who is not touched during these moments. However, to think of others, it is necessary to forget oneself. Then we will truly be one during this moment of spiritual communion. 9. I have come to visit you in your solitude. When my teaching for this day comes to an end, I will leave an unforgettable fragrance as a sign of my presence. 10. Allow me to gather the withered flowers that your saddened and wounded heart presents to me so that I can leave you with faith and hope. 11. Your heart is what my spirit seeks today so that I may arise once again in the heart of humanity. 12. Truly I say to you that divine love will begin to flourish in your heart when you develop your law from my words, when you follow my footsteps and imitate my deeds. To bring you the seed of immortality, Jesus became man many centuries ago. 13. I come now to explain the reason for that love since you have not been able to understand it. 14. Your spirit trembles as you listen to me, and it tells me, Father, it seems that I may have been with you in that time. Your words bring back memories. Master, will you rid me of that doubt? 15. Truly I tell you that during that time spirits and men alike witnessed my return and my work in the world. 16. Your spirit is the same, although it may have lived in another mansion or inhabited a different body. Today it weeps with different eyes but it is the same spirit, asking the same questions. Continues to question me and tries to contemplate and discover who I am. I say to it be not afraid and remain at peace because the Spirit will always be learning about me and spirituality. To comprehend the divine lessons, it is necessary to be humble, to persevere, and to have great faith. 17. You often yearn to know first what is profound and later what is less important. However, begin by knowing yourself. Analyze and question yourself, and you will behold how you can be nourished with the flame within you that God lit with the fire of the Holy Spirit. 18. You do not fully understand this teaching, because you realize that divine enlightenment depends on your level of evolution. However, I assure you that those who seek me in their innermost being, which is the temple of their own spirit, will soon obtain an answer to those questions that have remained unexplained for centuries. 19. It is natural for man to question and to feel uncomfortable with spirituality. He cannot truly comprehend those things that are spiritual and divine, because of his limited evolution. No matter how much the Master speaks of the greatness of God, man is unable to conceive the importance of that truth. 20. I refer only to what one should know about God, for you will never be able to understand everything, nor understand it all as you would like. 21. The Master says that only God truly knows God. 22. O oh my people! Behold the profound silence with which the universe in this hour greets and offers worship to God. Everything enters into a gentle obedience, a divine contemplation, and a profound worship. 23. This occurs because all beings and all creation know that I am giving my word, the same word that was spoken through the lips of Jesus. Men and the elements obeyed his word, incurable illnesses were cured, and the dead were resurrected. 24. The one who knows how to prepare and elevate himself on this night of spiritual festivity will feel the presence of those you call angels, which are invisible and intangible. If you would truly separate your spirit from its material body, you would behold the countryside, cities, homes, and space illuminated with the heavenly brilliance of countless beings, messengers of light, 
peace, and love. 25. The heavens draw near the earth, and its light seeks those who stop to remember, as well as those who have forgotten the spiritual truth. 26. Rejoice, O humanity! At least be joyful during this night, since you still do not know how to feel this peace eternally. 27. Rejoice with the true joy of the heart, which is tenderness and the return to kindness. Rejoice with spiritual joy, which is eternal illumination. 28. Those who remember when the rabbi came to the world have named this night a holy night. 29. All beings come together under the divine influence of those memories. Those who are not present are remembered. Offenses are forgiven. Families are reunited. Friends visit one another. And hearts are filled with hope. On this night when men manifest a little tenderness in their hardened hearts, and some become more spiritual and less materialistic, it appears that everyone awaits something unknown which they are unable to explain. However, I ask, do you believe that only this night deserves to be called holy by mankind? With a bit of love, could you not make every night and day of your life holy, realizing that every moment in life, without exception, is indeed holy? 30. You say to me, it is a night we remember each year as the one when you came to the world bringing a message of love. I respond, that hour marked the birth of the one in whom the word would come to incarnate. However, my spirit was no closer to man that night than it was before and is now. 31. Since your daily life is not devoted entirely to the law, the truth, and love for one another, you must try to be united spiritually on this night of remembrance. 32. Come and seek me in a humble manner, trusting in the charity of your Father for all your needs. 33. Do not come with feelings of greatness or vanity, for I say to you that I prefer you to be in need and sinful, yet humble, as you attempt to wash your stains in the pure water of my forgiveness. 34. Oh, if you could come with me in spirit, you could perceive all human misery from here. 35. If the powerful and the wealthy wish to be with me on this night, I would take them in spirit to those places of suffering and poverty which they do not want to see. 36. I would then tell them, Leave your festivities for a while and together we will go to those places where your poor brethren live. We will see how they live on this holy night, which is one of sorrow for some and celebration for others. I would tell them, Do not be afraid, for I only ask for a few moments and soon you can return to your feasting and laughter. Then I would take them from place to place showing them how humanity suffers, like the poor elderly lonely mother, who mourns the loss of her beloved sons who were taken by war. 37. That woman lives only with memories and prayers. As she drinks from her cup of bitterness, others indulge in pleasures. Her spirit awaits only for the moment of its departure from the earth, since her hopes in humanity vanished long ago. 38. Later I would show them young children who wander among humanity, a humanity that does not respect the lives of its brethren, expressing neither love nor understanding for those in need. 39. I would make men listen to the profound questions of children, who in their human innocence ask why there exists so much injustice, hatred, selfishness, and cruelty. 40. Then, I would take them to places where one hears the moaning and weeping of the sick, those whose bodies have collapsed like weather-beaten branches. They are the sick, the dejected, the forgotten ones. 41. Afterwards, I would take them behind prison doors to the thousands of beings who have fallen into the darkness of captivity due to a lack of love, charity, light, justice, and peace. 42. Thus, in every sight I would show them all the misery and suffering caused by the ambition, greed, hatred, materialism, and the endless thirst for power of those who have become arrogant with their false power. Although some regard themselves as powerful, they are not. They only prevent others from possessing what justly belongs to them. 43. I do not summon them, for I know they disregard my voice that speaks to them through their consciences. 44. However, you, my people, who are listening to me and are familiar with deprivation, loneliness, coldness, and orphanhood, and who are able to identify with those who cry for justice, come to me. Spiritually we will visit the sick, the depressed, and all the poor and forgotten ones of the world. 45. Come and behold how I extend my cloak, 
joining it with yours to shield all of humanity in a loving manner. Come and hear my spiritual voice saying to those who weep, Cry no more, do not be depressed, awaken to faith and to hope, which are enlightenment in the path of life. Truly I say to you that if you once again are watchful and pray with true faith, these days of suffering will be shortened for humanity. 46. Yes, my beloved people, from where you sit and listen, you can allow your spirit to come near my mansion to better contemplate, understand, and feel the tragedy of mankind, your brethren. 47. Do you see those multitudes who are full of inspiration? They are soldiers who have stopped fighting for a few moments to offer me a few minutes of prayer and remembrance. However, their joy and inspiration are not real. They eat and drink to ease their hardships because great sorrow exists in their hearts. They suffer, O oh my people, and they suffer greatly, especially on this night. It is a torture for them. Every memory is a thorn, and every name and face they recall is a wound. 48. Although you may be poor, peace exists in your homes, and you are able to be with your parents, children and wives. However, those soldiers have to endure the bitterness of not being able to embrace their loved ones and the anguish of thinking that perhaps they may not see them again. 49. Many of them suffer as they destroy human lives, homes and cities, sowing misery, grief and mourning. Thus they believe they have lost all rights to return home to peace and to their loved ones. 50. I am aware that many of them are not guilty. There is no hatred or evil in their hearts. I know they are victims, slaves and instruments of others who are truly evil. 51. I am the only one who can rescue them. Only my love can shield them, for they are alone in the world. 52. You, my people, who cannot imagine what that hardship signifies, but who presently have been touched with my word, send them your thoughts filled with charity and light. Truly I say to you that they will feel strengthened and encouraged and will pray and wait for the war to end. Thus, instead of the thundering noise of battles, they will once again hear those beautiful words, Peace on earth to men of good will. 53. Pray, O oh my people, making it possible for mankind to await the dawn of a new day, and to remember my promise of better times, of spirituality and prosperity. 54. I also tell you, let us now go to the hearts of children and seek those in great need. Behold them. They sleep, and in their sleep they judge no one even though they suffer. 55. There is no bread on their table today. Nevertheless, they rest with hope for the new day. They are clothed in rags, but they are not ashamed, for they are innocent. They smile although their bodies lack warmth. They are angels on earth for in their innocent smiles they reflect some of the purity of heaven. 56. O oh, innocents, shield them with your fine mantle, for they are of the kingdom of heaven. 57. All of you regard this as a holy night. I pour my blessings upon all of my children. 58. Know that I am yours and you are mine. Remember that I proved my love for you by coming to live among the humble, being born in poverty, battling obstacles and dying in disgrace. 59. You cannot say that I do not understand you, for I have not only seen your suffering, but I have experienced it as well. 60. I also speak to you about the elderly, of those who long ago left the spring of their lives and who today feel the coldness of winter. As they grow older they lack strength, energy and health. Work becomes more difficult, their limbs are weak, and now their services are no longer needed. 61. Thus the elderly see themselves excluded and abandoned. They feel dejected and are overwhelmed with sadness. Therefore they experience misery, hunger and loneliness. I speak to you about the elderly, for they are also in need of your help and comfort. Love them, O oh my people, and you will have the right to sit down at the great table of the spiritual banquet where I will say to you, Blessed are you who, in imitation of the Master, are able to embrace all those who suffer. 62. Therefore be charitable. Then I will take your hands and allow my blessings to pass through them. Never again will you oppose my taking what is yours and giving it to your brothers. Thus when you tell me, Father, all that is mine is yours, you will say it with your heart. 63. If during your lifetime you have practiced charity, continue to do so. 
However, if you have not, then begin with the first needy person who knocks at your door whether it be one who is sick of spirit or of body, a widow, an old one, a child, or anyone who is suffering. 64. Keep in mind that those truly in need represent Jesus, and that he is in each one of them to tell you, I thirst. It is a thirst for you to love one another. 65. Is it possible for the human heart not to be moved before the great scenes of suffering and misery which humanity offers? Yes, it is possible. I have seen those who have not experienced suffering caress their material riches with more love than they have for human beings, the children of God. 66. Beloved people, you have accompanied me during these brief moments to visit the needy, and for this I bless you. Do not think that I abandon the rich and the powerful, for even though they appear not to need me, I am the only one who truly knows their misery and bitterness and is truly aware of their misfortunes. Presently, they believe they have everything. Therefore, why should they seek me since, according to them, I am the Christ of the sick, the outcasts, and the dejected? They are unaware that my mission is to save them from their false splendor in order to give them true and eternal happiness. 67. Other than you, my people, do you know who has tenderly listened to my word and has felt her spirit vibrate with love? It is Mary, the maternal spirit, who dwells within the bosom of the Creator. Her essence will always be united with the memory of Jesus. 68. Her life on earth, although longer than mine, was short, for she came before and departed afterward. Her words, brief and gentle, were a heavenly caress. 69. Feel her in spirit. Love and seek her spiritually. Know that she will be with you in all your deeds of charity, that her mantle of intercession and tenderness is extended over a suffering and bloody world. In your suffering and weeping you can hear a voice tenderly telling you, Do not fear, be confident, for I am here. 70. Thus, my people, you have been with me. My inspiration has penetrated your heart on this holy night, and I have made you forget all your hardships. 71. Pray, so the light of your Savior may guide and lead you through the stormy sea that you are now crossing. My peace be with you. Teaching 203. 1. I welcome those who want to become spiritually enlightened. 2. Happy and blessed are those who want to comprehend things more clearly. Truly, I tell you that only by removing the spiritual blindfold that covers your eyes will you be able to perceive and to comprehend things more clearly. 3. Man has two weaknesses. He makes no effort to remove his blindfolds in order to study my elevated spiritual teachings, nor does he want to separate himself from those material pleasures that prevent his spiritual progress. Thus, he has become a slave to his selfish pleasures. His spirit is like a paralyzed human being who makes no effort to heal himself. For, I perceive that most men are fragile and weak. Why does this occur? It occurs because man doesn't have the courage nor the determination to remove himself from his state of darkness. He has been unwilling to make an effort to progress spiritually. This is the reason he has so many vices and makes so many errors. 5. Man does not want to utilize the gift of free will that he possesses. 6. Man should utilize his free will and his ability to reason, to battle, and to triumph over his own selfish passions and vices. Only then will man be able to acquire true freedom. It is then that you will become great humans on earth, great prophets, and spiritually enlightened. You will be able to live in harmony with nature and beasts. Truly I tell you that your imperfections and weaknesses create your fear of animals which causes them to attack you. If you analyze mankind, you will discover that some individuals are more fierce than tigers and more venomous than cobras. 7. Do not think that the prophets from the past eras performed miracles because they were predestined to do so. They worked hard, struggled, and battled along their path until they were able to triumph. Truly, I tell you that as you make a greater effort to become spiritually enlightened, you will experience greater temptations and ordeals. Nevertheless, your spirit possesses divine enlightenment which will illuminate and guide you in your life. Everyone possesses that divine strength that is pure and immortal. It is the life force that guides you to true happiness. However, man has become immoral due to his vices and materialism. Through his own free will he has stained himself and has spiritually descended. 
but man will regain his lost dignity through that divine strength that everyone possesses. He will then seek to nourish himself only with virtuous fruits from the divine tree of life. What does man need to do to achieve that state? He needs to use his spiritual strength and energy. He must become a true worker of God, so he can remove the blindfolds that cover his eyes. Once they are removed, man will be free from his selfish desires and understand things more clearly. He will walk with confidence and no longer stumble. 9. I have spoken of things that you refer to as mysteries, but you need to carefully analyze my word in order to become divinely enlightened. 10. I want you to know that no mysteries exist in nature or with God. Man has not been able to follow the divine teachings and to practice the true law due to his own weaknesses. That is why he feels confused and lost. He fails to realize that God is in his conscience, always ready to help him. 11. The true law signifies perfection. What is the importance of practicing religions or believing in God if your deeds and thoughts do not reflect love and purity? The day will come when you will become heirs to my kingdom. Then you will behold that I am in the Father, that you are in me, and that I am in you. This alliance will be referred to as an alliance of peace. Thus, everyone will fulfill the divine law, and God will be acknowledged as the only God. Men will truly acknowledge one another as brethren and demonstrate it with deeds of love. My beloved children, if you truly wish to become a worker of God today, we can now establish that alliance of peace. It is not necessary for you to depart from earth before we establish that alliance. All you need to do is to make a sincere effort to become my worker. The table has been set, and I invite you to come sit at my table. Come and allow me to serve you. Together we will eat from the bread of truth. Utilize the torch of love to illuminate your path, and remove the blindfold that covers your eyes. Triumph over your vices and passions. As children of God, seek to become spiritually enlightened. I invite you to come with me and together we will sing this praise. Glory to God in the highest, and may an alliance of peace become established on earth. Alleluia, alleluia to the Lord. Accept the spiritual nourishment and enlightenment that I have come to bring you. Forget about your sorrows and grief. Give them to me. Sing with me. Alleluia, alleluia to the Lord. Sing in harmony with me, my beloved children, for I am with you. 12. If you could sing in harmony with the divine concert, you would lose all desire to eat those fruits that are harmful to your spirit. Your immortal spiritual being would continually be radiating with enlightenment. My beloved children, do you want to come to my table? The table is set and I will serve you. Come, for I am awaiting you. 13. Do not imitate the Pharisees, who deceitfully pretend to follow the laws of God inside their temples and synagogues but who truly are evil and materialistic. No, my beloved children, always be pure and virtuous. Practice deeds of virtue in your home, in the streets, or wherever you are. Thus, those who might want to criticize the doctrine of Jesus will proclaim that my doctrine is truly virtuous, for they will observe that both in your private and public life you practice deeds of virtue, sowing love, truth, and kindness wherever you go. 14. Today I have come to communicate with the people of spiritual Israel and to inscribe my word in their hearts. I have come to leave you a memory of my communication through the human spokesman. If you will carefully analyze, you will realize that I have not remained silent for a single moment. The divine word has always communicated with mankind. I communicate with man in many different ways. I can speak to his heart, his mind, or his conscience. My word offers him inspiration strength, and hope. Also, it judges his deeds. 15. I say to you, men have sought me spiritually during all eras, some with greater eagerness than others. 16. You will not discover everything on earth. I have retained certain knowledge and revelations, so that when you seek them, you will discover me. I have never denied you my love and charity, even granting you those requests which do not benefit you. I have done that to make you realize your mistake. 17. This era of spiritual manifestations and divine teachings has been like a banquet. You were invited to spiritually nourish yourself. Those who arrived without spiritual enlightenment 
have been nourished. Teen, after your journey and struggles of life, you have arrived to rest underneath the shade of this divine tree of spiritual enlightenment. You have now regained your strength and have learned to triumph over temptations which continually invite you to depart from the righteous path. Thus, you are learning to become my good disciple. 19. That is why, after having given you my teachings, you are eager and willing to battle for this cause. You have become aware of your responsibility to share this doctrine with your brethren in the same pure and loving manner that you have received it. You now realize that if you work with dedication, humility, and love, you will be able to remove many obstacles and difficulties from the path of your brother. I have summoned many individuals from different places throughout the world to convert them into my soldiers and disciples. 20. You now come to demonstrate your willingness to follow me and to offer me the fruit of your work which only I know. I am the only one who knows your past, who you are today, and who you will be tomorrow. You arrived eager to perform good deeds yearning to be loved and to love others. The Father welcomed you, nourished you, and converted you into his servant. 21. Once you felt the great love that I have for you, you revealed to me all the secrets that you had concealed from others. After your spirit became enlightened, you truly repented for your past mistakes. 22. I want you to become spiritually prepared and to honor the pact of love that you have made with me. Honor it by practicing deeds of love and charity for your brethren. Today, I have manifested myself as the Divine Father, but tomorrow I will manifest myself as your judge. 23. I do not want anyone to remain spiritually asleep, because he will awaken later and weep. 24. You will only be able to witness this manifestation for three more years. You have learned many things from my teachings. When will you become a teacher? Once I depart, will you be able to remain in my place to nourish the multitudes? Today, my teaching serves as a warning, because soon this manifestation will come to an end. 25. I have brought this multitude together so that it may unite spiritually. I want it to arise strongly determined, to fulfill its mission, and to embrace one another as brethren. 26. Be aware that among this multitude all are equal and that no one is superior. Each of you is a servant for the Lord. Behold that the history of these teachings will remain written by those whom I designated as golden pens. I, including you, do not want the future generations to discover any disagreements and divisions among this multitude through those writings. Through your deeds leave examples for future generations to follow, and they, too, will arise similar to how others motivated you to become a servant to the Lord. 27. I have come to embrace each of you and to cover you with my divine cloak, but man has remained insensitive and has ignored me. I have spoken to humanity through miracles, but it has remained indifferent. I have touched man with my justice, but he refuses to learn from it. I speak to you with words of love so that you will offer testimony to others. However, you have failed to share the good news. Furthermore, humanity is not aware of the time in which it now lives. Everyone has the same spiritual gifts, even though I have prepared some to be messengers, and others to receive the messages. 28. Remain spiritually prepared as a messenger and worker of God, and always fulfill my will. If you fail to prepare yourself, you will have nothing to offer your brethren from the divine enlightenment I have given you. 29. Although I have placed my perfect work into sinful hands, there is still no reason for those who have received my teachings not to share it with others. If you are unworthy of this mission, my love makes you worthy and offers you the means to love and to save one another. 30. I am omnipotent and powerful, and I do not want my children to be in spiritual need. I offer my treasures and kindness to those who are sinful, so that they will learn to become charitable with others. 31. Blessed is the one who is charitable and who has shared with his brethren all that he carries in his spirit. When one is selfish, stubborn, and lacks faith, he is not even aware of his spiritual gifts. Do not lose faith so that you will resurrect those who are spiritually dead and also restore vision to those who are spiritually blind. 32. If you practice my teachings only to test them and to discover how much truth they contain, you would only be testing yourself and not my teachings. If you lack faith in what you say or do, 
how can anyone else have faith in you? You need to become as a mirror so that your brethren can perceive themselves and acknowledge that you are my messengers. 33. Fulfill your mission, and when you come to the end of your journey, you will find yourself before a large door that you will open with your own key. I will be awaiting you behind that door. You will not be able to open that door if you attempt to use someone else's key. Also, you must acquire the seven divine virtues which are love, humility, patience, harmony, serenity, perseverance, and charity. They symbolize the path of spiritual perfection that each being needs to travel. 34. I want all beings to live in harmony to have the same ideal and to follow the will of God. 35. The Lord has given mankind laws and mandates to follow since the beginning of time, and it is the Lord who speaks to you during this period. I want you to be virtuous to attain spiritual elevation and to help those who are spiritually weak. However, you have harvested very few fruits. You have not nourished yourselves with the spiritual bread that I have offered you, which is love, virtue, and charity. You have not shared my revelations with your brethren, and you are not utilizing your spiritual gifts. Consequently, your brethren are spiritually hungry and thirsty. One day they will demand to know why you did not share these teachings. I do not want you to experience their harsh judgment once they realize that it was your responsibility to share these teachings with others. Work hard to sow my seed, and I will return it to you in multiple form. 36. Truly, the weight of your cross is heavy, because you are carrying the weight of your responsibilities in restitution, as well as being judged by others. If you fail to fulfill your responsibilities, the weight will become much greater. 37. By now, the good news should have spread throughout the world, and there should be more disciples. Where are the ill whom you have healed and the sinners whom you have converted? The responsibilities that I have assigned to you are not superior to your strength and ability. Your cross is similar to mine, a cross of unselfishness, sacrifice, and love. The one who willingly carries his cross will arrive before my presence. Although he will have suffered along his journey due to his brother's lack of understanding, he will be satisfied with his accomplishments, feeling inner spiritual peace. 38. Elijah illuminates and inspires those who are guiding these multitudes. Those guides are your brethren. Mary, your divine mother, brings each child close to the Divine Father so that the child will be in constant communication with the Father. She always prays for her children. She perceives each child with compassion and love, and greatly cries whenever they sin. Truly, you are not aware of how much she loves her children and worries about them. Because of their sinful ways, they have been unable to offer her any comfort. Frequently, I have delayed my justice because of her petition for her children. Nevertheless, my will is her will, because she is a part of my divine spirit. Mary represents the divine tenderness of God and is an example of his maternal love. 39. During this era, everyone who prepares himself through prayer and who practices my divine doctrine will not be harmed when the elements of nature are unleashed. I invite each one of you to pray and offer you the opportunity to be safe from harm. The elements of nature will serve to purify and to spiritually awaken those who are disobedient and sinful. Meanwhile, you need to remain alert, to continue to pray for your brethren, and to continue working as a servant of the Lord. 40. Frequently I have asked this multitude to unite so that it may teach the world a unified doctrine of love. If you do not unite, you will experience great ordeals and your restitution will be great because you chose to disregard my laws even though you are aware of your delicate mission and my will. Become spiritually united and fulfill the will of God. Love one, another. 41. You have come before me and are ashamed because you have not fulfilled your mission. You have failed to perform good deeds and have stained the white robe that I have given you. You have ignored my mandates, and you believe that I am not perfect because I have given you my mandates through human spokesmen. You believe that the human being is unable to serve as a spokesman for God. But I am proving to you that what God chooses is fair and just. I dwell in each human being, and therefore man has the ability to comprehend God. Thus, it is my will to manifest myself through human spokesmen during this era. 42. Your spirit carries all of your deeds from each reincarnation that you have had on earth. During this era, 
an era of justice, I have sent some of you to earth to amend your faults and others to fulfill a delicate mission. I have chosen you from among a large number of beings to fulfill a mission among humanity. Your mission is to help mankind to attain purification, regeneration, and spiritual elevation. 43. The world will ask why I chose the illiterate and the sinners to fulfill this mission. I say to you that God chooses the destiny of each being. I will purify those who have this mission and will make them my apostles. As each one fulfills his mission his purification will come to an end. 44. Elijah has prepared you to clearly perceive the beginning of the sixth seal as it unfolds and brings grace and enlightenment to every spirit. In this era my teachings have been simple and easy to comprehend. They have clarified mysteries, opened new paths, and have enlightened all beings. You have witnessed the fulfillment of many prophecies. After having experienced so many ordeals, you have awakened spiritually, and are now willing to practice my teachings. 45. I grant you the grace of listening to me until 1950. I will cease to manifest myself through human spokesmen after that year. I ask my spokesmen to practice brotherhood and faithfulness as they fulfill their mission. This will enable them to transmit my word with perfection, and thus my teaching will have the same essence in each house of prayer where I manifest myself. The world awaits the good news, and it was my will to select you to take this message to the world. 46. The rulers of your nation are not aware of the multitude of people in this country whom I have assigned a mission. Their mission is to pray for their brethren and work for peace and brotherhood among all beings. I am preparing those rulers and permitting them to come among this multitude to witness my manifestation and to observe your manner of living. 47. Be careful to correctly interpret my teaching and fulfill my mandates. Do not offer your brethren fruits of ignorance nor fanaticism. Correct your imperfections and allow your heart to become sensitive. By fulfilling your spiritual mission, I will delay the elements of nature from destroying the tranquility and lives of your brethren, as well as your own. 48. I will continue to give you my teachings for a brief time because my manifestation will soon come to an end. Therefore, it is necessary for my guides and workers to become united. Imitate me. Remember that in order to fulfill my mission, I suffered greatly, and I had to carry a cross on my shoulders on the road to Calvary. Be humble and accept your mission. I am aware of your suffering, and together we weep for humanity. It is a weeping of love and sorrow for mankind. 49. Perform deeds of love and charity. Guide the multitudes with dedication and honesty as is my will. 50. Prepare yourself so that when 1950 comes to an end you can take my doctrine to humanity. This multitude who has witnessed my manifestation will go to all nations throughout the world. I offer you blessings and strength, because after this manifestation comes to an end, your journey will be difficult. 51. My peace is with you as soon as you come to me. 52. I will leave you an unforgettable memory of this manifestation, which I have granted you for a long time. 53. You have been enlightened and blessed with my teachings, but do not boast for that reason. Only I know who you were in the past, who you are now, and who you will be in the future. Those who arrived before me spiritually hungry and thirsty have quenched their needs by listening to my word. They are now my servants and disciples to whom I have revealed the spiritual enlightenment from the sixth seal. 54. On this day you have reunited although you have come from different communities. My voice was heard everywhere as I summoned this multitude to congregate. 55. I have not come to judge you nor to make demands. Your conscience and intuition will inform you of your responsibilities and the worthiness of your deeds. 56. Do not think that you are the only ones who truly love me. Throughout the world there are others who seek me, follow me, and love me. However, after you prepare yourself with my teachings, I want you to serve as an example for those who love and worship me in an imperfect manner. Truly, I tell you that the gifts of prophecy, inspiration, and speech are distributed among all of humanity. 57. Do not remain spiritually asleep, because this manifestation will only continue for three more years. When will you become teachers of this doctrine? 58. Today, 
I have gathered all of you to alert you. I want this multitude to become unified through spiritual love. No one is superior or inferior because everyone is equal. My teachings will remain written in books, and it is not my will that any of your imperfections remain written in those books. 59. Would you want to leave a history of your mistakes to future generations? 60. Although my doctrine is sacred and divine, I have entrusted it to those who still sin. I have done that because those sinners will follow me with great love, loyalty, and dedication once they feel the Father's love and forgiveness. 61. Furthermore, are there any beings on earth who are truly just? 62. Disciples, I say to you, make a true effort to practice my doctrine. Thus I may perfect you with my teachings. 63. Do not doubt yourself due to your lack of knowledge, for I can make rock speak. 64. You will need to ascend through a spiritual ladder that will lead you to God. Climb it, step by step, until you reach the Father by having attained the highest level of spiritual elevation. 65. Elijah is illuminating your path during this period. He strengthens you when you confront an ordeal and also informs you about future ordeals. 66. Blessed are the workers, who are guided by their conscience and presently listen to my word, for they know how to sow peace, joy, and salvation along their path. My peace be with you. Teaching 204. 1. My people, I welcome you. I open the gates of my kingdom and greet you with great love. I presently give you what you need, according to your faith and necessity. 2. I come seeking the sanctuary in your heart to give you enlightenment, love, and truth. Love is a powerful force that maintains order and harmony throughout the universe. That is why I am teaching you to love, so that you may know the secret of life. Be generous with your brethren, so that your generosity and love will be like a song that brings joy to the hearts of those who are sad. 3. You need to become familiar with your mission and to fulfill it. Your destiny is to have your spirit triumph over misery and sin, to elevate your being, and to become worthy and virtuous. I want you to dominate your flesh with wisdom and charity rather than violence. Once man learns to obey my laws in a loving manner, instead of disputing over them, he will establish a paradise on earth. It will be similar to the one that was first established and enjoyed by those who first dwelt on earth. Those beings were innocent and obedient, although later man stained the earth with his impure deeds and thoughts. For, if man lived according to the will of the Divine Father, earth would have prospered materially and would have become a spiritually elevated planet. Man would not have to suffer due to the harsh elements of nature because he would be in harmony with nature and with all its creatures. The harmony on earth would be similar to that of a divine concert with each human being representing a musical note. Since man does not live in harmony with the divine laws he suffers, becoming a slave to his passions. He drags his chains suffering, weeping, and without hope, unaware that he is reaping what he has sowed. If he would just realize that each of his tears is justified, he would quickly attain his salvation. 5. Truly I tell you that man has the solution to end all of his suffering. He can be his own doctor. That is why I say to you that when you follow the path dictated by your conscience, your spirit will elevate itself toward me. 6. What is the purpose of your life on earth, other than to help your spirit to attain spiritual elevation? You have come to dwell on earth where there is illness, tears, and sorrow. But you fail to realize that you could change your life by practicing love and charity with your brethren. 7. The one who truly loves me will attain wisdom. He will first elevate himself on earth and then continue to elevate in other mansions in the universe. Behold how the love of God manifests itself throughout creation. His deeds are wise, his word is perfect, and he holds the keys to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Love, which is the essence of the universe, will elevate your existence until all beings are able to communicate spiritually. A year has 365 days. How many deeds of love and charity do you practice during that period? Why do you say that you love me when you do nothing to help your needy brethren? When I say to you that I love you, I prove it with my deeds. Men say that they love Christ, but they continually hurt me, judge me, ignore me, failing to follow the examples that I set. 
Do you not believe that mankind has given me another crown of thorns and crucified me once again during this period? When I spiritually visit the ill, the poor, the dejected, and those in prison, why have you not been there with me? Why do you deny charity to those who request it? Behold why I say to you that you have crucified me again. For whoever does not practice deeds of love, rejects me. 9. Each one of you is a child of God. Thus, you are a part of Him and are similar to Him. Therefore, why not work together with Him to make the world a more beautiful place to live? Do this by practicing deeds that are guided by your conscience. 10. The true servant of God is one who offers a healing balsam of love to his brethren, and one who practices true charity with others. 11. You have made me suffer a long time due to your lack of love and comprehension. 12. During this third era, I once again tell you to love one another. 13. My people, prepare yourselves to receive my healing balsam. Everyone who prepares himself will be healed, and everyone who is weak will be strengthened. Elevate your spirit to me, and then wait for my balsam. I will give you more than what you expected. Receive it silently, for I will give it to you spiritually. I give you hope, my beloved children. Remember that what you receive from me you should also give to others. Do not be greedy. When you give to others, do not think about what you are taking away from your children, for it is best not to give unless you do it in a loving manner. 14. Do not judge the lives of your brethren for you would only stain your lips and your heart. Instead, prepare yourself to judge each one of your deeds and to listen to the voice of your conscience. 15. Make a true effort to live in a virtuous manner. When you live in harmony with all of your brethren, you will feel the spiritual peace that you have long awaited. 16. The Divine Master truly tells you, I will continue to give you my word for three more years which are symbolic of the three eras. During these last three years, my teachings will become more profound because I have prepared you spiritually and physically to comprehend my teachings better. 17. You are unlike your brethren from the first era who had no knowledge of a spiritual law to follow. The Divine Father sent prophets to earth to inform mankind about the existence of God. As each prophet taught man about God, he learned more about the Divine Being and began to develop greater faith in Him. Thus, man's faith and understanding of God became stronger. Mankind witnessed the great love that Abraham had for the Lord, the great strength that Jacob demonstrated during his ordeals, and the great inspirations and commandments that were given to Moses. Teen. Those men were forerunners and messengers of the first era, similar to how you will be forerunners and messengers of another era, the era of spirituality. 19. During this current year of 1948 which represents the first era, you will get to know many things about that era. You will get to know the significance of the history of Israel, which was not the only nation to have been rescued during the first era and spiritually redeemed in the second era. That nation can be found spiritually in all races and religions throughout the world. Since I chose that nation to offer my teachings to humanity and because you are part of that nation spiritually, you need to know the history of Israel. Its history contains the great revelations that I gave to mankind during the first era. 20. You are amazed that such great spirits, such as Abraham, dwelt on earth during the first era. Not only was his love of God pure, but he loved him more than anything else. If you carefully examine his life and his deeds, you will discover that his faith, his strength, his humility, and his love served as the true foundation for the nation of Israel. 21. In that era there were nations that practiced idolatry. The Gentiles worshipped the forces of nature as their gods. It was then that Abraham appeared, revealing to mankind the inspirations that he received from God. These inspirations revealed God's truth, justice, and enlightenment. But those men were stubborn and unbelieving, thus submitting Abraham to various ordeals. He overcame those obstacles and was able to convert humanity to accept the doctrine of God. He succeeded in making man accept God as the only true and living God. 22. Spiritual struggles have long existed among humanity, but behold that after those struggles man becomes enlightened with the truth. 23. Be aware that I have not come to complicate your life with my teachings, but rather to simplify your form of worship and practices. 
I have come to teach you that it is not necessary to ignore the good things on earth nor your responsibilities in order to please me. While you have a material body, you will be subject to human needs. However, I do want you to allow your conscience to guide you so that your spirit will progress and begin to fulfill my law. 24. Since the first era I have given you a spiritual shepherd to guide you. That shepherd has served as my forerunner and messenger prior to my arrival among this multitude. Because you have ignored my teachings due to your spiritual ignorance, you are still worshipping the golden calf and other material things. 25. The God of truth has always manifested himself to this multitude, offering you riches, enlightenment, and power to govern the world. 26. You were wealthy and noble lords in the past, who yielded to vanity and selfishness, converting your humble brethren into slaves and servants. I nevertheless forgive you and I have come to bless and help those who have gone astray from the divine path. I have been your servant, granting all of your requests. I have awaited patiently for you to fulfill the mission that I entrusted to you long ago. 27. I am a just God, but I do not punish you. I do not demand restitution even though I was crucified by mankind. You are being purified through the suffering and hardship that you have brought onto yourself. Because you have disobeyed my law, you will need to correct your mistakes and to purify your spirit. Then you will allow your spirit to return to its original state of purity. You are now in the right path for salvation and spiritual evolution, but you must become aware of your mission and of the time in which you now live. Ask your conscience what you have done to help your brethren, and it will inform you that you have not helped them. Your conscience will also inform you that mankind still does not practice my divine law, and that my doctrine of love has not yet blossomed. 28. Today, as I speak to you, you will become familiar with my teachings. Behold, that I have manifested myself through those who are simple and humble so that mankind can believe in this manifestation. However, you still doubt that it is God who is manifesting himself through the human spokesman. You believe that it is a human, not God, who speaks to you. That is why I have permitted you to carefully analyze the spokesman, at a time when I am not manifesting myself through him, so that you may observe that he is illiterate and naive. I have taught you to be humble and charitable. Although I have assigned different missions to this nation of people to fulfill, there are many who consider themselves superior to others. They praise and glorify themselves, becoming self-centered and always wanting to be first. 29. I am the only one who is truly first, although I have not come to humiliate anyone nor to make anyone my slave. I have come to take care of your needs. I am your father, and I cannot react with indifference to your suffering. I am God. I cannot abandon you while you are in a state of darkness and ignorance. For that reason I have come to manifest myself. I want you to know me so you will realize who is before you. 30. This nation of people has not set an example of unity for humanity. That is why there is a lack of brotherhood and harmony among the different religions and sects. They lack unity and disagree with one another, because they all aspire to be great. Thus, they are preparing to battle one another. 31. You have not yet fulfilled my law. My path is filled with spiritual enlightenment and love, yet you choose to walk in darkness. The Divine Master continually offers you his love, but you still nourish feelings of hatred. I give you teachings of morality and virtue, yet you have evil thoughts and perform evil deeds. That is why those who have come recently to witness my manifestation ridicule my disciples because they observe that you are not sincere and truthful. Similarly, the scientists who have come to witness my manifestation do not believe that it is God who is manifesting himself. My disciples will need to offer great evidence of power, such as resurrecting the dead to life, restoring sight to the blind, making those who are paralyzed walk, and other such evidence in order for humanity to believe in my arrival during this era. 32. Because the flesh rebels against the will of God, your spirit cannot fulfill its mission. However, I have endowed the spirit with spiritual weapons to triumph against the sensual passions of the flesh, thus helping the spirit to achieve merits. The flesh is stubborn, but the material body can help the spirit to become purified and virtuous. 33. That is why I have come to help you. I am your savior. 
I give you the opportunity to go dwell in the promised land. 34. Allow yourself to evolve spiritually now, before I have to summon you to the hereafter. Eliminate your materialism, practice charity, and become my true apostle. Through you I will manifest the power of my divine mercy to humanity. 35. Great ordeals await you. Thus you should now prepare yourself. In the future, I do not want you to become spiritually lost and helpless, proclaiming that no one taught you about the divine path. Today, I am giving you the opportunity to acquire great spiritual strength. I have offered you my love and have nourished you spiritually with my teachings and wisdom. Therefore, I do not want to see you in a state of pain and misery in the future. 36. If you fail to fulfill your mission to teach others about the divine teaching you will experience grief and sorrow. You will behold those close to you become spiritually weak because they lack the divine teachings that is their true daily bread for spiritual strength. Although I had chosen to bless this nation with peace and enlightenment, wars will break out leaving it stained with the innocent blood of your loved ones. You will then be at the mercy of foreign nations, becoming their slaves and separating from the true divine path. Thus, you will no longer be able to listen to my voice. 37. I, the Creator, do not demand that you fulfill my law nor have I come to impose it. I come from the heavens asking you to fulfill my law and to practice humility. 38. I offer peace to those who listen to my word with good will. 39. I am the divine gardener who tends after the orchards watering them with celestial water. Those orchards consist of all the human hearts. I have come to sprinkle my divine love upon all the bitterness that is found on earth. I have come to teach you the path that will guide you to the kingdom of the Father. It is an infinite path. If you follow it, you will continually evolve spiritually and discover new and marvelous things. 40. I am preparing your spirit with my teachings. Work with me to prepare yourself spiritually, thus bringing splendor and grace to your spirit. I will bless your work so that you will fulfill your great mission on earth. 41. I am the Divine Master and the Divine Father. Thus, do not assume that we are separate. There is no difference between the Son and the Holy Spirit. They are one. Behold that only one God has manifested Himself in three eras to give you different teachings. He has given you a single book that contains many teachings of love. 42. Bless my name with your deeds. You will then acquire spiritual enlightenment and free yourself from the darkness that is caused by ignorance and sin. 43. My people, do you remember your life before you listened to my teachings and began to practice them? Your behavior previously was very different from how you behave today. You cannot compare your life then with your life today. In the past, you were a lonely individual traveling through a dark path, lacking enlightenment, joy, and hope. Today you are a disciple of God. I have quenched your spiritual thirst and have healed your wounds with my love. I have come to remove the thorns from your body, and I will remove the nails from your cross. 44. I am the light of the world and universe. I want that light to cover and protect you. Allow my word to heal you as you listen to it. You must analyze yourself, changing your unvirtuous life to a life that is pure and righteous. Previously, I told you to cleanse the cup outside and inside meaning that there should be harmony between your spirit and physical body. 45. I will help you to cleanse and to purify your spirit, that inner part of your being that is invisible to others but not to me. You should also cleanse yourself on the outside so that your material body will truly reflect your inner spiritual being. Thus, your deeds will reflect both truth and sincerity. Since man does not cleanse his spirit, he attempts to conceal that part of his being. 46. Have you examined your wounds and placed the healing balsam that I have given you? If you doubt its healing power, place it once again on your wounds. If you have faith and believe, set aside the medication for your wounds and you will observe how my love will heal the wounds and make them disappear. I will allow others to regain their health through prayer, faith and meditation. Multitudes of spiritual beings will come uniting their power and strength to anoint and heal you. 47. The spiritualist will say, Life is so beautiful. But those who are materialistic and who disrespect my laws will say, 
Life is so bitter, sad, and gloomy. The one who lacks spiritual elevation easily stumbles and suffers. However, one who is spiritually evolved does not concern himself with his misfortunes. Rather than judging his brethren, he praises and puts great importance on the virtues of others. He forgives everyone without judging, accusing, and publicizing their faults. 48. I ask those who judge their brethren, Are your sins so few that you want to judge the sins of others? If you are unable to overcome your own sins, why become preoccupied with the sins of others? Rather than focusing on the good qualities and spiritual virtues of your brethren, you prefer to focus on their sins and weaknesses. 49. The kingdom of the Father has many mansions. Those spirits who dwell in highly evolved mansions help man to correct his sins and mistakes. They help him with his restitution without judging him nor rejoicing in his suffering. 50. There are days when I observe that you are unvirtuous and days when you repent. I have also seen you denying that this manifestation is true, but later offering testimony of its truth to others. Sometimes you ridicule your brethren, and other times you defend them. On some days I have seen you offering charity to those who do not need it, and denying it to those who truly need it. It is good to correct your mistakes, but it is best not to commit them at all. However, I do not come to judge nor to accuse you but to enlighten you with my teachings so that you will not sin. I also say to you that I have seen you being helpful, kind, charitable and understanding with others. I always take those merits into account, but today there should be more love and kindness in your heart. 51. Do not pray without truly feeling that prayer in your heart and in your spirit. There is no need to pray with words, mechanically moving your lips. Pray with sincere feelings. In the past you would easily make false promises and swear in vain, but today you should only reveal the truth. 52. Do not take things that belong to someone else, otherwise you will experience shame and suffering. I will not expose the sins that you have committed, but I do want each individual to analyze himself according to my divine teachings. 53. I will not blame you nor demand restitution of your past faults when you lived in a state of spiritual infancy, darkness, and materialism. However, now that you have acquired full knowledge of my law, you will have to respond to the Father for any evil thing that you do. He will manifest himself through the conscience, and your conscience will judge your own acts severely. 54. Each one of you represents one of my seeds that I am. Gathering. If there are any bad seeds among the good seeds, I will also gather them with love to transform them into good seeds. I observe that the human heart still produces seeds of sin, evil, and hatred, but I will continue to offer my divine love to each individual. I will gently guide and help him to become purified until his spirit becomes enlightened. 55. Do you not think that my love is powerful enough to save you? After I have purified you, I will sow you in my garden, where you will produce new flowers and fruits. It is my mission to help you to become spiritually elevated. 56. My love comes to bless you, to forgive you, and to make you worthy of listening to my word. 57. My word shows you the path that you need to follow. I taught you my law since the first era so that you would follow the path of justice and morality. 58. This doctrine is the same one that I revealed to you in the past, a doctrine of love. 59. Your spirit is a child of the perfect love of God. Your heart, where emotions originate, is a symbol of love. 60. Thus, you should offer love to your brethren, for humanity is in great need of love. Humanity is spiritually hungry and lacks spiritual elevation. It needs to become spiritually alive. 61. If those of you who have listened to my teachings, the bread of life, have been comforted and nourished by it, then offer it to the spirit and to the heart of those who are weary and who hunger for spiritual enlightenment. 62. When you discover that your brother has erroneous concepts or beliefs, offer him my enlightenment, but never impose or force him to accept my doctrine. Offer my doctrine in the same manner to everyone, whether they are wealthy or poor. Help your brethren who have strayed from the divine path and who are suffering and in pain. Your heart will truly feel their suffering and will seek the means to help them. 
With your charity you will comfort those who are spiritually weak and offer peace to those whose hearts are in turmoil. You will illuminate the path of those who walk in darkness and confusion. If you fulfill your mission to help others, you will be worthy of being called a teacher. 63. My doctrine does not need material temples to bring together new multitudes. My temple is a universal temple, a temple that is formed from the hearts of mankind. 64. Follow the example that Jesus set in the second era. He gave his teachings and parables in the countryside, never inside material temples. 65. Whoever utilizes temples to make a monetary profit by taking advantage of those who are innocent and who suffer, lacks spiritual enlightenment and should not call himself my spiritual follower. 66. You will have to struggle along the path of life, including your place of work and in your home. 67. You will prepare yourself so that when you speak it will be through my inspiration at the appropriate time. The one listening to you will be unaware that it is I who speaks to him through his own conscience. 68. Do not expect men to forget their traditions from one day to the next, nor should you be surprised if someone tells you that your beliefs are wrong. In the second era there were many who believed that my doctrine was also false. However, it was later accepted as the true doctrine of God. My peace be with you. Teaching 205. 1. Come receive the essence of my teaching. Allow your spirit to rest and your heart and mind to feel spiritual tranquility. 2. Come to me in spirit so that you may feel the peace of the Divine Master. 3. Similar to how you arrive to witness my manifestation, your brethren will also arrive from distant lands seeking enlightenment from these teachings. 4. Initially, I will give everyone teachings that they can understand, thus preparing their spirits for the teachings that I will give later. 5. Carefully analyze my word to seek the essence of my doctrine. Be aware that it is man who needs to follow my laws. Man should not change my laws for his convenience or because of his beliefs. 6. If I allowed you to practice my doctrine according to your will, then you would remain spiritually stagnant forever. You would never allow your spirit to evolve and to perfect itself. 7. The different religions practiced by mankind have failed to progress spiritually because they have not followed the divine laws of God. Man has chosen to fill his religious practices with myths and misinterpretations. During this period many have had to separate themselves from religion to seek me with their spirit so they can develop their spiritual gifts and abilities. Intuitively, they knew that they possessed those gifts. 9. These individuals have listened to their inner voice which speaks of the spirit and eternal life. 10. I had to separate you from the different paths that you were traveling so that you could begin your journey to the Divine Father and receive my spiritual enlightenment and revelations. I want you to evolve spiritually so you can perceive life with an evolved spirit. 11. What is the physical body without a spirit? It is a mass of lifeless cells. Although the spirit and the body both originate from God, the spirit is the one that reflects true eternal life. 12. Have you ever considered that since everything originated from God that God is in you? Why is He in you? Could He be in you without ever manifesting Himself? Then He would not be God. For God is present everywhere, communicating, illuminating, and manifesting Himself. Do not assume that God will keep from giving you His message of love. Let it be known that God wants to manifest Himself spiritually through you. 13. Would you know how to answer me? If I were to ask you why God is in you, since He is omnipotent, why is He in that part of your being who you refer to as the Spirit? Why does He want you to humbly practice His teachings? You are unable to answer me, disciples, because you have not been taught how to meditate. Thus, you do not know why the Father is in you and why He expresses Himself through each one of your deeds. However, if you truly dedicate yourself to studying and to practicing my doctrine, you will soon be able to answer these questions and others that are more profound. Once you attain that enlightenment, you will truly know why the Divine Father dwells in each of His children. 14. Some say that God does not exist, while others, although believing that He does exist, are not interested in Him. However, they both ignore that God dwells in each being and that no one can live without God. 15. When each of you becomes aware of this truth, and truly believe that you are spiritual children of the Divine Father, 
you will then begin to ask yourself to what extent you have allowed God to manifest himself through you. 16. As you journey through the path of life you will one day become astonished of the many deeds that the Lord has performed through you. You will then remember Jesus, the Divine Master, who truly fulfilled the will of the Father. 17. When will you realize that God, who gave you life, wants to manifest himself through you? Behold how sometimes one of these teachings is enough to make you comprehend and to perceive more clearly than you had previously. That comprehension will enable you to do marvelous things, because you will get to know yourself and how to utilize your spiritual gifts. Teen. Oh my beloved disciples, you need to learn to offer spiritual love and charity to your brethren. If you give others spiritual enlightenment and make them aware of the power and greatness of the Spirit, you will be fulfilling the will of the Father. 19. You need to become familiar with the spiritual gifts that you possess, so that the true essence of your being will manifest itself. Then, you will observe how much easier it is to solve the problems of life and to evolve spiritually. 20. Misery, suffering, and illness will disappear through true spiritual prayer. 21. Prepare yourself spiritually to welcome me and to communicate with the Lord. 22. If you truly believe that God dwells within you, would it be possible for you to become ill or to yield to temptation? How could the weak flesh dominate you? 23. I am freeing you and strengthening you so that you will triumph over the world and the flesh, because I am guiding you to attain perfect communication with the Father. 24. Do not assume that this communication through the human spokesman is the perfect communication. Although you are sometimes illuminated through intuition, that is also not the perfect communication. The most elevated form of communication with the Divine Father is spiritual, rather than through the material body. 25. Disciples, the material body is only a covering. Inside the body there is the spirit that is like a beautiful fragrance. Is it fair for the spirit not to manifest its beautiful fragrance? Today it could manifest it through your material body, tomorrow throughout the world, and later throughout the universe. 26. My people, allow your spirit to penetrate into the essence of these teachings. If you listen to these teachings and fail to penetrate into their essence, you will be unable to overcome your weariness, illnesses, and disillusions. 27. Learn from those who prepare themselves spiritually to penetrate into the essence of my word. They acquire spiritual strength and are healed with my message of love. 28. If you had faith in the Father, you would face the future without fear and distrust, knowing that the Father will always be with you. 29. You are often ill due to your manner of thinking, always believing that suffering and illness are your destiny. Thus you attract darkness with your thoughts, then your material life and spiritual journey are surrounded by that darkness. But I have come to help you to renew your faith in life, in the truth, in the eternal, and in spiritual peace. I come to help you become spiritually enlightened. 30. Disciples. My divine plan is for you to attain spiritual perfection. If that is God's divine plan, why would you want to change it? Be aware that man is similar to the universe, and that the universe is similar to man. The universe is a great mansion with many homes. It belongs to the children of God to help them in their journey to spiritual perfection. The spirit of man is the sanctuary where the Lord should dwell. 31. Once you comprehend my word, you will say, Father, starting today I will open the doors to my inner temple so that your essence, which is life, health, wisdom, and strength will penetrate into my spirit. 32. When you speak to me in that manner, it is because your spirit has accepted its mission. You will then observe that I will manifest myself through you, although your material body is mortal. Nevertheless, that body embodies perfection. 33. Today you dwell on earth, but tomorrow you will dwell in a different mansion. Each mansion will bring you a step closer to attaining spiritual perfection. 34. Your brethren are everywhere in the universe because they are all children of God. 35. Everything and everyone belongs to God, from the most elevated angel to the most basic living thing, including the stars, suns, planets, beings of all species, atoms, elements, and forces. All treasures belong to someone, and the treasures of the universe belong to God. 36. Disciples, 
I now ask you, is it possible for you to be ill and unhappy, even though I have brought you these teachings so that you will achieve freedom and joy? 37. You need to be spiritually prepared for these revelations. And I, the Divine Master, have come to prepare you. 38. If you feel that you are spiritually weak, I come to help you become spiritually enlightened. Thus, you will attain redemption, salvation, and peace. 39. Sometimes you ask why you suffer more during this period than mankind did in the past, or why you have to fulfill a spiritual mission you never had to fulfill before. I say to you, your spiritual mission has always been to journey through the path of enlightenment in order to ascend to the top of the divine mountain. Furthermore, during this era, you have come to settle debts that you acquired in the past and to conclude the work that you have not yet completed. 40. The individual who is unable to comprehend the significance of a new life will renounce my justice and believe that his restitution is a punishment from God. But the one who views his new existence on earth as an opportunity to settle past debts and to purify his spirit will bless the Lord's name. 41. Although you are still learning to become spiritually strong, you should continue to be sincere. Do not worry if you pray for things that you feel are insignificant. Remember what is important is to pray and to allow me to guide and inspire you. 42. Pray and be healed with the spiritual strength and faith that my teachings give you. 43. Once you no longer pray to heal your illnesses but rather to communicate with the Father, the Spirit will begin to journey to unknown regions. You will journey to those regions to offer spiritual enlightenment, to receive messages, or to experience spiritual joy and acquire strength. 44. God, who dwells in you, will manifest His messages through you, once your body and spirit are able to interpret those messages. 45. You ask, how is it possible for God to speak through man? And I say to you, during the second era, the Divine Word became man in order to speak the Word of God. The Divine Word, which manifested God's divine wisdom, took human form through Jesus. 46. Why should God not manifest Himself through your spirit and material body, since you are disciples of Jesus, the Divine Word? 47. Today, as beginning students, you are not always able to comprehend my teachings. For now, Speak to God with your heart and mind and He will respond to you deep within your being. You will hear His message in your conscience. It will be a clear, wise, and loving voice that you will gradually discover and become accustomed to hearing. 48. It is necessary to meditate on those messages that you receive through prayer. Thus you will be able to recognize messages from the Father and not confuse them with the voices, ideas, thoughts, and revelations that you may receive from your confused spirit. Only in silence and meditation will you be able to do this. 49. Who is able to truly say what spiritual region he has penetrated while he is in prayer and meditation? No one is able to do that. Thus, the one who fails to pray, to meditate, and to communicate with God is often confused. Instead of penetrating into the light while praying, he penetrates into the darkness receiving bad inspirations and false messages. 50. Make a true effort to progress spiritually and to acquire spiritual wisdom and enlightenment. Your final destination is to return to God from whom you originated. 51. My word emits an abundance of healing balsam. If you prepare yourself to receive it, you will be healed. Your own spirit will heal you through the spiritual enlightenment that it acquired from my teachings. 52. Pray to me. Ask me for your needs and seek me. I will grant you more than what you request, but strive to practice deeds of virtue. 53. Practice harmony in your life. Establish only one family with all of your brethren. Your family should include those who are present and those who are absent, as well as those who are visible and those who are invisible. 54. Only then will you experience true inner peace because you fulfilled the divine mandate that tells you to love one another. 55. My beloved workers, I observe that you are anxiously cultivating the fields, preparing the land, and sowing seeds that will later produce fruit, a true reward for your efforts. Select the seed and prepare the soil, because my present manifestation will continue for only three more years. 
Thus, only a short time remains for you to prepare yourself. When the time comes for my departure, I do not want you to still be beginning students but rather advanced disciples who become teachers. 56. After my departure you will be responsible for the interpretation that others give to my teachings. Humanity will judge my doctrine according to your deeds, words, and manner of living. 57. You will never lack my inspiration. Through my inspiration you will know when you need to speak and what you need to say. You will explain to your brethren the teachings that I have revealed to you about the spiritual valley using precise, clear, and simple words. You will outline the spiritual path that they need to follow and you will always accompany your words with deeds of love. 58. Gradually you are learning to feel the pain of others as if it were your own. It is because your spirit saturates itself with my teaching, elevates itself, and is able to penetrate into the divine mysteries. It discovers that all beings originated from the Divine Father and are therefore brothers. 59. Your spirit has not only evolved with my teachings but also your mental abilities because you are attaining greater spiritual inspiration. Thus, you now comprehend things that previously you thought were confusing and mysterious. 60. If you are unable to fully penetrate into the spiritual world to comprehend it, it is because your flesh still dominates the spirit becoming strongly influenced by material things. Although I have revealed many things to you, truly I tell you that you will never be able to truly comprehend what awaits you in the spiritual valley while you live on earth. You will never truly comprehend how a spirit lives in the spiritual valley, the joy it experiences living in the presence of God, and how a stained spirit attains purification. 61. The human mind is unable to truly comprehend the joy experienced by a purified spirit in the spiritual valley because of the limitations of the human body. That is why I say to you that while you live on earth you cannot truly comprehend those things that pertain to the spiritual world. 62. Also, you cannot imagine the intense pain a spirit will feel once it begins to listen to its conscience. That is why I tell you to prepare yourself and to elevate your spirit for it will receive many teachings that it needs to know. Behold that true harmony needs to exist between your spirit and your mind, so that you will become aware of some of those spiritual teachings and truths while you are on earth. 63. I have allowed your intelligence and spiritual enlightenment to grow. I have granted you free will to select the path that you want to follow. Nevertheless, I have also given you my laws which show you the right path to follow and how to purify your deeds. If you do not want to follow that path, you are free to separate from it. However, you can no longer deceive yourself, because you will continually hear the voice of your conscience. Furthermore, when you come in spirit before me, you will be judged by your conscience. It will tell you what path of purification you will need to follow. The conscience is the voice of God, that dwells in you to teach you to love all things that are virtuous and to reject all things that are evil. 64. Study my teachings during these years of preparation, for there are many whom you will need to teach. Men are weary because of so much perversity. They hunger to live spiritually. 65. The disciples of these teachings will offer spiritual nourishment to humanity and will help correct its false beliefs. They will help their brethren as they announce the good news of this period. Also, they will announce that life and ideas will evolve on earth during this era. My disciples will not differentiate people of different classes, sex, religions, or races. They will be sensitive to the spiritual and physical needs of all their brethren. They will be similar to a shining lighthouse that guides a ship that is lost at sea, or a bright star that offers light to one who walks in darkness. 66. They will not build temples that are made of stone, nor will they erect altars to publicize their deeds. Instead, they will build a great spiritual temple whose stones will be the hearts of humanity and become united through the power of love. 67. Listen carefully to my teachings during these last three years, because the disciples who learn these teachings will become teachers after the year 1950. After 1950, when you congregate and truly elevate yourselves toward me, I will enlighten and inspire you so that you may perform great deeds. But you need to prepare yourself because after 1950 I will no longer manifest myself through human spokesmen. 68. I will illuminate each of my children who truly prepares himself to communicate with me from spirit to spirit. However, 
I will not illuminate those who sell my work and who convert themselves into merchants. Prepare yourself so that when my manifestation ceases you will continue to follow my path. Listen carefully. Confusion will arise among all those who have failed to prepare themselves. 69. My beloved people, be aware of the manner that I want you to teach humanity my word. Be aware that you will not be able to quickly change the traditions that mankind has had for centuries. Offer my teachings to your brethren and they will become aware of the errors in their life. The power of conviction that my doctrine possesses will illuminate mankind, and its truth will be acknowledged. Thus, my doctrine, which some thought was a false doctrine, will shine with infinite wisdom. 70. My beloved children, I have been with you, and I have touched your heart so that I may eternally dwell in it. My peace be with you. Teaching 206. 1. I continually offer you my charity because I love you. My love blesses you, forgives you, and purifies you. My love helps you to spiritually evolve along the path of evolution so that you will feel closer to me and become worthy of being my children. 2. I have given you my divine law to guide you. It signals the path that I outlined for you to follow since the beginning of time. Everything that you do on earth should be based upon my law. That law contains my divine wisdom and teachings to guide you throughout life. 3. These teachings are the continuation of the teachings that I have given to man since the first era. There is an infinite number of teachings that I will give to my children. As your spirit evolves, you will be able to enlighten your understanding of my wise teachings and my desire to perfect you. For I am inspiring you to attain the highest level of spirituality so that you may love me in a more evolved manner. As you become more spiritually enlightened you will become sensitive to my manifestations and be able to correctly interpret them. 5. Once you have studied my word and truly comprehend it, you will become spiritually stronger and enlightened. You will then speak to your brethren about my teachings with compassion. Presently, they are unaware of my arrival during this period. You will share my new revelations with them and will offer them this spiritual wealth as if it were something sacred that you carried in your hands. 6. Humanity needs enlightenment to be able to progress spiritually. Men are spiritually hungry. They need to have faith to understand the truth and to know the path they are going to follow. I will teach humanity through those who have prepared themselves. They will have a delicate mission of teaching their brethren in a loving manner. You are the ones who will initiate this mission and will attempt to imitate me by helping those who suffer whether they are poor or wealthy. You will not impose your faith on others nor obligate them to accept your beliefs. Your responsibility is to maintain harmony with your brethren even if they do not accept my new teachings. 7. Offer spiritual enlightenment to those who are not aware of the divine truth and peace to the human heart. Also, comfort those who have impatiently been awaiting my arrival. Go help your brethren, and I will watch over your family and your belongings. If you work in that manner you will be constructing an immortal temple in the spirit of your brethren where they will worship me spiritually. That is how I want my beloved children to worship me. 9. Be my disciples of love. Practice deeds that are sincere and always speak the truth. Through these teachings I am guiding future generations who will want to follow and imitate me. 10. When the year 1950 comes to an end, do not seek a specific place to pray nor to study my word. Your home, the valley, or your place of work are all appropriate places to study and to pray. Imitate my twelve disciples who knew how to find a temple wherever they were, because they carried that temple in their spirit. The sacredness and greatness of their deeds was in their ability to spiritually elevate themselves to communicate with me. 11. As long as there is pain and suffering on earth, Mary will continually pray for all of humanity. She will illuminate the lives of all of her children. 12. You have asked me to come dwell in your heart, and I do. 13. Along my path you have been able to rest from your spiritual weariness, whereas you have never been able to rest elsewhere. You had journeyed through many different roads seeking spiritual comfort and strength, and you finally discovered that my teachings offered you what you had sought. 14. From childhood through adolescence and up to adulthood you had sought the true path but had not found it. Along the way, you became lost and began to follow the path of darkness. 
but when the light of my spirit appeared before you, you resurrected and were reborn. 15. Do not forget the day when you first listened to my word, the day when you returned to a life of spiritual enlightenment. 16. Although you were spiritually weak when you arrived, you carefully analyzed my word. Some arrived with humility, others with arrogance, but nevertheless all were brought by the power of my presence. You were destined to come. I have awaited for my children for such a long time. However, some have rejected my embrace and have returned to the path of darkness. Those who have remained with me have found joy and peace in my word and will become my workers. 17. I dwell in all of my children, even in the assassin. I do not separate from anyone, being especially close to those who believe that they are highly unworthy of belonging to God. 18. It is the responsibility of those who are present to pray for those who have fallen, without judging them. Remember that they, too, will attain spiritual enlightenment. 19. Do not wait for the regeneration of humanity to occur naturally. You must set examples of love for others to follow. Help your brethren without taking advantage of them. 20. You will help mankind to stop following the path of darkness and sin. Your mission is to help humanity by guiding it and giving it the spiritual enlightenment that it needs. Your brethren will arrive from various paths of darkness. Even those who were in prison will arrive to be converted into my disciples. However, if you fail your mission of helping your brethren become spiritually enlightened and of guiding them in the path of love, your spirit will have to return to fulfill it. If you now have the opportunity to fulfill your mission, why would you want to experience such a painful restitution later on? 21. Although human science is great, the scientist is spiritually not enlightened. Thus men are dying. That is why I have given you the gift of healing, so that you may become doctors of humanity, offering examples of true love and charity. 22. Great epidemics will appear on earth and a large portion of humanity will perish. Those epidemics will be unknown to human science and no one will be able to stop their destruction. 23. The universe will be cleansed of all evil. My justice will eliminate hatred, selfishness, and harmful vices. Extraordinary events will occur throughout nature. 24. Nations will be swept away and destroyed, and communities will vanish. These events will serve as a warning for mankind. 25. The path that I have designated for you to follow is now prepared. I am your guide and will accompany you throughout your journey. 26. My blessed people of Israel, the Lord welcomes you. I come meekly and humbly before you to manifest myself in this dwelling place. But truly, I tell you that it is not in this material dwelling that I manifest myself, but rather in your heart when you spiritually elevate yourself to communicate with the Lord. 27. I know that you need my word, so I have come to spiritually enlighten you. What would happen to you if you did not have it? My word, pure and full of spiritual enlightenment, offers you guidance and helps you to elevate spiritually. It is not found in any book written by man. 28. Although scientists who have listened to my teachings will not confess that this word is the truth, they will recognize in their hearts that it is truly the Divine Father who speaks. 29. I have come to give that spiritual peace you have been unable to find in your life. You have journeyed through many different paths and have sought the truth in various places, similar to a hummingbird that goes from flower to flower in search of nectar. However, you have never experienced the love and wisdom that these teachings have given you. 30. You have continually sought the true path, traveling many different paths, and struggling against the darkness. During your journey you became weak and weary. 31. But the day came when your path was illuminated by the light of my Divine Spirit. That unforgettable day, for both your spirit and conscience, has been inscribed in the spiritual book of God, as are each deed that you perform on earth and all you learn from the Divine Master. That day when you became spiritually enlightened is when your spirit resurrected to a life of grace. 32. Some who have come to witness this manifestation have been wealthy dignitaries, whereas others have been materially poor. However, I designate the moment of arrival for each individual. Each one has to arrive before the Father, 
who awaits with great love to welcome you and to resurrect you to a spiritual life. 33. You rejoice listening to my teachings. However, you feel that your physical body prevents you from totally dedicating yourself to fulfilling my sacred work. But you resign yourself, knowing that as a disciple of God you are not allowed to intervene in his higher judgments and that you need to be submissive and obedient. You realize that through your material body you will journey through the path of wisdom and love as well as through the path of darkness and deceit. Also, as you sit under the shade of God's tree you will choose fruits that bring prosperity and happiness rather than those that bring disharmony. You will enjoy the shade that is provided by that tree, making sure that it not destroyed by worms, or that vultures do not nest in that tree. 34. I have allowed you to journey through different paths of life so you could eventually be able to have good and bad experiences to help you distinguish between spiritual enlightenment and spiritual darkness, so that guided by my divine inspiration, you would choose the true path. 35. The Divine Master says to you, Behind that door which is closed, and which you refer to as death, is life. I am the life. Temptation offers you death, not life. Temptation will blind your vision and will prevent you from being close to me. However, I have given you a powerful weapon to free yourself from temptation. That weapon is prayer. Prayer makes you strong, brings you closer to me, and allows you to journey with me along your path of spiritual evolution. 36. I, the Divine Father, will not deny my love and forgiveness to anyone, including those who have yielded to temptation and who have fallen into the abyss. I have not abandoned anyone. There is no one on earth, nor in the spiritual valley, whom I have deserted, who, among you, could be removed from my sheepfold because you are a sinner and are unworthy of receiving my charity. I will continue to dwell in the heart of the hardened sinner, who has been unable to receive the light of my divine spirit, because he has failed to listen to the voice of his conscience. Do you believe that I have separated from that sinner because of his evil deeds? Truly I have not. I am the father of all beings, and I do not distinguish among my children. I am love, and as a loving father, I do not neglect anyone. 37. It is your responsibility to pray for the one who is lost so that his spirit will become illuminated by the light of my spirit. Through your prayers you can help him to awaken spiritually, to rise above temptation, and to no longer be blinded in darkness. 38. However, the people of spiritual Israel have fallen asleep. They are waiting for humanity to regenerate on its own. Israel has failed to carry out the mission that I have assigned it, which is to set examples of love and charity for others to follow. 39. My people, I ask you, who did I leave my law with? Have I, perhaps, left it in the hands of hardened sinners? I left my law with you. Who, then, is responsible for not fulfilling my mandates? Israel is responsible. Furthermore, I ask you, why have you not arisen to fulfill the mandates that I have given you? Why do you allow the sinner to continue to stumble and weaken along his path? Why have you not spiritually enlightened him with the gift of speech that I have given you when you speak to him in my name? Do you want your brethren to remain blind and in a state of spiritual darkness? Do you not know that through your deeds that darkness can be removed? 40. The Divine Father tells you to awaken from your sleep. Go and help those who have fallen to arise and to follow the true path. I will give new mandates to humanity. I will give new orders to every nation, to every ruler, and to every citizen. 41. You will witness the occurrence of strange events. The seasons will change. The winters will become harsher and it will appear as if spring will never arrive. Men measure the length of each season, but if it is my will to change the length, who can oppose my will? There will be droughts and lands will become dry. Thus, Prepare yourselves, my people, because a time of great disorder is approaching and you will need to work harder. 42. This nation is now living in a state of peace. Maintain this peace. Do not let that peace escape from your heart. This nation was chosen by me, and it is my will that it not experience disorder and confusion. However, you must become spiritually prepared, because through the fulfillment of your mission, this nation, and all of humanity, will receive spiritual enlightenment. 43. Israel, I am present before you. 
you are able to listen only to my voice without being able to perceive me, but you rejoice as you listen to my words. 44. I quickly come whenever you summon me. I am aware of all of your afflictions. I have come to give you things that will benefit both your body and spirit. 45. I do not give you false riches, for you would become lost. I have come to save you, so that after you depart from earth you will come to me. 46. Ask me to give you things that will benefit your spirit and I will give them to you. Do not clothe only your physical body, leaving your spirit naked. 47. Man does not yet obey the law that I gave to him during the first two eras. That is why I have come again during this era to save mankind. 48. I have manifested myself in this nation since 1866. I have quenched the thirst of those who were spiritually thirsty for my divine teachings. I am here to help my beloved children to purify their sinful hearts. 49. Oh, if only everyone would come to listen to me. But there are those who, in spite of having listened to me, still prefer to travel through the paths of darkness, filled with obstacles, rather than travel through the enlightened path of the Lord. Those who journey through the wrong path are your brethren. They are ungrateful and disobedient, who prefer to eat the bitter bread from earth instead of the bread of eternal life. 50. Blessed are those who remain with me, knowing that I am the Divine Father who awaits His lost children. 51. Your Father has come to teach you His doctrine of love. It is a spiritual teaching that does not permit fanaticism, but teaches you to fulfill the law of God and the law of man in a perfect manner. 52. I have never asked you to torture and to punish your physical body in order to attain my forgiveness. The only penance that I will accept is for you to stop practicing deeds that are evil and harmful to your brethren. When you practice deeds of love and kindness, you will feel my spiritual peace. 53. I speak to you in this manner because I do not want your spirit to live in a state of darkness while it dwells on earth. Remember that its true mansion is not of this world. 54. Do you know what awaits you after you depart from earth? Where will your spirit go? I only say to you to be alert and to pray. Learn my teachings and practice them. You are now journeying through earth, but soon your journey will end and you will be closer to God. 55. In all three eras I have sought to communicate with humanity in different ways. During the first era, I allowed Moses to guide you to attain freedom and spiritual enlightenment. During the second era, I manifested myself through Jesus, who outlined the divine path for humanity to attain its salvation. During this era I arrived spiritually, on a white cloud, to say to you, Come to receive spiritual enlightenment from the Holy Spirit. I do not want you to prolong the fulfillment of your mission, because in the future the ordeals and the suffering will be greater. 56. I am giving you the Third Testament so that you may study it and practice its teachings, because the year 1950 is approaching. 57. If you fail to take advantage of my teachings, you will greatly weep when you hear the Divine Master informing you that this form of spiritual communication is ending. Is that what you are waiting for or are you waiting for disease, hunger, mourning, and sorrow to spread to your homes? 58. After my departure, I want you to remain strong and unified. Do not reject one another. Love one another, and there will be peace throughout the universe. 59. Who, among this multitude, will have to journey across the oceans and the mountains to visit distant lands? Who will have to leave his family and his children to take my doctrine to different nations? 60. Be alert and meditate, because prior to 1950 only you have been spiritually nourished with this spiritual bread and water. You have kept this spiritual enlightenment to yourself, disregarding those who are spiritually hungry and thirsty. But things will change once my manifestation comes to an end. You will arise to become teachers for your younger brethren. Cleanse your stains and imperfections so that you may serve as an example for the different religions and sects. Truly prepare yourself. Although there are many who are now listening to my teachings, some will eventually reject me, and others will choose to do as they please. Among this multitude are those who will betray me. 61. Carefully study my word so that tomorrow you will not say that it was a human who gave you these teachings, but rather God. 
Furthermore, who is able to speak in this manner? What human has the power to transform and to regenerate a multitude of people as I have done? 62. Soon you will no longer listen to this voice, but you will remember that I was with you from 1866 to 1950. There are many who witnessed my manifestation, but chose to reject my teachings. Those of you who were with me will also be with the Divine Father throughout eternity. My peace be with you. Teaching 207. 1. Blessed are you because you no longer need symbolic figures to feel my presence. You are now beginning to progress along the path of spirituality. 2. Although life offers you a vast field of opportunities to analyze my teachings, your life on earth is not long enough to comprehend all of them. 3. You now perceive things differently after having listened to my teachings. The veil which had covered your eyes has been removed and you can no longer close them. Who, having perceived the light, would want to remain in the darkness. For you are no longer able to suppress the admiration, gratitude, and love that you feel for me. You demonstrate that love in your spiritual prayers and in your deeds. You no longer pray as you did in the past with repetitive and eloquent words that you were unable to comprehend or feel in your heart. You lacked spirituality, thus you could not communicate with God. 5. Today, you feel a deep compassion and love for your brother as you observe his suffering and misery. Those feelings best express your desire for the well-being of your brother. 6. Long ago you constructed a temple in order to worship yourself. You admired yourself, recognizing the power and dominance that you could exert over other beings. You loved yourself, believing that you were strong and powerful. 7. I have come to eliminate your pride and to make you humble and aware of the insignificance of your material body. I have said to you that you possess a spirit. That is where your true value and strength lies, although you should not become vain for that reason. The greatness of your spirit is unlike that greatness that your material body feels. Since your spirit is a part of God, it is superior to all material things. Man is truly great because I have endowed him with a spirit. However, you need to be careful not to darken the light of your spirit. You also need to help your spirit to evolve along its path of evolution. In the past, when low passions dominated your life, your spirit felt that it was oppressed and in chains. You are now learning to dominate those passions, because there is no place for pride, vanity, or hatred in the hearts of my disciples. Your spirit is now beginning to influence your deeds, thoughts, and steps that you take. You have voluntarily chosen to allow your spirit to guide you so you can correct your past mistakes. 9. Your spirit will become stronger as it practices deeds of virtue. If it continues to practice those deeds on earth, it will attain a high level of spiritual elevation. Thus, when it departs from earth it will enter into elevated spiritual mansions having eliminated all of its pride and miseries. 10. The one who arrives into elevated spiritual mansions with humility and spiritual elevation will not be able to forget those who remained on earth and who are in need. Thus, he will spiritually help and protect those who are weak, ill and lost. 11. Develop your spiritual gifts by practicing deeds of love, and truly I say to you, if you prepare yourself spiritually you will be able to detain the disasters, plagues, and illnesses that occur on earth. Do not become vain for that reason, because those accomplishments will not take place due to your own physical strength, but rather through the Spirit, who is strong because of its humility. 12. Be one with me and listen to my word. 13. The world needs salvation. It needs men of goodwill to arise and to work on behalf of my doctrine. 14. Today, man lacks true understanding of spirituality. 15. Those who have spiritually awakened by having listened to my word are very few in comparison to those who are unaware of my manifestation. There are some who intuitively feel the closeness and the presence of spiritual things. 16. Mankind needs guidance and help. That guidance and help will be provided by my new disciples who, enduring great ordeals, will offer spiritual knowledge to their brethren and save those who are lost. 17. A time of great ordeals and battles is approaching. I have prepared you so that you will have the strength and courage to observe all that I have announced. During those ordeals man will eventually comprehend why nations are in war 
and why there is disagreement among the different religions. He will realize that it is because man has failed to comprehend and to follow the teachings of Christ. If man were to follow those teachings, the world would be a place of joy and peace. However, man practices vanity instead of love, and thus he is unable to think clearly and to practice deeds of spirituality. Because of man's vanity, the spirit is unable to triumph over the stubbornness of the flesh and manifest itself. Teen. Today, instead of eliminating the misery that exists everywhere, man selfishly attempts to use it to his benefit. Why hasn't man sought ideals that help him to elevate his emotions and pursue goals that are worthy of his spirit? It is because man has not wanted to perceive beyond his physical needs, that is to say, beyond his miseries, his earthly pleasures and his material science. He dedicates his time on earth to accumulating riches and seeking pleasures, believing that, once he dies, he will cease to exist. Because of his ignorance and pride, man has descended to an inferior level, instead of spiritually elevating himself and perceiving himself as a child of God. When his conscience speaks to him about God and about spiritual life, he is overwhelmed by his fear of God's justice. Thus, he prefers to ignore the voice of his conscience and to disregard its warnings. He truly does not understand the purpose of his existence on earth nor is he aware of his spiritual and physical situation. How can he cease to feel inferior and miserable if he continues to live and to think as he does? 19. That is why I have come to give you my teachings. Those listening to me have developed a different understanding about the superior life of the Spirit. One can begin to live that life while he is on earth, becoming aware that he possesses my divine grace. 20. God is the law and force that governs everything. His power and wisdom are manifested throughout nature, which reflects his perfection. Humanity needs to recognize and to appreciate the greatness of the Divine Father. It needs to realize that a material image is not needed to worship the Father, and that his presence is manifested throughout all of nature. Once humanity truly comprehends this, it can then follow the true path and will be able to perceive the power and wisdom of God throughout creation. Those who are receiving my teaching are becoming spiritualized, because they are acquiring new wisdom and knowledge. They are no longer spiritually blind, for they are now able to perceive, to analyze, and to comprehend my teachings. 21. But truly I tell you, what you have now learned is not sufficient for you to comprehend other things that I will reveal to you. You still have a long road to travel. However, I say to you, that you do not want to remain spiritually blind when you are beginning to comprehend spirituality. Whoever listens to these divine teachings will no longer be able to ignore my inspiration nor will he stop praising the Lord. 22. You are now able to pray from your heart. Previously your prayers consisted of words that you had memorized and learned from books. Today, your prayer has no limit, because when you have faith and elevate yourself in prayer, you feel that you are truly near those for whom you pray. Thus, you no longer pray using repetitive and memorized words. Today, your prayers are spiritual and full of inspiration. You no longer find it necessary to sing songs praising God, but now choose to offer testimony of God's kindness by the way you live. 23. Carefully examine yourself, and when you have discovered your mistakes, correct them. Be encouraged realizing that eventually you will return to the Father to dwell in the kingdom of heaven. Make a true effort to battle against your weaknesses. Demonstrate that your spiritual nature is superior, and that you are able to triumph over your low passions and evil tendencies. 24. In the past you had erected a temple to worship yourself, believing that you were eternal, strong, and powerful. You lived to satisfy only your physical needs. However, once you truly comprehend the differences between spiritual and material things, you will no longer do that. 25. Knowing that you possess spiritual strength and greatness should not make you vain, because spiritual greatness differs greatly from material greatness. 26. The Spirit is a spark of light, a seed of love and life. 27. Behold the wrong path through which you traveled when you sought material greatness and desired only material things. 28. You are now beginning to comprehend spirituality. Thus, when it is time for you to depart from earth, your spirit will have attained enlightenment, knowledge and grace. 29. 
Are you aware of the era in which you now live? 30. Pray so that you may help the leaders from different nations to unite and to solve the conflicts that exist between different countries. Do you believe that each ruler has a different solution for the struggles that exist? No, my people, they are only deceiving themselves. The conscience of each ruler proposes the same solution. However, due to their selfish and material interests they all disregard the voice of their conscience. All conflicts have a simple solution. The world would be in a state of peace if only men would obey their conscience. Those who govern different nations instead of thinking of their own greatness should consider the well-being of everyone. However, they fail to do that. Men distrust one another and are always ready to battle. 31. Once again I say to you, once the world follows my path and practices my doctrine, it will solve its problems and live in peace. 32. My universal ray today descends upon your spirit to nourish you with the bread of eternal life. It is my voice that summons you. Among this multitude are those who have recently arrived to witness my teachings, and I invite them to enjoy my word. Some who arrive are humble, others are unbelievers, idolaters, and hypocrites. They doubt my presence and inwardly ridicule my teaching, because they believe that it is impossible for the Creator to communicate through human spokesmen. 33. If it were not God who is now manifesting Himself, I would not be offering the evidence that I now offer you nor would I be teaching you the path of virtue. The one who does not believe in my manifestation doesn't because he has failed to meditate, to open his heart, and to leave his state of darkness. 34. I say to you, I am the true God, the Father, the life, and the light. I have come to communicate in this manner to help you eliminate your disobedience, mistakes, and low passions that have prevented you from comprehending and analyzing the truth. 35. I have not come to denounce you in the presence of others, for I have invited you to come to my banquet. I will speak to your spirit and through your conscience, so that it will feel me and will thus awaken. 36. I am the same Christ whom you condemned in the second era, and I have designated the beginning and the end of each era. 37. During the second era you crucified me on a cross. I shed my blood because of the great love that I have for you. Although you were well aware of what you did when you crucified the Messiah, I nonetheless said that you were innocent and unaware of what you had done. I left twelve disciples to guide you and care for you. Those disciples imitated the Divine Master and spread my doctrine among humanity. 38. Among this multitude who is witnessing my manifestation are those who in the second era shouted the following. Crucify him. He is a sorcerer. Thus, they rejected the blessings that I brought to mankind. 39. Time has passed, and through my will, your spirit has reincarnated on earth to come listen to the divine word. Although I now manifest myself in a different form, my teachings are still filled with love and life. 40. I am here with you. I am touching your heart so that you may offer me shelter. I have come seeking your spirit, whom I greatly love, because it has become a slave to sin and its light has become darkened. 41. Although you have developed intellectually, your love for your brethren has not evolved. It has failed to evolve because you are materialistic and are interested in satisfying only your needs. 42. You forget about the eternal life of the Spirit and believe that you are gods on earth. You doubt my existence and my justice because you observe that I do not prevent the shedding of blood among humanity. You fail to understand that I am a relentless judge and that I allow man to amend his sins and to purify himself through suffering and pain. 43. Open your heart. Elevate your spirit. Allow your spirit to inform you that the voice you are listening to is the same one that has always spoken to you of love, charity, and perfection. The third era has surprised you. You should no longer want to perceive me in human form as you did in the second era. Remember that I previously told you that I would come again upon a cloud. My divine spirit descends from the heavens to communicate with you through human spokesmen. Thus, my voice is heard on earth even though this world is filled with sin. 44. You are not the only ones who are listening to my word. I, the divine word, pour my light throughout the universe. 
However, if you were to ask others whether they have heard a voice speaking to them from the heavens, they would say no. Why does this occur? It is because humanity is deaf as it journeys through life. It is not only surrounded by sin and fanaticism, but also people do not listen to their conscience. 45. I have given you my word since 1866. My teachings offer salvation to your spirit and point out the path to attain perfect peace in the universe. 46. I have assigned a delicate mission to your spirit to settle its debt with the Lord. I am cutting the bad weeds and tying them into bundles. I will then throw them into the fire until they become ashes. At the end my light will shine and my doctrine will be acknowledged throughout the world. 47. Man will create new doctrines and laws according to the will of God. Thus there will be peace, harmony, and brotherhood on earth. Human hatred will disappear, and human beings will no longer murder one another. Before all this takes place, I will purify man. Some will perceive the fulfillment of these prophecies after they enter into the spiritual mansion, whereas those who remain on earth will give testimony to the new generations after 1950. 48. My people, I have designated only one path for you to reach me. It is a path that is filled with light, life, and prayer. It is the Spirit's path. You will not get lost by traveling through that path. If you are now following it, offer testimony of my revelations and of my doctrine of spirituality to your brethren. Teach them how to communicate with me through the perfect spiritual prayer. 49. Remember, my people, the example of prayer that I gave in the Mount of Olives, when I asked the Father to forgive humanity. Jesus knelt before the Celestial Father, not in front of an image. I then elevated my prayer toward the heavens, the same prayer that I left for humanity. 50. Once again I offer you my charity and embrace you with love. Disciples, beginning students, and those who journey through life. On this day of grace the Divine Master's voice descends to caress you. I do not present myself as a harsh judge, but as a just father. I have come to guide you with my teachings so that you will follow my path, a path from which you had separated. 51. All of you are my soldiers. I observe that some of you have failed to fulfill your mission, while others have succeeded, and yet others are in the process of succeeding and are singing a hymn of victory. You are in the midst of that struggle and do not know the outcome. Today you are unfamiliar with the fields where you will need to sow my seed. Although they are large fields, you possess an abundance of seed to sow. 52. Whereas some remain strong and obedient in fulfilling their mission, others become weary and lose interest both knowing that the Lord is aware of everything that they do. Be aware that you are allowing precious time to go by, and that tomorrow you will no longer be on earth. Your spirit will experience great sadness because you did not want to listen to my word. It will yearn to listen to me, as in this period, but instead it will only be able to listen to the harsh voice of its conscience, experiencing great remorse. That is why I tell you to listen to my teachings today and do not ignore my mandates. Take the essence from this teaching, because I will hold you accountable for fulfilling its mandates. 53. This multitude, now witnessing this manifestation, is unable to comprehend the greatness of this teaching due to its sins and suffering. 54. This teaching gives life to your spirit and will heal all spirits that are ill and suffering. It is like a drizzle that falls upon dry fields. 55. If you have not yet gathered good fruits, ask your conscience why you have not. It will inform you that in order to harvest good fruit it is necessary for you to work hard and to remain alert. Set good examples for others to follow, practice deeds of virtue, and use the spiritual gifts that your spirit possesses to help your brethren. Eliminate your evil passions and practice good deeds. Only then will you behave as true children of God and truly represent Him on earth. 56. I have given each of you the responsibility to inform others about the spiritualist Trinitarian Marian doctrine. Humanity will dispute about my doctrine, provoking a revolution of ideas among people. This doctrine will confuse those who neither understand its origin nor its purpose. 57. Those who are responsible for sowing my seed have failed to prepare themselves. Thus, they have not revealed my doctrine to others, in its pure form, 
because they realize that they have combined their evil deeds in my work. Mankind will only be able to listen to my teachings for a brief period because this manifestation will soon come to an end. Thus, if you fail to prepare yourself, tomorrow you will experience sorrow and bitterness. But it will not be the Divine Father who will judge you, it will be your conscience. 58. You will be able to nourish yourself with these teachings for only a few more moments. Who will be with me when the year 1950 comes to an end? Who will present me a good harvest? 59. Humanity is in a deep sleep. It is awaiting your arrival so that you may resurrect it to life. You have not sought those who are spiritually dead because you lack confidence in me. Why do you fear men? Are you afraid of men's justice or death? I have already told you that I will free you from death. Remember that I have given you eternal life. 60. I have not gotten weary from speaking to you during this era, because I am the eternal word. My word is helping those who are wicked and insensitive to become purified and to change their ways. They will become virtuous human beings. 61. During this period of suffering and tragedy, I want you to imitate me. Trust me completely and thus your brethren will get to know the greatness of spirituality. Do not doubt that you can imitate me. The weight of your cross is not superior to your strength. 62. My people, in exchange for the great ordeals you have my teachings, you have been rejected by those close to you because you believe in this manifestation. Many of you were engaged in sinful pleasures which caused your spirit to weaken. Who came to separate you from that path? It was the Divine Father. You now understand the great love that I have for you. You thank me because you realize that in exchange for your rejection of sin, I have come to manifest myself and to give you my teachings. 63. You thought that no one knew your past. However, here I am, fully aware of what you have done throughout your life so that you will not doubt in my existence nor in my presence. 64. During this period I have designated you to be my disciples as I did with my apostles in the second era. 65. My word guides you through the path designated by Jesus. You have been journeying for a long time but have not yet reached the end of the path. You are battling and struggling, and I will reward you once you have concluded your journey. I observe that some of you are still strong, but that others have become weary. I will give you opportunities to rest so that you will meditate and regain your strength for this is a precious time that no one should waste. 66. Do not disregard my mandates nor ignore my voice. Listen to this teaching and analyze its essence. Cleanse your mind and heart so that you may perceive its greatness. This teaching gives life to your spirit. I will water the barren fields on earth with this teaching. Also, this teaching represents the seed that you will take to humanity. If you have not been able to harvest good fruit after having sowed this seed, it is because the seed that you sowed was not pure. Sow seeds that are pure, and thus you will harvest good fruit. 67. Remove your fear of mankind from your heart, for this has always detained you from fulfilling your mission. Free your spirit from its sins and faults. Practice deeds of love so that your spirit will become enlightened. Thus you will feel worthy of taking my law to your brethren. Tell mankind about my doctrine and let them carefully analyze it. Once they analyze it they will realize that it has no beginning nor end. 68. My doctrine is so pure that you have no reason to hide nor to feel ashamed when you present it to your brethren. But if you ever feel ashamed, it is because you have added something impure to my doctrine or because you do not live according to what you teach. Frequently you wish to remain unnoticed by others. However, that is not possible because I am sending you to share the good news with others through examples of love and kindness. 69. Humanity will discover that it has entered into a new era and will seek those who are able to tell it about these teachings. If you are unprepared and asleep when your brethren summon you, you will awaken with great pain. 70. This manifestation will soon end. Who will be with me once it finishes? Who will keep my law pure in the manner that I brought it? 71. Behold that you need to arise with spiritual strength to fulfill your noble mission. You will not fear death, for I say to you that death will not touch you. However, you will need to triumph over the temptations of your flesh so that you will no longer stumble and fall. 
the good disciple needs to triumph over his own weaknesses and thus set an example for others to follow. 72. Do you not observe the humility with which I speak? Truly I tell you that it is the same humility that I manifested in the second era when I limited myself in order to become human. I came to help man to elevate with my word and with my deeds, so that he could be similar to God. 73. Be my worker, and never become an obstacle for me to reach the human heart. Why do you doubt that you can imitate me? You have failed to understand my teachings. If you are my children, then you have inherited some of my traits of love and kindness. 74. You have come to earth from the spiritual mansion to seek the path outlined by the Divine Master. Seeking that path, you have experienced great ordeals. Now that I am manifesting myself during this era, you have disregarded everything to come listen to my teachings. Do you believe that I will not reward the sacrifices that you have made? Do not ever forget your destiny so that you will continually progress spiritually. 75. Be aware that you are not going to give me anything. Everything that you earn will be for yourself. 76. Why do I descend to the bottom of the abyss to save those who are there? It is because I love each one of you. 77. This doctrine outlines a true and quick path to return to your homeland. It is the doctrine of spirituality. If you understand it and practice it, your thoughts, words, and deeds will reflect great enlightenment. You do not need to say that you are a spiritualist because if you truly are, there will be no need to say it. 78. Carefully meditate on these teachings that I have brought you. Tomorrow you will need to share them with your brethren. My peace be with you. This has been a reading of the Book of True Life, Teachings of the Divine Master, Volume 7. You can download this teaching and the other 11 at cochinthefight.shop.